right, we are now connected to the live stream. So let me return the host powers back to you. All right, do I need to do anything or? You are all set up now for um, the review session. Okay. Um, now, one mistake that I noticed this morning, and that was a mistake on my part, not yours, if that gives you peace of mind, um, is that on the schedule itself, um, when I went to click on the link, I realized I had actually put the wrong Zoom information on there. Uh, but I did see that you had already taken the initiative and reached out to all of your reviewers. So they all have the correct link and the Zoom information. Um, the other part would be for your students. I imagine you've done the same for your students. Um, yeah, I've sent everything my Zoom link. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, like all of my reviewers and all the students should have my connection, but maybe okay. I can send an email. The one question I had is, um, Lauren, I've only been in correspondence with, I guess, her, her assistant. assistant. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping that that all goes smoothly. But um, That should be sufficient. I haven't... I so Cisco was actually the one that communicated with her office through Melody. And I don't think either of us has um, had any communication with Lauren directly. I think she does everything through her assistant, Melody. Okay. Okay. Well, then I'll maybe send a, just a follow-up. I'll just send a quick email to everyone, just to make sure that everyone knows to click on my, um, my Zoom information. Um, yes. I imagine, date. yeah, I imagine they would have done that because yours would be easier since it's already in the text of the email rather than in an attachment as a link. Yeah. Um, but just in case, I wanted to let you know that there was a mistake on my part on that portion. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'm going to put myself on mute temporarily. All right. Thank you. <laughs> of course. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Hi, Diane. <laughs> um, um, give me a, a few minutes because I'm going to email out to a few people. So um, I will see you in 10 ish. <laughs>
Hi, everyone. <laughs> I think we're still waiting for um, a, a few people to still join in. Maybe we'll give it a, a one or two more minutes before officially starting. All right, I, I think we're pretty much close to everyone. <laughs> um, so welcome to our final reviews for um, uh, our studio. Um, I will maybe first introduce our um, guest critics. So we have uh, 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 Pirajana um, at Mazoka. I guess, who I think everyone will remember and recognize, um, who also is joining us for I think, the second time, um, who's UT faculty um, and also has, I think, her own really lovely architecture uh, research practice. Um, we have uh, uh, Tara Dudley. Did I? It is Tara, not Tara, right? <laughs> um, yes, Tara. It is Tara. Okay, well, I apologize. That's we, have okay. two, we have two Taras now, so Tara Dudley. Um, it's probably because we haven't actually met, met in person, but right. who, who is, uh, I think most of you all know, also UT um, faculty teaching um, interior um, design history and the design series. So thank you. Um, and joining us then from so, are, Diane, are you actually in Bangladesh, or? <laughs> um, yeah. So we're getting we're getting a global perspective today. Um, so Diane um, is a fellow graduate um, of the GSD at Harvard, which is where I know her from, but um, has worked in Paris for a number of very reputable. Uh, architecture and interior design firms, um, including uh, Jean Nouvelle, and I think has been in Indonesia for quite some time now, um, also doing interior design um, and has her own kind of furniture line. So I thought that she would be a really awesome person to have on um, this review. And then uh, very graciously, we have uh, Ryan Watipka, who is the owner of the Von Minden. Um, and has been with us this whole semester, um, uh, giving us uh, background information, amazing resources, and um, has been on a number of reviews. So uh, thank you, Ryan. Um, I'm gonna be super brief. Uh, I have a, a very quick kind of intro, but I wanna make certain that we um, allow as much time for all the students. So I think everyone probably had the, um, PDFs that I sent through, but there are a few people that um, haven't seen uh, the projects before. So just to kind of walk you through um, kind of the, the overall studio format, 
um, we spent maybe about three weeks re researching the painted churches of Texas, um, looking at um, site uh, history, as well as looking at kind of hospitality case studies kind of throughout uh, Texas, as well as nationally and internationally. Um, and then we've also kind of done a kind of a series looking at stencils and trompe effects um, that were kind of inspired by the painted churches. And then really the rest of the semester has been about uh, developing a new idea for the von Minden. So just to kind of, let me just briefly walk you through kind of some of the background information. Um, uh, go to share screens. Sorry, this is where I am still learning all of these things. Are you able to see my screens? Okay, right, great. So, um, so for those who are maybe unfamiliar with the studio, um, so Schulenberg is, is a site um, which is basically about an hour and a half um, equidistant between kind of Austin, San Antonio and Houston. Um, it's literally just kind of off of I-10. Um, and it's also kind of what's known as the official home of the painted churches of Texas, which are kind of 20 some churches that were built um, in the kind of late 1800s, some early 1900s, primarily kind of by uh, Czech and German um, immigrants. Um, they're pretty modest from kind of an exterior perspective, but uh, the interiors I think have kind of what I would call kind of extraordinary um, use of kind of painted effects uh, that were really, I think, kind of to create economical but kind of dazzling kind of interior decorations but you find things where you have kind of faux marbling that is maybe inspired by tree rings or feathers or you have kind of painted bricks with you know faux shadow lines and um, you have a number of kind of stenciling kind of techniques as well as kind of trompe l'oeil uh, faux materiality um, and so really this was kind of a springboard of of using the the painted churches of Texas as a, as a source of inspiration to kind of look at what painted effects could achieve. Um, so we've also looked at kind of trompe l'oeil, um, and then kind of just to walk you through a little bit more about site, which all of the students should um, be able to also present their own uh, uh, research on uh, the. The Von Minden Hotel is basically, you know, a couple streets off of Main Street in downtown Schulenburg. Um, US 90 is uh, what used to be Highway, you know, 10. It basically was the most like uh, primary thorough, thoroughfare between Houston and uh, San Antonio. Uh, this is looking at kind of more specifically our site. Uh, Ryan also owns Jack and Mary's as well as kind of like a, a few other smaller um, buildings uh, as well as the Von Minden. So this is the building itself and the adjacent lot, um, which is potential parking area. There's also potential parking that could be located across the street. Um, this is then looking across the street at Jack and Mary's, which is kind of like a soft goods uh, store. Um, this is the, the uh, building itself. So it was built in 1927 as kind of like a traveler's hotel. It's had a, a few series of renovations that Ryan has been leading, including kind of asbestos remediation and then uh, new stucco on the exterior um, north and south facades, as well as replacing existing windows. Um, so kind of as built, um, this is, I guess, kind of, Plan North is to the bottom of the page, but looking at Lyons, which is that entrance. So, you know, there was kind of like a traditional small theater lobby 
um, with kind of a sloped auditorium, uh, uh, orchestra pit stage. And then the original hotel lobby entrance is located um, in uh, Plan North. Um, and then kind of second story, you have like the large theater space is really open to below with then a kind of orchestra, uh, sorry, not orchestra, but projection um, room located here, plan, plan left, and then kind of a series of small uh, uh, four hotel rooms on level two. And then kind of looking at a, a typical floor plan, um, I think the original hotel had a 40 room count, um, which is fairly small. And you can even see some of the rooms actually had common uh, bathrooms. Um, and then kind of section, uh, looking through the, um, the theater itself, it's kind of steel and wood construction. Here you can kind of see it uh, being constructed. And then existing photos. So the majority of the studio did do a site visit. Um, this is looking at the original hotel lobby uh, entrance into the kind of theater area. This is one of the level two um, former kind of guest rooms that Ryan has opened up. So you can kind of see existing steel wood trusses. Um, there's a terracotta kind of exposed brick. And then looking at maybe a typical kind of level three or level four guest room um, uh, series. So the students were really given the option to um, Strip, strip existing um, walls and kind of come up with their own vision of the Von Minden. Um, and I think that said, probably we should just start. Does anyone have any questions? All right, so Tara, you wanna kick us off? Yeah, let me share my screen. Okay, can you see that on full screen? Okay. Yes. So my vision for the Von Minden Hotel is to bring the Roaring Twenties to Texas. So I want to include luxe, fun, and exclusive aspects of the 1920s with the earthy, western, and raw aspects of Texas. So the use of animal prints and leather combined with gold details and patterns emphasize the use and play on scales. Large pieces also help highlight specific areas throughout the hotel, such as the bar and theater spaces. And the goal of this hotel is to stay connected to Texas roots while fostering a sensual experience. So these are some images that I drew inspiration from. Um, I found them inspiring while I was conceptualizing my, I, my ideas and design. And these images on the left led me to develop the color palette and materials palette um, that you see on the right. Um, the, in the Von Minden Hotel is located in Schulenburg, Texas, which is a fairly small town. Um, and which is why I want the hotel to be mainly for locals and for events and for people to have a, a place to go um, for entertainment. Some key amenity spaces I wanna highlight in the hotel are a large bar, live music, a banquet hall, and a cigar lounge. So at the beginning of the semester, we looked at the painted churches um, and trompe-l'oeil, and um, we were challenged to creating our own stencils so I started with a bunch of small patterns and I quickly realized that I was drawn towards animal inspired patterns such as leopard, crocodile, and snakeskin. So from that, I was able to develop and iterate my own versions of a snakeskin pattern and utilize it throughout the hotel. So on the bottom, you can kind of see a black version and then a maroon version and then um, a white and black version. 
Um, and I put, to, I put together mood boards at the beginning of designing to figure out how I can cohesively combine the 1920s style with the Texas style. And I wanted to put an emphasis on existing pieces of the hotel as well. So I decided to keep the existing wood flooring and terracotta brick walls. And I plan to keep them to preserve Texas roots and history, but refinish them to work in this space. So here you can see um, visions for the lobby, outdoor space, guest suite, and the cigar lounge. Um, this is an old versus new um, depiction of the exterior of the building. I, once again, um, painted the terracotta black. Um, I came up with a dark and more intriguing vision for the exterior. And then this is a version of this suite with the floor plan and the top left. So throughout this space, there are arches, dark colors, and lots of texture present. I designed the space to feel cozy and ambient. And within the room, I used a brown, black, and white snakeskin pattern on the walls. And the existing terracotta brick is painted black again. And the black walls are carried throughout the entire hotel. And then here's a closer look at the implementation of the snake stencil and an idea of what the suite bathroom would look like. The suite bathroom includes a tub, a shower, as well as a vanity station. So this is my vision for the corridor of the hotel. I used another snakeskin pattern on the lining walls, except they're black. Um, and very large in scale compared to the use of the bedroom uh, stencil. And I also tied in similar colors as the suite to create a flow between the spaces. The red door follows the usage of arches that I have carried throughout the hotel. And I wanted the doors to stand out against the snakeskin walls. So here is my first floor plan. The entrance is on the right and you have a grand spiral staircase to your right and the reception desk to your left. And as you enter, you're greeted by a very large circular bar um, followed by seating behind that and a stage at the very back. And then to your left, when you enter, you have um, restaurant spaces and outdoor um, seating spaces as well. This is the second floor of the hotel. Um, as you come up the stairs, there are open to below spaces, which are the spaces that are lighter. And then you have, um, you have exposed seating um, that is a flat space. And then all the way at the bottom, you have your cigar lounge. And then this is my version of the third and fourth floor plans. Um, I did decide to make the rooms bigger and um, have less single space rooms and more um, double space rooms. And this is a section cut through the hotel to show the lobby and the bar space, as well as other views and or another view of the corridor. And then this is my vision for the reception desk, which includes gold accents, gold colors and ambient lighting. This is my vision for booth seating. I wanted to create an experience for the user, which is why they're slightly elevated. And then this is the theater space or stage space. And I continued my arches throughout this space as well. And the snakeskin pattern once again grew in scale um, and application. So I amplified the scale of the snakeskin stencil pattern even more in this space. and. Um, my vision for this space is meant for live music and performances. And these are some images of the cigar lounge. I wanted the cigar lounge to be moody and intriguing. So by utilizing leather, velvet, wood, and brass throughout the space, I feel like the design allows you to be in a version of the 1920s while you're still in Texas. That's it.
I should probably say that I will let the reviewers speak more than I will today. <laughs> I mean, maybe I, I can start real quick. Um, just because I, I want to ask you, uh, Tara, um, what do you think about ideas of luxury? And uh, in what ways, um, obviously by your selection of ma materials and uh, palette, uh, this is the, the sort of effect that your project is trying to convey. Um, so I'm curious, um, why is luxury you know, the driver of the project? Uh, in what ways um, was it fundamentally addressed? Um, and, uh, and yeah, and I, I just wanna hear a little bit more about you know, the, the idea of striving that desire. Mm -hmm. So I feel like because Schulenburg was, is such a small town and everyone, it, it's very homey and everything is very, um, I don't know, like, it's just rustic, I guess. So I wanted to create something that they don't have there. Um, I wanted to create an experience for all of the locals and um, give them a place to um, to kind of go out of Schulenburg without actually leaving Schulenburg. And so I think my palette kind of incorporates both um, like the materials, I guess, which are seen throughout the town. Um, with the terracotta and the concrete and the um, wood and steel. And then I incorporated more, I guess, lux aspects, um, my version of lux aspects with gold and brass and um, animal skins and such. All right. Um, yeah. So the reason why I'm asking Tara is uh, I find it interesting that. Uh, well, you would like to do uh, such a thing in the first place, right? Um, it, it's all also because, um, well, for me, not being an interior designer and interested in, in, in the history of uh, interior spaces, um, I, I'm surprised or um, I'm intrigued by the, this, the asso historical associations we can have with, with certain materials, uh, even, you know, uh, uh, false ones, right? Like. Mm -hmm. You're not really applying uh, a snake skin, but uh, actually is a pattern, right? Um, so um, having said this, like uh, I'm most interested in materials that are trying to be something that they're not, right? Uh, as a way of creating, uh, you know, this false dichotomy and, uh, and you know, almost perversion that probably, uh, you know, a, a concept such as luxury is just, culturally and socially created, right? We just have assigned a value to gold and brass, right? But in and of themselves, like they don't mean anything, right? Uh, maybe they have, you know, their intrinsic, you know, physical characteristics and, and values, but um, it is just interesting again, like in what ways um, you can play more with that false dichotomy, things being really valuable and others that are pretending to be so. And in what ways um, that, playfulness gets manifested, not just to create, uh, you know, an experience, but a false one, right? Um, and, and in that way, you know, maybe uh, the project can become a little bit more ironic. And, and in that way, also create like a, a, a much more, uh, well, in my perspective, a, a much more unique experience, right? Um, because actually, uh, well, maybe that that was the, the, the and the purpose of the Trump Doyle uh, technique in the first place, right? Uh, rendering uh, banal and very um, uh, ordinary kind of spaces, extraordinary, right? Just by the act of, of mocking us, mocking the eye or, you know, tricking us, right? Not mocking, tricking. Um, so, um, so I would like, you know, uh, probably the, the seriousness of, you know, really advocating for luxury, um, to become something less of a serious act and more something that that reveals those sort of you know social and cultural constructions, um, 
as a way of you know um, challenging a little bit more uh, what interior design does and, and what the application of materials uh, can be you know also as a cultural practice right mm -hmm. uh, I just have to say that um, you know also when 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 you apply certain programs um, uh, I, I was curious like why the cigar room right like it has a, a history of being this you know highly masculine space right mm -hmm. uh, so I, I really hope that women are allowed there you yes. know and of course they are because uh, yes we're in the 20th uh, 21st century um so um so you know uh, so that that's why you know when when you uh, insert a cigar room but maybe you know challenge the sort of, of conventions and materialities that have been typically or historically associated with those spaces right like I, I wonder like what can you reinvent that type right or that type of room and the uh, materials that are associated with that right so when I see the when let's say when you present an image of that room maybe you can go to that image mm -hmm. if you don't mind so when you present the image of that space and um and yeah we see colors we see you know uh, those armchairs that are um let's say um stereotypically uh presented in, in those spaces and yes of course you included some women uh smoking which is great um you know i I'm, i wonder in, in what ways uh were you, let's say, um, conscious about the material selection, or were you just, you know, complicit or uh, re um, reusing uh, what you just know from um, mm -hmm. because it's stereotypically uh, there, right? Um, so again, like maybe you're reappropriating them to assign them a new value. Uh, but but then I would love for you to be more explicit or deliberate about you know those those decisions right mm -hmm. um, because you as a designer have the capacity to maybe recode um, those materials assign them new values yeah. uh, use them uh, as a way of you know both critiquing and and creating new associations um, well maybe this was a, a bit of a ramble but these are the, like the sort of you know uh, preliminary comments that that I can give you now. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I think I'll jump in and kind of segue from um, Pergiana's analysis of your design, um, which I enjoyed. And I think I understood in your, your mindset about Lux, you know, in thinking about this 1920s. And certainly, um, you know, in like the, the speakeasy kind of vibe with the cigar room and the colors, the art deco area and so on. Um, and I, I appreciated that I'm um, in wanting to make this a destination place, not only for tourists and people who are visiting or traveling through, but also locals. But, um, you know, in, in you know, the way that you're coding, you know, like Pergiana says, I would have been interested to see a little bit more of a merging of the, the culture that's present already in Schulenburg as far as a color palette and whatnot. And speaking as, you know, your former history professor, but also <laughs> preservationist, and thinking about, you know, one, the outside of this building, and I'm not sure that Schulenburg is um, a main street city or anything, but um, with historic buildings, certain considerations um, having to be made. I kind of freaked out when I saw the, the, the painted brick um, <laughs> on the outside and inside of the building. Um, I appreciated the, um, the changes to the site as far as parking so that you could have more available parking because it's always an impossibility especially when you go to historic places, there's nowhere to park as you're trying to access these buildings in the downtown mm -hmm. areas and the various am amenities. And I like how you shifted the parking spaces right on Lyon Street over to the north and had more of a landscape area in front of the entry of the building. Mm -hmm. But this is interiors. And so moving on to the interior spaces, um, a, a lot of my, my comments and, and what I'm thinking about really closely align with Perjana's thoughts as far as the color palette and the materiality um, I really enjoyed the play with scale in your snakeskin pattern. But again, in thinking about, you know, how much that might be appropriate for, you know, a, you know for Schulenberg Lux, because mm -hmm. I, again, I, I get, you know, where you're trying to go with this, but in thinking yeah. of a more kind of generic, you know, 1920s Lux, um, you know, what would Schulenberg Lux look like as mm -hmm. far as materials and color palette, um, the kinds of furnishing that you have present um, in the space. 
um, you know, and, and how you might contrast that, you know, with maybe some lighter areas that are more in line with what the painted churches look like and bringing in that history and that culture from the area, mm -hmm. but then, you know, juxtaposing that with maybe a darker space like the cigar room, but again, that's more culturally sensitive and thinking about the significance of the, um, of the history of the area, because that's one of the really important things about this, this historic building, right? And mm -hmm. the interior spaces with, you know, bringing it to life in a very new and modern way, uh, which is also what, you know, designers were trying to do in the 1920s, but also maintain, you know, be true to yeah. what is Schulenburg, the history of the building without, you know, not necessarily having to, uh, to repeat that. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Tara. Hi. Um, so I think that, um, I, you know, this will come out throughout the day, um, the, the discussion about uh, bringing out the history of Schulenburg and um, uh, taking from the um, painted churches that are in the area and how to, um, you know, what to do with the inspiration that you get from um, what's, what's culturally and historically already there. Um, so from your presentation, what I see is a desire to create a drama. And mm -hmm. I think that you have this kind of theatrical um, feel to your renderings. Um, but I think that when you, this drama that you're creating, um, it needs more of a strong story. And that story would come from, um, from Schulenberg. So mm -hmm. uh, I think when you talk about Schulenberg Lux, um, the luck comes from the richness of the history. And so what I would wanna hear more about is, you know, um, where did these uh, materials and where did these themes come from? So mm -hmm. I think the snake skin, um, it, you know, the snake skin could be interesting, but, but I would wanna know how, why, what links it to the place, you know, mm -hmm. if it was from, you know, if you talked about it being from um, a snake that you find in that area. You know, I think it's it's so much of it is about the story. And I think that when you're telling, uh, presenting your project, um, if you went into more detail about where your inspirations come from, then it would help to, you know, um, give us that sense of drama. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any more final comments, but um, I think that everyone I spoke very, I think, articulately about um, how you can, you know, continue to improve and, and, and rework the project, uh, Tara. I, I think it's also just really interesting to, to still think about the idea of, I think, uh, Yes, like what's the Schulenberg version of Lux? Because I would still kind of argue that to me, the painted churches offer that as an inspiration, right? That there's something that has been done in a way to replicate, you know, you know, very, very, you know, beautifully constructed historical churches from, you know, Europe. And yet there's the Texas kind of interpretation of that, that to me feels specific and accessible to the places you know that they're they're in and to me you know still being able to ride that line of reinterpreting you know yes like like how, what's a how, how could you apply a, a painted version of uh, a snakeskin inspiration to to make it feel kind of Schulerberg-esque you know and so like mm -hmm. I, I think to me like maybe going back another level and still thinking about the original sources of inspiration and then how you can still bring that back to your project would be, you know, maybe where you could keep it um, moving it forward. But um, I, I also, I wish you would have talked a little bit about the use of collage um, just because I think uh, I really still commend you for 
um, working and, and developing that as a technique for representation, because I, I do think that has been important to you. And mm -hmm. um, you can you do see that, I think, in, in the drama of uh, your imagery. So um, with that said, maybe we'll keep. Sorry, go ahead, Pierre Janet. Yeah. Oh, I just had like a, a tiny uh, little comment, Tara, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, there is a fascinating uh, uh, reading for you. Uh, it's called, um, it's about uh, fall materials. Um, and I think you would appreciate it and love it. It's by uh, an architectural writer and critic. Uh, her name is um, Alexandra Lange. And, um, and it's called When Fake is Better Than Real. And it's the history of laminate, laminates in, in the modern interior. Um, so um, it, it could be a, a nice thing um, uh, to think about, right? Like if you continue to be interested in, you know, uh, the different associations between uh, materiality and full materials and in what ways they're implemented or, you know, culturally appropriated and why, uh, that could be like a, a nice, um, you know, break reading for the winter. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I'll look into that. All right. We will maybe jump to Morgan. Hello. Can y'all see my screen? Yes. All right. So, Von Linden right here. Um, so like Lisa said, we um, kind of studied the painted churches in, in Praha. Um, and one that I specifically kind of studied was St. Mary's Catholic Church. And I enjoyed the arches in the way that the top dome being blue and the bottom being white kind of created two different spaces. And then the bottom is my stencil explorations kind of inspired from that and other sources. Um, my concept after looking through Trumpoy and the painted churches for the hotel was to create a space that promotes togetherness and a variety of fun for both locals and guests who need to get away from hustle and bustle ride. Um, the people that would be visiting the hotel specifically would be families from the surrounding area, um, parents, children, grandparents, extended family and whatnot. Um, and I tried to create this space um, for all ages and abilities. And then through the floor plan and what the amenities offer. It's located, like Lisa said, kind of in the middle of the triangle between Austin, Houston, and San Antonio. Um, I didn't change much of the parking or any of the outside. I, I like the terracotta books, so I kept it on this one. What I did change was the floor plate. Um, I flattened it out and changed the theater space um, to better serve the concept I'm proposing and offer a wider variety of amenities for every personality type. Um, so, yes, and there is an indoor pool that curves down into zero entry right here. Okay, this is level one. Um, so the main entrance is on this east side. Um, and there's basically two different groups of people that could be coming to the hotel, either like the locals who want to come eat at this restaurant, which is open to the locals, um, or guests of the hotel, which is the rest of the hotel. But the locals can enter here and then go directly into the restaurant. 
Um, but if you're a guest, you can check in um, and go right up to your room the stairs or um, you know, come in to the game room, which you can check out board games. Um, you can ask the kitchen to make you something. There's a window right here and then these folding doors go out to the courtyard, which there's picnic tables and more outside games. Um, so it's kind of like an extended game room. There's also a pool and a hot tub area for the guests. Um, the restrooms are located in the middle so they, they can service both the game room and the restaurant. Um, and I wanted to explore ways that curved walls can make a space more comfortable and inviting and then pushing and exploring the way those curved walls met the perpendicular walls. Um, the change in color is change in flooring. And I tried to explore ways that that could be a subtle way for wayfinding. Um, and then these, the entrance into the game room and the entrance into the pool room, I try to create a space for that threshold that sparked curiosity as you enter it, specifically for these spaces on the first floor that are for the guests, um, apart from the local people that would be visiting. Oh, and then there's a, oops. the second dairy lobby and entrance um, would be guests only enter, like hotel guests only enter there, not the local. Sorry, my computer is having a hard time. Um, so my second floor, um, come up the stairs and there is like a small library bookshelf with um, seating with the, in front of this glass wall that overlooks the restaurant. And you can see through these windows, um, this space is open to below, the pool space is open to below um, along with the lobby. So you can come in the second floor, there's a gym and a space tucked away in the corner for kids when the parents need to work out and watch their kids at the same time. And then there is staff lounge, laundry and storage, and a coffee and aroma bar. So you can explore essential oils and how they can improve wellness or grab a coffee and sit and enjoy your coffee in a book. Um, this is my proposed third and fourth floors for the guest rooms. I further wanted to explore the ways, um, the same on the first floor that the curved wall kind of um, being sliced and curved in from the perpendicular wall could spark curiosity or create a threshold experience for the guests. Um, so. I wanted to also explore ways of wayfinding through curves and how they meet the walls. Um, there's four different types of room suites and most of the um, features are the same throughout. There's a few that have living areas within the room um, and one that has the bathroom exposed, not the toilet, the bath and the sink. Um, I call that my, the romantic king suite. Um, yes, this is my proposed guest plan for rooms 304 and 404. Um, I wanted to explore ways that built-in furniture could be practical and also how that met, met the walls um, and provided natural flow through the space. Um, and the materiality, um, I wanted to 
convey soft and inviting materials, bright and airy, while also providing the pop of color and contrast. This is a 3D rendering of the King Suite. And here you can better see the way that the curved built in meets the wall. And um, yes. I wanted to explore applying stencils on a larger scale. So the what I loved from St. Mary's Church was the arches and the way that um, dome kind of created a different, a different space. So looking at the hotel and ways that you could practically do that in the hotel, I created these um, faux headboard. It's just painted on the wood surface. And then this like dome, if you will, um, of paint and tile. Here's more renders space. Um, I enjoyed how it separated the different areas of the room as you progress through. Also, the I was exploring ways mirrors can impact your reality of the space or vision. Um, so there's a mirror in front of the desk area. Um, that kind of chips you up a little bit, but it, it. And then going through into the rest, into the bathroom, um, it's kind of a frosted glass door. Um, and then ways of applying those principles in the room into the bathroom. I curved the mirror onto the wall. Um, and the tile and the shower up to the ceiling. Um, going back to the first floor, this is a look into the lobby and reception area from kind of almost the entrance. Um, and here I wanted to also explore stencils creating spatial differences. Um, so faux arches um, and how they fold onto perpendicular surfaces, um, and then how a curved wall can meet perpendicular wall, and how materiality can provide wayfinding. That is my Bond in Hotel. I was going to say, <laughs> I saw your project in the midterm, uh, and um, I thought it was fascinating then. I still think it is uh, very strong today. But I remember you had so much more images uh, of that experience, right? Uh, and, uh, and the spaces that, um, that created like um, almost this illusions of death. Um, so I, I, I just wonder, like, why you synthesize the presentation so much. Yeah. Um, the floor plan that I had for mid review was not functional and I could never, I couldn't figure out why. And I kind of got it to a good place. I basically restart, redid the first and second floor and on Monday and <laughs> This was as far as I could get to today. <laughs> I, I, see, I, see. Yeah, I, I mean, it's still very fascinating. And I'm just going to say, you know, a few comments of why I find it interesting. I mean, I, I'm looking at the plans now, right? Uh, I mean, what is functionality, right? I, I mean, uh, is it... Uh, um, I wonder also, you know, how you're defining uh, functionality in your project, right? 
Um, um, but you know that could be you know, a longer, uh, more intense conversation. Um, but something that I do like about what I'm seeing is almost how architecture um, ceases to exist, right? It becomes, um, and then, uh, or it exists in this realm between, you know, an envelope and then furniture. It seems like everything is a furniture for you. You know, walls transform into benches and, and, and I love that, right? Like um, that almost seamless transition between, um, you know, uh, the, the, the world of physical things and subjective experiences around the spaces, right? And I love that attention um, to, um, to what a person might see, what a person might experience, you know, and how you can provoke uh, those little uh, moments of, of discovery, you know, bo uh, both in the plan and the images you've shown, right? Like I'm still, and I loved on your midterm review and, and I love today, you know, like, uh, the use of mirrors, you, you know, and those you know tiny little uh, nuanced moments in which you change or um, you you play with my perception of reality, right? Like, oh, we just turn a corner and just that little arc, right? And it it's never logical because I'm like, oh, geometrically, you know, what is the principle ordering these decisions, right? And, and it's never um, it, it's never an overarching order. It's just almost like whimsical. Maybe I'm not reading this correctly. I wonder if you do have an order. Uh, but in the end of the day, I wonder if you know order even matters, you know, in, in this project and in the sort of, uh, of experiences that uh, that you're trying uh, trying to provoke, right? So, um, anyways, I just have to say that oh, please, you know, finish the project, right? Like if you change everything on Monday, then can you give yourself uh, one more week to see where this gets you, right? Uh, because I, I am, am really, uh, I mean, I commend you for the creation of the images and how meticulous you are. Like, it is evident that you're very meticulous. Like, oh, you know, this color is going to change a tiny bit in its hue in order to create, you know, a sensation of warmth. Here, I'm just going to change its hue so that I can create, like, cool. So. I, I am curious about, you know, the sort of relationship between, you know, what we think about uh, an objective reality and then your transformation into a subjective one and then constantly calibrating that throughout the entire project, right? Um, so I commend you on that. But again, please take that extra week. Uh, I, I would love to see more images. Uh, you know, I'm interested in the other types of rooms, right, um, that you have created. And, and I wonder also, again, um, uh, about, um, I think we spoke about this uh, in the midterm as well, but um, at a moment you had like the sort of um, curved walls that also transform perspectival views, right? So the central perspective is always a little bit skewed. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe, you know, also that uh, gets introduced in the way you render your images, right? Like there is a center, but you're a little bit off um, in order to, you know, uh, show that sort of uh, visual gains that you're constantly playing. I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you. Hi, Morgan. Um, I really enjoyed your design. And for me, um, in a lot of ways, it was about movement and different kinds of movement. So spatial movement in the way that you're, you know, you've created these walls and the other surfaces that are curved to encourage certain kinds of spatial, you know, um, circulation within this space, uh, which I thought was really interesting um, and very successful um, from my point of view. And then there's a, um, a movement of materials in the way that you incorporate the different kinds of materials, the different textures. Um, and there was something about that that I really enjoyed as well. Um, and thinking about your, your four floor plan and these curving walls and the way that you're encouraging guests, whether they're locals or visitors to um, to experience the space was interesting. Um, it's good to know that you redid this on Monday. And I was very, when I looked at your plan, um, you know, and thinking about um, not only spatial movement, but also visual movement, I saw the wall at, at, at the kitchen, surrounding the kitchen as being open to offer, you know, vistas. Um, and so it was, it was kind of surprising when that was enclosed, when you showed the view 
looking from the entry to kind of offside to the reception to the kitchen wall. So it might be interesting um, to play with that. And I know kitchen is a functional space and you have to worry about, you know, smells and sounds and all of those things. Um, but that's how I saw it in plan is you're, you know, encouraging these, this movement throughout the, um, the space. With your materials, um, you know, thinking about what this space might be in the experience and what it means to Schulenberg and the history and the culture, um, you know, looking back at your, your first slide where you're showing St. Mary's and, you know, the color palette and the, the symbols and motifs and everything, the ornament, um, I enjoyed the expression of that, you know, your, the transfer of that to the different materials and the color palette that you use in this space while keeping it, you know, you're not saying this is, you know, supposed to be a painted church. And then the views with the, um, the arched windows and um, a lot of the churches, I think that you guys looked at would have had pointed um, arched windows, um, but I enjoyed these as well. And so thinking about, you know, this kind of otherworldly or spiritual experience that you might get in other kinds of um, religious or spiritual buildings, I felt that. Uh, in this space, you know, whether those windows were more like, you know, in the grouping and arrangement of them were more like, I don't know, mosques or something like that. Um, but I, I um, that, that, you know, that the atmosphere that I feel like that that would create in, um, in, in, this, in these spaces, I think was really successful and very interesting application. Hi, Morgan. Um, I, I um, commend you on what you have created here spatially. I think it's really exciting to see that um, you've taken a hotel plan, which is usually, you know, has its own rigidity, then you know, totally kind of smoothed it out and um, exploded it. But for me, what was surprising about this is that you've, you've created... Um, an inner world, um, but I think that for a tourist coming to Schulenburg, we don't see Schulenburg. Um, so, you know, when you showed in the beginning the images of the St. Mary's Church, I don't see the studies that you've done. Um, I don't see how you've um, kind of integrated those studies into your design. Um, so I would, I would like to see how, you know, how it came in and then how it came out. Um, because in this, in this plan, um, it almost seems like it doesn't matter that this project is in Schulenburg. Um, and for a hotel and for a boutique hotel, I think it's so important to see, you know, even if you're creating this, um, in our world within the hotel to see, you know, um, more of, of how it's related to the place. That makes sense. I mean, maybe one way that you could start to reintroduce that would be if you also, um, you know, started to show the existing building. You know, I think in this rendition, we didn't really see a lot of the existing um, building. And to me, you know, the the terracotta, you know, it has such a rich history that it inherently provides a connection to place. And yet I think probably in all of the images that you've shown, you've focused the render views on your intervention. And so to me, there's still those missing kind of moments of, of how does these kind of tromploy softer spatial effects that you're creating then interact once you get a glimpse of something that, you know, has a hundred years worth of history in it. And, and I think that maybe, you know, like if you would have opened up some of your views to show that, then you could read the transitions a little bit more more clearly, or you could you could tell a more uh, full story that um, that the views aren't necessarily showing right now. Um, but I mean, I I, I commend you because I know you were really um, intent on updating and revising all of your 
your plans. Um, I, I think you could have been a little bit strategic because, you know, certain views you could have still re reused because, you know, the moments that you'd already created with like the bar and, and other, I think, places that you had worked out, um, you could still talk about that today, even if its placement is, has slightly changed and evolved. Um, so I'm going to echo still Pierre Jana's um, uh, advice that I think it's worth you are still working on because um, I think that you are crafting things, especially like through the kind of visual renders. And um, now that you kind of, I think, have arrived at, at a plan that you feel a little bit more content with, um, really being able to give yourself the opportunity to, to push that, um, I think would be worthwhile. So, but thank you. Um, all right, any other takeaways? No, all right, we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep going. Um, uh, I think we have Lauren. Thank you, Morgan. Yes, I will go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so for my vision of the Von Minden, it was intended to be an anchor for the community, provide safe spaces for people to gather, meet, or serve as a weekend getaway, equipped with full, a full list of amenities. The target users include people of all ages, the locals, families, as well as destination travelers. <clears throat> Seemingly minimal geometries, pastel colors, soft modern lighting are juxtaposed with fun accents and patterns along with some of the charming existing elements the building already offers. Key programs and amenities include a gym, a pool, a bar, a restaurant, as well as meeting and event spaces for the users. I wanted to use aspects from Schulenberg to highlight the hotel guest experiences in a modern and clean way. So with our research regarding the painted churches <clears throat> with the stenciling and the Trump Loy effects, which when simplified are more so methods of shadowing and layering. And so I was drawn to the images on the top as a study of light and shadows to create a sense of dimensionality. Also with the repetition of arches, uh, that was very appealing to me. So then in some of my stencils relating to that, um, and then the studies of layering stencils, of course, in shades of gray, they kind of create somewhat of an ambiguous figure ground relationship, which was also interesting to me. Um, and then moving on to the site context uh, in relationship to the neighboring businesses. Um, here's, it shows the exterior of the Von Minden. And then for the site in the proposed courtyard, I'm planning on including a garden as well as space for the community to set up a farmer's market and then with the parking as well. And then I extended the lower portion of the building um, to fit the kitchen. And so, and these images kind of draw inspiration from the, some of the existing elements of, or the previous elements of the Von Minden, which are very rich. And I wanna include in some of the spaces um, and then this uh, drawing context of like the interior of what it looks like uh, existing, uh, the one of the model rooms and then the theater. And so in the ground floor, the user the first enters the lobby space and then the direct access off of the street, um, the, the bar is accessible, but as well as in from the, um, the dining space. Um, so the theater space I decided to keep, but make the stage slightly smaller and create a stepping platform, which has booths 
um, and then a ramp for accessibility. Um, and then this lounge as a transitional space into the restrooms, which is accessible from the, the theater space as well as the lobby. And then the gym, which is uh, accessible from the parking for not only the hotel guests, but also for the, um, the community. And so there's this circular stair off of the lounge into the poche and it draws the users upstairs into the mezzanine. So where they have like additional seating and views to the stage as well. And then the meeting rooms for the community to utilize for different events and things if they want to run out and have different classes and things of that nature. Um, and then as well as a banquet. And then here is the layout for the third and fourth floors with the suites in the northern portion of the building and then the single and double bedrooms in this portion. <clears throat> so here are some of the various room types. A uh, commonality between the suites are the way there is some separation between the bed and the lounge as well as the bathroom. And then there's a couple of different restroom types. And so this is the model room I chose to develop. I started by expressing moments of carving forms out in an overall clean way with seemingly minimal moves. So with the curving forms in soft lighting while keeping the existing terracotta, I wanted the space to be more so flexible and generally free of the unnecessary. So there's an opportunity for a pull down desk in this area um, and built in storage into the threshold of the bedroom cove. So in the view of the vanity, it shows subtle trompoy arches of the counter. And again, carving out space for the storage, for the towels. Um, and then the texture turned into a, a 2D pattern on the wall. Um, so to the right shows the kitchenette where the terrazzo kind of wraps around the counter and the backsplash and under the cabinets to again give it a sense of the carving out. Then the view of the cove bedroom uh, creates an interesting experience as it shapes and extrudes from the cove, the bedroom does, um, I mean the bed to create the, um, the bed and then as well as it's mimicked in the bedside tables. And so here's some sections of that, of the model room. Um, and then moving on to the corridor, I was exploring the arches again and extruding the arches in uh, different ways with an inset door. Um, and then I plan to iterate this further in playing up the whole um, shadow and trompeloy effect. And so in the lobby, it's intended to pay homage to the original Von Minden with the use of the terracotta and the longleaf pine. And then uh, I wanted to incorporate some of the previous posters and wallpaper. Um, so this is really like um, paying homage to what the Von Minden used to be with an addition of some of the new minimal applications. And then this is a view of my Trump Loy bench wall where in every other section of the wall is an actual bench that extrudes, but in the other portion, it is just a simple um, Trump Loy application, just a surface application. And then here's a view of the bar from the restaurant and the dining space. And then here's some, a couple renders of the overall theater space showing another version of Trompeloy arches on the stage and then the staircase that extrudes from the poche and then as well as the mezzanine that the users can use to um, to view the stage as well and that is it.
Sorry, quick question. Do you have a, a like a section of the entire building? No. Okay. I mean, it's it's just interesting um, to see the project um, first presented through a plan, right? And then uh, we discover that uh, the orthogonality and the and like the sort of you know, effective plan design and, you know, talking about eff efficiency and functionality of a hotel, right, um, reveals completely different uh, uh, in the section or in the images, right? Like the, the capsule um, type uh, for the bedroom and, you know, like the series of arches and all of the techniques that you're applying to somehow push back to that, you know, very serious orthogonal and functionalist um, attitude yeah, that we see in the plan, right? But that's also why um, it could be interesting to to see a section, a complete section throughout the building. And also to think of the section uh, less as a presentation tool, but more as a design tool, right? Uh, to understand like the series of, um, um, of connections or uh, or the consequences that one move has in, with regard to another space. Um, in, in its totality, right? So uh, when uh, the series of, of arches that you incorporate in the corridor, you know, create uh, something uh, that it's new, but then it, it creates repercussions somewhere else. So um, it could be interesting to see that and to see you also uh, use that as a design tool rather than just, well, this just summarizes uh, what I've done little by little, right? And uh, and, and that's also something uh, um, that, that comes across the, the, the fact that there is uh, not like a totalizing view of, uh, of the project because everything is presented like in fragments, right? Like uh, when you showed like um, elevations of the room and, and sections, it's always like little by little. Uh, and maybe, you know, it is just like my training as an architect that I'm expecting the proper section as well, right? Uh, but what I'm encouraging you to do is like um, not to have the section because it's a requirement or because it's expected of you, but actually to you know appropriate it as a tool, right? Uh, it would be interesting to understand like uh, the height uh, uh, and, and the ceiling height connections in spaces such as this one uh, down here, which we see that well, what I've can describe as a very, very nice stair, right? That, that seems to float and, you know, if I go underneath it, 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 it might fall on me, but but it's it's a beautiful uh, piece of architecture, right? So uh, uh, I would love to understand the spatial relationships between different rooms, right? Everything is, you know, um, defined by the frame of the picture, right? Um, so that's why, you know, I would love to understand the spatial connections that you're able to produce, you know, at a larger scale. Also, I bet that if I, sorry, Sarah, I know that you were about to start, but it's just like looking at your benches, I, I, I swear that I would be the person that sits there and falls. <laughs> so I think like, you know, your use of the trumpoil technique, it's, it's also beautiful and very playful. Uh, so so that, that is a moment in the project that I like a lot, right? So I, I wish there were more of that. Thank you. Yeah, actually, it's a perfect segue, actually, um, Persiana. That's, I think, my favorite part um, of the building is that bench wall as well. Uh, and then just speaking to uh, connectivity of spaces, um, what I enjoyed about your program um, is a little bit more you've shown the connectivity to the community in the incorporation of things like meeting rooms um, and pushing even a little bit further um, accessibility and the kinds of spaces um, that the community would be able to access because it's obviously something that would be really important for a landmark building like the Von Minden uh, within the town of Schulenburg um, in the same way that um, <clears throat> uh, we had, you know, the incorporation of some of the colors and, um, you know, those palettes from the painted churches. I think you've successfully conveyed that in this design as well. 
uh, but what I really would have liked you to see you push forward because in a way um, you've incorporated a little bit more of that history and those tactile elements that we have from, um, from the building with the posters and some of the other things that you have present there on the lobby wall. I would have liked to see that um, incorporated a little bit more into some of the other spaces. Um, you know, so you have some very modern interior spaces, you know, with a lot of the, the blank walls and conveying those colors and how the different colored areas create the zones for the program. Uh, but I think it would be interesting uh, to see incorporation of, you know, more art or decorative arts objects or murals or some of those things that you've placed in the lobby area um, within other spaces. And I kind of, I, I really love the, the barrel vault of the, the hallway on the guest room floors. And I understand that the trompe l'oeil, um, you know, and, and the, the, the play between light and dark creates the, the ornament and the atmosphere and the feeling. Uh, but I almost wish there was just a little bit something more uh, that would be from the, um, you know, like the, those beautifully painted ceilings without, again, it looking like a 19th century church um, in a building that you're trying to create um, you know, a, new, a new environment, a modern feel. So um, yeah, just, just push a little bit more uh, as far as uh, those connections with the, the history. But um, well done, Lauren, really like this design. Thank you. Hi, Lauren. Um, I think that the way that uh, Pierre Gianna um, said it is really uh, hit the nail, where you know when we see the plans of the rooms and then where um, the way that the plans are shown, it looks, you know, quite conventional. And then the next image you show is this corridor. And it's, um, you know, usually the corridor is the most um, boring static part of the hotel, but the way that you've done the corridor with the arches is, um, it, it's, you know, very exciting. And, and um, I think that the, this corridor, um, you can you can develop further and uh, research further in the way that you've studied the trompe l'oeil. Um, I think there's some kind of hint of a shadow, but in the corridor you wouldn't have these this natural light coming in. So how you would bring in how you would integrate lighting to further. Um, to, to further uh, create this type of trompe l'oeil effects would be really interesting. And I would love to see that kind of study developed um, in that kind of detail further throughout the project. Um, I, I love what you've done in terms of the study of materiality. I think that um, if we saw more of a relationship between the existing and the new, that would be really interesting. Like if you, honed in on a detail. There's a corner in one of your images where there's um, this clean kind of um, uh, pink wall and it has a, um, you know, straight corner with a brick wall. But to see that corner would be really interesting to see how this existing material um, uh, works with the new. Um, also to see kind of layers peeling. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's a very interesting project that um, if, the, if the plan and the sections were, were worked together, um, you would start to develop a language that would be, um, that would bring, bring the project together. Yeah, I think I want to maybe like echo something that like Alison Gaskins had um, said at a previous review um, for you, Lauren, just that there's just to me like a lot of power sp specifically on like these two images that you're showing on the right um, in the, the kind of trompe l'oeil spatial techniques that you've developed. And I, I think that um, that kind of seating moment is is really, I mean, it's amazingly executed. And to me also like um, seeing the stare and just the way that you're still using color and shadow to still kind of push and sort of blur your perception of what's being pulled forward or what's being pushed back. And 
I think those are to me like really, really successful and that you've developed that as a technique. Um, I think that the just concept of, of thinking about the quality of the section and how you use that as a tool for design. Um, similarly, I think that's, I know we had kind of talked about potentially the use of poche and plan. Um, I think if you could think about like the use of poche and shadow relative to still a, a, a furniture piece or like how you still draw and represent those qualities in plan and in section, I think that that would maybe open up, you know, our reading of your projects and you could, again, like as Pierre-Jean said, use that as a, as a device for design as well, as opposed to just using your plan as kind of just a, a a, a pure kind of, you know, spatial representation tool. Um, because I think that, um, I think you have a lot of techniques. It's just maybe to, you know, everyone's point is, is finding a way to express that um, in, in all of the ways that you're representing the project. But um, I think you, you really have mastered some, I think, really beautiful moments, so. Thank you. Um, okay, well, maybe we will jump to our last for this morning, um, which is Lily. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my vision for the Von Minden is for it to be a place for members of the city to come together, interact with new visitors, and just celebrate what the city has to offer. I also wanted it to be a place where people can take some time to relax and either focus on themselves or focus on spending time with friends and family, especially right now because the mental well-being of people is so important. Uh, and as you can see on this bottom right image, most of the existing hotels in Schulenburg exist closer to I-10. And so I thought it was really special that the Von Minden is kind of in the heart of the city and can bring people deeper into it. And then in this image on the top right is a picture of Jack and Mary's, which is owned by the same owner of the Von Minden. And it currently functions as a communal space that encourages positive so social interaction of all individuals of all ages and abilities. And whenever we got to speak with the owner, we learned about how various community events take place here and how it's been able to kind of bring people together. And then on this more zoomed in site drawing, you can see how close uh, Jack and Mary's is to the hotel. It's kind of catty corner and how it can function as sort of an indirect extension of it because I really wanted the hotel to reflect these same ideals about social interaction and inclusion. And so uh, as a part of the painted church uh, research we did, um, we learned that they're like these really intricate churches sort of out of the middle of nowhere and like are kind of unexpected. And I really wanted the Von Minden to have a similar effect. And so on the left are some examples that really intrigued me because a lot of the churches had materiality that was painted or stenciled on the surfaces in order to reflect the designs of the homeland of those who constructed the churches and immigrated because they didn't have access to some of these same materials. And I thought it was especially interesting how from afar you would really have no idea that these elements were painted, but then it kind of gives it away the closer that you get to them. And then in the middle are some studies that I did on a faux terrazzo that could be accomplished with the stencil and paint on top of different materials. Uh, and then on the right is the palette that I came up with for the project, which was informed by this idea of faux materials. Uh, the ones that I focused on were stenciled brick, terrazzo, marble, and wood. And then the tones of them were also informed by the existing brick and wood floors of the building because I wanted to preserve as much existing materials as possible, and then also some cooler colors in order to complement the more warm ones of the existing building. And I wanted to use these different painted materialities to emphasize what parts of the building are existing versus the new additions that I've made to show how the simple application of just paint can have an effect spatially. And so this is the plan of the first level. The usage of this space apart just from everyday use would prim primarily be for like community gatherings, uh, speakers or smaller independent artists. And so on this east side is the main guest entry where they can check in at the front desk. And then I am proposing there to be four condo units in the building. 
So over in this upper left corner, there's like a separate resident entry that would be a bit more quiet of an entry. And then the stage is located centrally here uh, with this uh, built-in recess seating that has a ramp going down into it. And then along this wall is a retail space because that was another part of Jack and Mary's that I thought was really special. Uh, they allowed vendors who made jewelry or other things that didn't necessarily need a, a whole storefront to sell their products there. And so I wanted for this area to allow for more of that. And then there is a bar for more of the nighttime activity as well as a cafe that functions indoor outdoor and then kitchen and laundry in the back of house. Uh, and so this is the second level. On the left side is a lounge for more private or personal gatherings, as well as the management office. And then on the right side, there is a smoothie and a gym, uh, which I chose as programs because they go back to the idea of like mental well being in the community as physical health is often an outlet to improve this. And so this is the plan for level three which is the same layout as level four. And there are two guest room types, which are these five smaller rooms and then these two slightly larger rooms that all kind of correspond to this uh, guest side entry where they also have a little coffee lounge right off the elevator. And then these are the two different condos. Uh, this is the plan for the roof, which includes an above ground pool with a, a ramp leading up to the deck to it. Uh, as well as another bar and area for yoga, uh, as well as a community garden. Uh, in this section of the building, you can see how I really wanted the, the bottom two levels to be like really active and encourage people to gather. And then the upper two levels, I did kind of want to keep more quiet and focus on relaxation. And then also in this lower image, you can see uh, how the existing what floor was sloping and how I kind of leveled it out. And then in the recess seating, there are different levels to it. And so this is the model room that I focused on, which was the smaller of the two room types. And also in all of my rendered views, I have a little key of materiality in the corner to point out what is actually the painted or stenciled material onto different surfaces. And so I wanted to use the differentiation between the terrazzo and the brick stencil to sort of show this relationship between existing surfaces and the new walls, while also like giving definition to the headboard area. And then the stenciled on wood pattern I wanted to use to like visually frame this existing terracotta brick and just show how the application of paint can give the insinuation of material and also spatially define the room. And then I also did keep the existing longleaf pine wood floors in here. Um, and then also this shelf, I'm using terrazzo on top of wood just as a, another application of these stenciled materials. Uh, and then in the bathroom, I am using actual terrazzo because I also thought it would be interesting to have a, a contrast between actual material and painted materials, same with the, the brick stencil and then the actual brick. And then I also choose to use this dark hardware and framing for the shower throughout to kind of reflect back to the steel structure of the building. And so in the corridor, I kind of wanted to open up the room and change what is conventionally inside and outside of the guest room by creating this sort of interior porch uh, with the intentions of either allowing someone to sleep in later if you have someone who gets up earlier or if a bigger family is staying in different rooms, they still have a place to gather. And so in the corridor, I'm using more of this painted terrazzo, but in this instance, I'm using the larger scale to divine the more public areas like the seating and shelving for extra towels and then a smaller scale to define the entry to the rooms themselves. And so this is the coffee area right off of the elevator for people to spend their mornings in a more quiet way if they don't wanna go all the way down to the lobby. Uh, and then the brick is exposed here as well. And then again, I'm using the terrazzo to show sort of these new elements that I've added and at a larger scale since it's a more public area. Uh, and then this is the first place that I'm using the stenciled marble, which I choose. I chose mainly to use on built-in elements that people would kind of get closer to and have the realization that the material is actually painted on. Uh, and so this image on the ground floor, I just wanted to point out how this wall was plastered over about three quarters up of it uh, to explain why I stenciled the walls on the ground floor the way that I did. Um, I wanted to use a, a larger scale of 
brick stencil than the existing. So they would kind of create a contrast between the painted and actual brick, as well as just using like super size scale of material in the more public areas of the hotel. And so this is what the first level feels like at an overall glance, kind of using a, a more broad collage of all of these painted materials. Uh, so this is the wine bar and another aspect of the stencils that I wanted to use was using the stenciled wood on the concrete floors of the first level. And I thought it would be kind of a special aspect of the building to have the stenciled floors age over time the same way that the brick walls have already sort of started to do. Um, and then I'm also using this painted marble again on the built-in bar. And uh, I wanted to use the change between the, the red and the gray brick stencils to sort of show where the program changes. Uh, this is the retail area that would again act as an extension of Jack and Mary's for the local people to sell their work. Uh, it has the same tonal change in the brick stencil to show the change in program. And then this shelving that sort of turns into the booth seating on the other side. Um, is also painted marble because I thought this was again an important kind of touch point that would make people realize that it was painted on. And so this is the stage and because the events that I wanted to have here would kind of be smaller and more local, I wanted the stage to have that same feeling. Uh, and then this is also another view of that booth seating on the different levels. And I wanted it to feel comfortable if something is going on on the stage, but also be comfortable for an everyday usage. Uh, and then above the stage is this other lounge that I wanted to have visibility within the first level, but it can sort of become more private depending on how much this curtain is drawn. Uh, this is the restaurant still on that first level. And I wanted to carry out the same idea of applying the brick stencil to these existing walls, but then using terrazzo in contrast of the, the new elements. And this is the smoothie bar up on the second level. I tried to use a, a slight variation in the combinations of painted materials throughout each amenity space so that they could sort of develop their own idea while still all having some materials in common. And then this is that area up above the stage on the opposite side of the smoothie bar that can kind of have varying uh, degrees of privacy. And it also carries out this translation between the brick and terrazzo stencil. And so I wanted to end with this image again because I think it kind of personifies my vision for the Von Minden as a place for people to gather and take time to have fun or relax while also playing up the distinction between the existing and new elements and uses the painted materiality to create another identity in Schulenburg. I guess I'll go first this time. We'll switch up the order <laughs> a little bit. Um, one thing that I want to, um, and it's kind of a, a reiteration of something that I've said before, is the, um, to me, what's really successful about your color palette and bringing in some of those similar colors that we would have seen in the painted churches, but in a really unique and very interesting way, because the manner in which that you've balanced the historic material and textures with the, the painted surfaces is, is really interesting to me. Um, but there's something also very playful about it and kind of almost postmodern even, um, which I like, and especially in the areas, especially in the, the primary open area where you're even using those, um, those surfaces and that treatment to um, show off the differences in program and scale um, and whatnot. So I really enjoyed that about your design. Um, also just the, um, what uh, I think Persiana was saying about, you know, having a section and plan and, and that rendering, and, and y'all know I'm not a designer, but it's very easy to see the relationship between not only the various areas of the building and how the program is related, but you can really see um, what I think, what, what you're trying to express about the function of the building and its use is, for me, is really, um, you can really see that in your renderings and the sections and so on and so forth. Um, and really that connectivity between the different parts of the building, 
um, the different programs, but also the community. And for me, this design was really successful, um, especially as you have, you know, historic building and what um, the owners are trying to do uh, as far as the community is concerned and with this particular building, especially um, is, is have that relationship with the community. And you can really see that here. I think it's really focused on the local vibe um, that they're going for while still being very inviting for, um, for tourists um, and otherwise guests of the hotel. I really thought that um, it, it was very thoughtful um, and the way that you incorporated uh, the condos in the building so that you have that residential aspect um, all the time. Because of course, what we've seen in, in historic downtown areas is there's, there's no life after dark basically. And so having that, um, that residential component is you keep the building alive um, for you know, a longer part of the, the day in a, in a different way that it's alive as a, as a hotel for, for tourists and visitors and people who aren't there all the time. Uh, the same thing with the retail space and your incorporation of that extension of other retail areas into this building and very specifically that intent of being able, uh, of this being a place for local, um, for artisans or craftspeople or retailers um, to inhabit this space as well. Um, one of my favorite um, instances of the building was the, um, the model bathroom. Uh, to me, that was really, again, playful but for me also just in a very different way, uh, had a, a feel of a church almost with the shower and that material you're tying to the still frame of the building, but that also felt very um, stained glass window like to me. And by using the painted surfaces and the other materials um, and the way that they're reflecting um, in the mirror, in the bathroom and, and through the shower wall, I think was very interesting because you're kind of creating the ornament in that, that stained glass window effect almost um, for me. So I really liked, I really enjoyed uh, that space. Um, those are, you did that in a very interesting way for me. Um, but those are my overall thoughts. And Thank you. You're, there. you're welcome. Go ahead, Diane. Hey, Lily. Um, I also really enjoy the way that you've thought about the program for this building. Um, I think that it's, um, you know, you, you uh, really get a sense um, that this is a building with history and that you've added another layer of, of, of history and given a um, new life to the building. Um, the section that you showed is fantastic where you've taken that um, slope theater and, um, you know, created this uh, new theater out of it. Um, one thing, a side note that I would say is that um, the way that you have the, um, the ramp going in the middle portion of the theater takes away from, um, you know, the prime real estate of having seats in the middle, um, but that's just a side note. Um, I think that this, this, um, main open space that you've created really gives a very unique um, sense of community. And it's a building that's, um, you know, a boutique hotel, but it's, um, you know, more towards the community than it is for tourists. Um, I, I, I think that the way that you've incorporated the material is um, really, successful. However, I think that the, um, the use of foam material is, I think, not specific enough yet. So I'd like to, um, I think that you can think about more uh, the choice of what, what foam material you're using where and the, um, when you're changing the scale of it, the reasons um, that you do. And also, um, it would be interesting to incorporate um, a community aspect to the um, to the way that the materials are painted. Um, but yeah, I really I think that the the way that you've thought about the program is um, is really fantastic. Thank you. So thank you, Lady, for the presentation, and I I will echo many of the comments you just received. Right, like. I agree with Tara that you know there is a lot of post-pomo, post-modern um, uh, 
motifs in the project, right? Like I, I can think of the Charles Moore house in Austin, you know, if you've seen it and, you know, uh, his use of material and foam materials as well. And of course, you know, Memphis group with all the work of Ettore Sosas in, in Italy and, you know, also again, like the appropriation of, of, uh, of laminates, right? As a way of introducing um, foam materials into furniture pieces, right? But, uh, and, and in that note, I also, you know, uh, miss like the, uh, the extent of the playfulness in, in, in those precedents, right? Uh, I, I think like uh, thinking that the full materials are just painted surfaces. So I, I wonder how are those painted surfaces achieved, right? Is it, you know, um, you know someone who will go and spend a, a lot of time just painting this or are they gonna be printed wallpapers, right? Or are you gonna use, you know, printed, you know, pre-existing material, right? Like there are tiles that have pr patterns printed on them that vary from, you know, a very figurative um, patterns all the way to those that emulate materials, right? Um, so, uh, so then I agree with, with Diane, with I, you're lacking that specificity, right? That, um, that for you, everything is a painted surface, but how is that surface fabricated uh, by the labor of whom, right? Or under you know what standardized materials or not right um, and in what ways you 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 benefit from you know those pre-existing um, uh, materials uh, could you know give uh, uh, more grounding to the work right to really really understand how uh, how different it is to apply a tiled surface right that has the printed pattern on top versus someone that goes there and paints, right? Um, and, you know, the, the complexities also of organizing and, uh, and materializing that, that sort of work. Um, but I have to say that then, uh, and also, sorry, I'm, I'm echoing everyone else's comment, but because I also had like the same observations is, um, well, how, um, why and where right, certain materials are applied and what is the expected effect, right? Um, so for example, you know, uh, you had um, a terrazzo um, counter, right? Uh, but it's a painted surface, right? So I wonder, well, if it's a painted surface, what is the real material, right? That you applied the painted surface? Or again, is it a laminate? Um, is it a carpet that has the, the terrazzo uh, pattern printed, right? But then again, like the effect, right? Like the contradiction between what I see and possibly what I feel, right? Because if I you know, pass my fingers uh, through many of your walls that have like the brick surface applied to it, then I realize that it's a flat surface. It doesn't have like the texture uh, of it, right? Um, so something similar could be interesting when, when we talk about, uh, you know, um, the, the ground, you have wooden floors, but what if it's a carpet, right? or if it's a tile that has the printed uh, pattern of the wood, right? And then, you know, when you walk on it, you're like, oh, I'm walking on a tile surface. This is not wood because it doesn't sound the same way, right? So, you know, that attention to the specificity of, of the material, right? Not of the pattern, just the material, right? To create certain uh, calibrated effects would be, you know, would bring the project to, uh, you know, uh, um, a different dimension, right? Of, of specificity, of resolution. And again, like, and in what ways uh, do you really um, use the, the palette of things that you have at your disposition as a designer, right? Um, and in that sense, like, I love the building marble furniture, right? Because I, again, like thinking about how gullible I am Right? Like if I were to open one of those cabinets and then realize like, oh, this is just like almost void, right? It doesn't have the heaviness. It doesn't have like the coldness of the marble, right? I would be like, oh, this is impressive, right? So, uh, so those are the, the kind of uh, experiences that, that you're providing, but you don't reveal the mechanisms of why is that intended in that way, right? So for example, in the bathroom could be also like a, a very nice way of, you know, challenging the expectations of what, you know, a sanitized hygienic uh, bathroom of a hotel is versus the sort of materiality that allows for, you know, that um, 
uh, experience to be, right? Like imagine seriously having a carpet in the bathroom, <laughs> right? That has the pattern of tiles, right? And like, okay, no, this is su super bizarre. I don't want to go there, right? Um, but again, like, is that calibration, that that unexpected reaction between what I see and what I feel, uh, which, you know, again, could bring the project to a different resolution, right? So it's the clarity of really understanding what materials are, how they're fabricated, how they're uh, installed in site, right? I also like and, and commend you with the, uh, the series of programmatic decisions that make the project uh, stronger. Uh, but then, you know, the, the space that is dedicated to the local vendors, I, I wouldn't then uh, uh, assign them just to a, a sort of a co corridor or something that it's attached to another even more specific program, right? Would make a room for that, right? Uh, to elevate it um, just then, you know, like an impulsive shopping experience, right? Something yeah. that actually, you know, uh, celebrates uh, local artisans and, uh, and well, the people of uh, Schulenburg. But thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, I think that, um, I think everyone's comments also made me think of the fact that, that you could really be much more even playful with your interpretation of what a material is. I, I think that the idea of, yeah, like a, a, a carpeting that, you know, represented as wood or, you know, again, like you kind of are always still representing terrazzo more literally as a terrazzo, even though you're playing with scale, but like terrazzo in, it can actually be made out of so many different types of playful materials. So even if you're still exploring that in a two-dimensional painterly application, like how could you create a terrazzo like effect, you know, through illustration or through other ideas of, you know, what creates, you know, that type of surface or even still kind of going back to the kind of faux marbling that we saw in some of the painted churches, you know, like when you step back, it looks like it's, it's a marbled effect. And then, you know, but when you kind of approach it, sometimes it gives itself away. And so still being able to potentially explore or manipulate, I think those could just be a fun component, I think, to layer in, um, through kind of like, I think a, a more rigorous application of um, wh where that still might make sense um, from a programmatic standpoint. But I think I always really just appreciated um, how I think sensitive you were still to site and to um, listening to the owner's needs um, and what their kind of still vision is or what they're still kind of wrestling with in terms of coming up with um, with, with what their idea of the Von Minden Hotel um, should be. So that said, I think, thank you very much. Um, I think that's everything this morning. I don't know if anybody has um, any final comments. Um, Ryan, I don't know if you're still here. I won't put you on the spot, but um, do our other reviewers have any takeaways? I mean, I just love the work, Isa. I, you invited me for the midterm and and now for the final review and I just commend you all. I think like um, the premise of the story is very interesting because it forces you, uh, all of you, to actually uh, rethink <laughs> the role of, you know, surfaces and what surfaces are a able to provoke and to uh, expand ideas of, of spatial experience. Um, so I think like it's it's very nice to see the work today, and uh, the level to which uh, you have taken this as a as a very interesting challenge. Um, so um, thank you again, Lisa, for having me, and uh, thank you, uh, well, the students that presented in this first session for for your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, um, this morning has been really interesting for me as well. And I sort of I started the week reviewing um, in Allison's studio um, and they were considering a very abstract sense of place. Um, and then you guys ending the week with you this morning um, and focusing specifically 
on a place and how um, an interior in your overall design is meant to evoke um, not only the feeling of that place, but the history of it. So um, well done, it's been really interesting. Uh, and I just enjoyed seeing you all again since I had you in class some time ago and I'll uh, try to tune in on YouTube uh, throughout the day because I'd really like to see um, what the rest of you all have, have come up with this morning. So thanks for the invitation, Lisa. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lisa, for the invitation and thank you for the, the great presentations. Um, it was really interesting for me to see it from uh, across the world. And um, it must have been, you know, such a challenge to work on this uh, very site specific project um, during this time. I really commend everybody's efforts and um, really interesting projects. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you. Um, all right, I think that maybe wraps up our morning. Um, if, if, uh, I think we can let our reviewers go and then I guess we see everyone back at 1230. Okay, awesome, thank you. <laughs> thank you for all of your comments, so thank you. Cheers.
Hi, Igor. Igor. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Igor. Hi. Can you hear me okay? I can, yes. Great. That's good. Yeah. How are you? I'm doing okay. <laughs> I'm actually in Ohio now, so it's it's freezing up here. <laughs> I'm back home. Okay. Yeah. And hi, hi. Megan. <laughs> Hello, I guess it's Terrence. It's nice to That's meet right. you. That's right. Hi, Lisa. Nice to meet you virtually. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm very excited for this. Um, so. And I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Well, Thanks for inviting us. We'll wait for a few more, a few more, I think, that are still on their way. Um, okay. <sighs> Hi, Lily. Hi, Jingyu. Hi, Mackenzie. <laughs> Hi, Shay. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Stella. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? Doing well. <laughs> and you? Good. I'm also home. Oops. So, is that in Colorado or where are you? I'm in Nashville. Oh, you're in Nashville. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah, it was snowing here the other day. It was pretty exciting. Did you uh, did you drive home? Did you take a road trip? I flew with flew, my okay. with my intense mask and everything. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. debating driving by myself, but it's kind of a trek. I know. I know. I was only asking because uh, the that drive through Tennessee is one of my favorite drives, like parts of the drive on the way sort of to the Northeast. And I, yeah. it's just such an extraordinary drive. Um, yeah. But I think, yeah. Are you glad to be back in Texas? I am. It's really, um, it's, you know, it's the best season to be here. Um, it's, and, you know, compared to Paris, it feels like we have so much personal space that it's, you know, it's hard to explain to, um, our French friends that, you know, you can go for, you know, an hour long walk and not get within like 20 feet of anyone. Um, and, you know, we're super lucky to have these beautiful trails here that are right in the city and, um. So yeah, it's, it's nice to be back. Yeah, you get that's, pretty that's... good at dodging people. I'm sorry? You get pretty good at dodging people, like just yeah. switching sidewalks. And... Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit like Miss Pac-Man or something, except instead of trying to, uh, you know, kind of uh, collect points, you're like avoiding them. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm at home in Hell's Kitchen in Manhattan, and here, of course, you, you can't throw a stick without hitting someone. Um, so a little like Paris, although, you know, with COVID, things are a little... Well, actually, I live on um, a street with a lot of restaurants, so it's actually quite active, and um, there's actually a lot of, like, celebratory noise every day, and it's kind of, you know... Uh, it's actually nice to kind of affirming to have that life right outside the window. And of course, my, my bedroom's at the back and it's quiet. So if I need some peace and quiet, I can go back there. But up front, um, they have um, sometimes live performances or there's a, a karaoke place and everybody's moved outside, of course. So uh, there's um, it's it almost feels a little New Orleans-esque some evenings. It can get a little rowdy until it all shuts so down at nice. 10. Yeah. Well, I think we could all use... Um, a little bit of publicness right now. So that sounds really nice. Mm -hmm. Everybody now are, they're building these elaborate constructions to try to keep their outdoor dining going um, in the cold weather here. Um, and, you know, so all kinds of like, you're seeing all kinds of interesting designs and materials assembled and heaters and you know, people, some of them have like kind of a, like little, they look like little cottages with windows and, you know, one side will be open and the other three sides will be decorated. 
some are quite <laughs> elaborate some are quite simple it's 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 pretty interesting to watch them go up hi Norea. <laughs> Um, all right, well, I think we have everyone um, to go ahead and get uh, started. So um, I will first introduce uh, our, our guest, um, not that we have, we have not many guests, but we have Terrence Schroeder, I guess, who uh, was exceptionally generous in responding to a kind of uh, random email from a stranger, but um, uh, he is a partner at Deborah Burke's office and I think has been um, one of the kind of lead designers, I guess, on all of the 21C um, projects amongst many other um, uh, amazing, uh, amazing typologies. And I just am really excited to um, hear what your thoughts will be on the studio and what the students um, work is. So thank you. Um, and then we have um, Igor uh, Siddiqui, who is the director of the interior design department at UT and also has his own um, practice here. And then we also have uh, Nerea uh, Feliz, I guess, who is likewise, I guess, a, an assistant professor um, at UT and has her own uh, amazing practice. So I'm just I'm really excited to hear what your thoughts are. Um, I'm going to be very, very brief and just do a kind of quick um, uh, background info just because two of our reviewers have not been um, on a review uh, yet. So bear with me one moment. No. Um. You, you are able to see my screen. Great. Um, so the church is, uh, sorry, the studio is um, painted churches, stencils, trompe and a hotel in Schulenburg, Texas. Um, and also, I apologize. Um, I should have introduced Ryan. Uh, Ryan Motitka is the owner of the Von Minden. Um, he is also on, um, on this review, but will probably be a little bit silent in the background. But Ryan, if you have any thoughts, of course, feel free to um, to, to, to speak up. So um, uh, the studio, uh, so, so Schulenberg is basically a, a small town about like 3000 or so. It's equidistant more or less between Austin, San Antonio and Houston. Um, and it's also what's kind of known as the a, a kind of official home of the Painted Churches of Texas, which are 20 some kind of churches that were built kind of in the late 1800s, um, primarily by kind of Czech and German immigrants. Um, but what's kind of unique about them is that they have really kind of humble um, exteriors, you know, kind of often tucked away in more kind of rural um, locations. The interiors, I think, have kind of these really, I think, kind of idiosyncratic and quirky um, painted uh, interior moments. Here you kind of see a, a kind of faux marbling um, that's generated by kind of a feather and tree ring-esque uh, use. You have painted uh, uh, brick, uh, column, shadow lines. Uh, there is kind of a, a number of ones that utilize kind of stencils, um, as well as, you know, just kind of trompe l'oeil and faux materiality uh, to really kind of replicate um, kind of old world uh, churches from, um, uh, from, from their homeland. So the studio researched the painted churches. Um, we also kind of spent some time looking at trompe l'oeil um, and stencil effects, um, as well as kind of looking at um, uh, kind of just what's happening in the hospitality industry at the moment. Um, and so kind of to briefly just introduce you to a uh, site more specifically, this is then Schulenburg. So here you have I-10, um, which is really that main thoroughway between uh, now, I mean, really east-west um, interstate, but uh, the hotel is uh, situated off of US 90, which before I-10 used to really be that main um, east-west connection. It's also kind of a, a few blocks off of Main Street. 
Um, this is the site. So this is the Von Minden Hotel. Um, it's situated on um, a fairly sizable lot. Um, uh, there's kind of, which can serve as potential parking. There's also potential parking that could be located across the street. And then uh, Ryan, the owner also owns Jack and Mary's uh, across the way, um, which is kind of a, a community-based uh, soft goods and retail store. Um, so here you kind of see Jack and Mary's. And so this is the, um, the existing building as it is now. Um, it was built in 1927. Um, it's kind of gone through a, 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 a series of renovations which Ryan has led, including kind of asbestos remediation. Um, you have new kind of exterior stucco as well as all of the um, existing windows have been replaced. Um, and so I, I think just sort of walk you through the plan. So this is now uh, looking at uh, north as planned south here. So the entrance is off of Lyons. So you have kind of the, the traditional um, uh, theater lobby with kind of a small uh, women's and men's restroom. There's actually then a separate entrance for um, the coloreds to kind of go to level two into a, a seating area. Then you have kind of a, a more traditional auditorium space with a uh, slanted uh, concrete floor, an orchestra pit, and then stage. And then the traditional uh, hotel lobby was then um, on this two-story uh, building here to the left with stair um, to go to level two. So this is then your second floor um, where you have orchestra pit, or sorry, not orchestra, uh, projection room. Um, double height uh, space open to below, a series of kind of four small um, uh, rooms. And so you'll kind of see uh, there's, it, the, the hotel was really built more as like a traveler's kind of hotel. And um, so some of the bathrooms have been pulled off uh, originally and were, were more public. This is kind of a, a more typical level three uh, floor plan. Um, and then a section where you can still see uh, kind of your your slanted uh, concrete um, existing slab, um, exposed steel, so it's steel and wood construction. And then just to kind of quickly walk you through a few of the um, site uh, images. So this is that um, uh, original hotel uh, lobby entrance. Um, the majority of us were able to do a kind of socially distanced uh, site visit. This is looking into the main theater area and then back towards stage. Uh, this is a level two um, where you can see the outlines of um, the existing uh, guest room walls that have been removed. So this is above that kind of original hotel entrance on um, level two. And then this is kind of positioning you into level three or level four and in, in seeing some of the, the rooms. So really the students were um, kind of given the opportunity, I think, to, uh, um, to really kind of, I, I think, create a program and um, room types based off of what their vision of the um, Von Minden um, was. And so um, with that said, I think I will let Lisa um, start, a, start us off, so. Okay. All right, can everyone see my screen? <clears throat> okay, good. Um, so my premise, or I guess my perspective for the project was that um, uh, the hotel, which was built in 1927, is um, like a local icon that's looking to be rehabilitated, um, and it's looking to fit um, the current needs of Schulenburg. It's in, um, my like project is inspired by the Bavarian and uh, Czech immigrants that uh, actually painted and constructed the painted churches, which Schulenburg is famous for. Um, but not only um, sort of the work that they did in the churches, but also sort of the history that goes alongside of their experiences as immigrants, um, including their culture that they brought to the city, such as um, 
there's a couple examples here in my images where there's like a local beer hall um, and like country bakery, which has traditional like Czech and Bavarian pastries. Um, and then also um, like steamer trunks, which um, was common for immigrants to use in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, thinking about uh, steamer trunks as a way of dividing spaces um, and using pattern. Um, and I was also really interested in the traditional attire of um, like uh, the Czech and um, Bavarian immigrants. Um, they're like traditional clothing for dances and festivals and um, their folk art. So th those are the, the sort of things that I was thinking about um, for this project. And um, I wasn't sure if we'd present again the background of the site. So I have a couple images here, which I'll skip through. Um, so again, this is the um, interior of the theater space, which is kind of the main um, space of the hotel. And it takes up um, the majority of the real estate in terms of um, like scale. And I was really interested in um, looking at this with a preservationist perspective. And so here I included a lot of a lot of images of things that I intend to keep in my project and I'll point them out um, along the way, such as the uh, like curved ceiling and the stage frame and details um, of the existing theater space. Um, the keeping the exposed brick um, that well it's terracotta blocks and um, using the ticketing window um, sort of uh, keeping that and using it for um, uh, guest check-in and also keeping the film room wall on the second floor. Um, also, Ryan put in new windows, so I intended to keep um, all of those as well. And here are sort of some examples of steamer trunks. Um, I was really interested because they have such a modest um, exterior, but on the interior, they um, use pattern to define spaces and edges. And um, I guess that's like something that I thought would be really interesting to explore in my project. And uh, the Czech and Bavarian prints I was studying really uh, were focused on primary colors. And um, this is some of my inspiration for my colorways and the application of patterns in my spaces. Um, starting off with my model room, my um, guest rooms, the majority of them are actually really small. I was trying to have um, like a large quantity of guest rooms to be a little bit more economical. And so uh, the size of this room is about 200 square feet. So it is definitely tight. Um, but I wanted to sort of play off of that kind of nested quality of the steamer trunks by um, a making a built-in bed and built-in cabinetry and um, sunken shelving. Here is an elevation of the model room <clears throat> and some of the patterns and textures I've been thinking about. And here you can see sort of the exposed brick that's along the entire exterior walls of the building and the built-in bed. And I tried to create like the different sort of nested spaces, even within the restroom, where you can see here in the elevation that the whole room is almost like a built-in with the, the bed being built-in, but also the bathroom being nested even within that. Here is sort of a diagrammatic section of my project um, showing the various patterns that I'm using that sort of define um, certain spaces. <clears throat> and um, here's my site plan. We have um, sort of like an existing lot to the north of the project um, that is used mainly, that I propose will be used mainly for parking, but um, also like an outdoor dining space and sort of a um, more um, casual promenade up to the restaurant lobby. The existing lobby um, in the hotel is, is fairly small. So 
I intend for the rest of the hotel's spaces to be to act as like a secondary lobby. So the restaurant is really just an extension of the main lobby of the hotel um, where guests and locals can dine in. And um, I located the bar on top of the stage, which I had um, created like this catwalk that is level with the, the main lobby so that um, it's easily accessible. And then I also have um, like built in seating um, and nested seating um, to the to the south of the restaurant wall or on the south restaurant wall. And then um, in the building, there's sort of like a second secondary um, like program. There's I have a cafe um, in the south portion of the building that um, it could be like a cafe, a coffee shop. Uh, something that doesn't require that much kitchen space, but um, could be used by the guests at different times or different points of the day when the dining room isn't um, necessarily bumping. And then um, here are the existing theater photos again um, and the existing elements I intend to keep. And my theater elevations. And here are some of the like folk art patterns. I did a lot of research trying to hunt down um, specifically Czech and Bavarian patterns. Um, and I was really intrigued by their vibrant qualities. So I wanted that to be very apparent and playful in the project. Here's some renderings of that. And um, another thing I was considering is I, I feel that in my project, I've done a lot of um, sort of like plane to plane application, um, but I'm wondering uh, sort of what the qualities are of patterns when they become more physical or more transparent. So I have this dividing wall sort of giving privacy to the um, sunken seating area or dining area rather. Um, and it's also, I also have that same um, sort of process happening with the built-in seating here on the left, these um, like glass dividers that have stenciled on texture. And I also went a step further and um, explored a three, three dimensional application of the folk, um, folk art patterns by um, making like a lighting fixture that is der um, derived from uh, an example of folk art that I found. Um, that illuminates the space. <laughs> and then my second floor um, is, it's rather simple at the moment, but um, the main circulation core is on the front side of the building. So I intended at, um, at the front of the building, there is um, a consistent like lobby space that people can step off into or work or rest there. Um, and so I'm, the, pro, the program on the second floor is like a gallery and shop for the Von Minden. So um, local artists um, and local, local makers can have their work there. Um, so there's retail, but it's also a bit, a bit of a museum about the hotel um, and Schulenberg in general. And also on this second floor, um, the wall that is, um, that is on the edge of the the theater space has the um, existing uh, film room equipment. Um, and I'm intending to keep those slots because I thought they were um, really interesting and special um, to see that sort of back of house um, stuff. So here's my elevation with those and the folk art patterns that I found. And um, the third and fourth floor are similar and I use since the first floor um, lobby is so small I wanted the guests to have like a, a secondary lobby that um, gives them space for like amenities that the hotel provides like such as coffee machines or refrigerators or um, like pamphlets about Schulenberg any of those things and so um, that would be at the front of the building and then I have a series of my model rooms and then um, larger suites with which have yet to be designed. Um, and 
this is an elevation, or these are elevations of the third and fourth floor lobby rooms, um, playing with like the layering of patterns um, and uh, different colorways. <clears throat> Here are some renderings of that second floor lobby room with the stair um, sort of being framed by these, I guess, very craftsman style-esque uh, pillars here. <laughs> uh, stone, yeah. Um, and then I, this, yeah, this is the sort of built-in amenity space on the second and third floor and um, an example of the hallway. And lastly, I have um, sort of the rooftop lounge, which is really just um, a massive pergola divided into different spaces so that um, there are sort of like unique experiences um, potentially for seating arrangements and um, different activities on the roof eventually. And then I have a playlist that I had a little fun finding traditional Czech and Bavarian folk music and mixing that with um, like contemporary American folk music. And that's it. Sorry, I feel like I was a little bit all over the place, but. <laughs> okay, send us the Spotify link, please, so we can listen to it later. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Lisa. I, I really uh, like your presentation. I thought it was very clear. Um, and I think uh, the, the overall organization of the space, I don't know if you were, were you given like a number of rooms that you had to accommodate or was that your choice? We got to choose. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, I mean, it seems very rational and that you have maximized uh, no, the, the, um, the, the floor area uh, in providing, quite, how many rooms did you provide in the end? Um, on the, here I'll pull up my, I have um, five like really small rooms and then I have five sort of suite rooms. And then there's, the same floor plan on the fourth floor as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, 20 that, rooms total. Yeah. So in that, it seems like you were interested in optimizing no, the the mm -hmm. the um, the amount of rooms, no, in, uh, and uh, uh, especially maintaining these proportions, no, of the the little ones, which I think is an interesting challenge. Uh, I, I, I don't, why do you change from this, the, the small rooms to the bigger rooms? Why did you decide to have the suites too? But you didn't develop the suites, right? No, mm -hmm. no, just the model room. But I think I just, I felt that um, I wanted the hotel to have options and variety, but I could definitely see it sort of being a um, hotel that only has like many rooms available. Mm -hmm. Um, well, overall, I, I thought the, the design of the, I mean, the design of the model room was very, was starting to be very interesting and that uh, it seems like obviously you were having most fun with the application of this folk art uh, in the surfaces uh, of the mm -hmm. space. And I think uh, if you can stop here, I think, I think uh, the, that application, uh, to me is most successful when uh, you apply it uh, in several places you apply it like here where you have uh, the bed like the this uh, a room bed like no and it's the interior so there's an interior within this cabinet this furniture cabinet uh, space that frames the the pattern um, and and I think uh, that uh, that logic that you apply se uh, in several places when we look also when we're looking inside the bathroom and somewhere also in the lobby, you were doing it like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's a lot more successful than when you start just applying it to surfaces and, and have different patterns in juxtaposition, uh, because I think it gives you like a... Um, uh, like a special strategy as to how to apply the pattern to the surface, like a, 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 a 
logic. And then it gives you a break between patterns. Uh, it gives you a break between patterns. And then also it, uh, it frames them uh, where, where they kind of uh, become more important, more, more of a, more of a, yeah, they, they gain more relevance because they're framed like mm -hmm. a in a way, it's just that it's occupiable and it's three-dimensional and it is wallpaper. But uh, but I think they it, 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 they 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 gain more importance and they they um, yeah than when they're when in, in instances like this. Then if you go to the to the to the living room area to the sorry to the lobby. Uh, yeah, like oh, go back. <laughs> <laughs> To the, uh, yeah, for, for example, here, no? when we start seeing the juxtaposition of uh, several patterns uh, that they're somehow related, but not quite. So I, it's more difficult to, uh, I think you, if you're going de to deploy the pattern like this, I think you would need to come up with uh, maybe with, um, with another logic. Is it, that, is it the same pattern at different scales? Uh, but then somehow they're still uh, related to each other. I feel like uh, when when sometimes it comes across a bit arbitrary when you just or uh, and and less respectful, let's say, of the pattern in my view, uh, than uh, than uh, yeah, because because they start uh, somehow competing, no. Um, but it's not like it doesn't feel intentional. It's not like they're. Like, because it could be, uh, that could be another logic, no? If you decided that uh, these patterns, uh, that you apply the patterns randomly to different surfaces and somehow they crash into each other. But they're, here they're, they're just juxtaposed. So I, uh, that's not, uh, yeah, not the same. Uh, but uh, but I, I, I think uh, that's really where most, the project is most fun at the same time, no? That, that you clearly uh, enjoyed the most in your research of these patterns uh, and its application. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lisa, for the presentation, a, a, a great project. Um, I'm gonna echo a little bit what Narara said. Um, when I was looking at this earlier, I also had some of the same reactions that the patterns are so lovely and cheerful. Um, and I think the moments where um, they are deployed really strategically, like in the bed and in the bathroom, are really wonderful and there's just something delightful when you see that and and they feel more impactful because they are juxtaposed with simpler materials or I think the wood of the bed or you know the the existing texture of the the block at the exterior wall and then you know you kind of you pass through these more simple moments and then you you stumble upon these great discoveries like you step in the bathroom and it's like a jewel box and I think that goes back to that logic goes back to the trunks that you were looking at um, there are a couple of things I thought that I'd love to see you test in your model rooms. Um, it may be a slightly different idea, but um, in New York City, there, if you know the public hotel, it's an Ian Schrager hotel. Um, and of course in New York City, there's lots of probably good examples of really tiny compact guest rooms that you could look at for looking at how to solve, you know, all the functions you need in a, a really tight space. Mm -hmm. um, but in, if you know that project, um, the bed is, and it's more minimalist design, but the bed is framed like this, but it's actually rotated 90 degrees and then pushed up against the window. Um, and of course that building has these great floor to ceiling, you know, wall to wall windows. So you get this expansive view out behind the bed. Um, but I could imagine something interesting like that being tested here. Um, you know, maybe there's a scrim um, that diffuses the light from the window and that makes the backdrop to this framed bed with these beautiful patterns. Um, it could also be interesting then because then it becomes this wow moment um, when you step in the room and encounter that. Um, of course, you'd have to solve other things like where the closet would go, but it'd be an interesting um, thing to test, I think. Um, I was also, you know, going back to the strategy of how patterns are deployed and other interesting things to test. Um, looking at your, your um, guest floor, plans. Um, I thought at the corridors at the entry, there was maybe um, a possibility of creating um, more of a niche at the, um, in the corridor, because corridors are always tough. They, you know, even short ones can become really monotonous easily, um, even with pattern. And so kind of like what you've done um, to the guest room on the far right hand side, I'd love to like, see you test that idea of insetting the door. And because you have space with that long entry corridor inside the, the model room or that typical room, um, I could see like an inset happening um, 
at pairs of doors. And then that could be an opportunity to deploy your pattern with a simpler material or color at the rest of the corridor. So then again, you have like the pattern emphasizing the special moment of the entry or, um, so that could be something interesting um, to test as well. Um, I thought there's some other, you know, um, on the rooftop, um, I might jump around a little bit here, but um, I was curious if it was an intentional not to do a bar up there. Um, just because a bar is always a great way to draw people somewhere. Um, and it looked like it'd be really fun to have a bar up here with this pergola structure. Um, so that was just, I mean, um, just in thinking how oh, I would love to hang out here. Um, I could see like a little bar um, adding a little bit of um, action here and, and, and drawing people up here. Um, I think on the ground floor, um, I would love to see if there was a way to maybe make an internal connection to the little cafe um, so that people in the building could kind of sneak over to that um, in between that and the lobby and the, and the, the restaurant space. Um, in the bar here, as you see an elevation, um, I think um, I would agree again with what Nara said about the patterns here, maybe a little less successful, but maybe they could be deployed using the same logic upstairs to emphasize certain areas. I could imagine um, a really beautiful bottle display, a liquor bottle display behind the bar and with lighting and pattern, you know, using those things to really make that sparkle and draw you through the space and draw people um, to that bar and, and your attention to the stage maybe. Um, I love the I love the reuse of a lot of the elements. Like I think the projection room is great. I was I wonder though if there's a way maybe to maybe the program is a question there because I was trying to think of of ways to really draw people there more. Um, I don't know if it could be used as a meeting room. Right? You know, I think everything these days seems you know we want everything these days to do like double triple duty or more. Um, I think that was true even before COVID and now especially everybody wants a lot more function out of their spaces. So um, I think that, that that's a really great space. Those, those, those windows are really interesting and tell you know, a lot about the, the history of the building. And so maybe, there, maybe there's some other functions and maybe that room could do multiple duties. Um, I wish it could be used as a private dining room, but I think it's probably too far from kitchen facilities, but maybe mm -hmm. there are other uses like that. Um, um, and then I kind of had the same thought for your, um, your lounge areas on the guest room floors that um, some of the hotel projects we've designed, they've had these quirky suites that um, are actually just left open um, to the public in the corridor at times and they're, they're decorated with art and people can wander in and use them um, like a lounge in the way that I think you imagine this space being used, but then they can also be rented out. So they have a door so they can do double duty again and they're, they're flexible. So I thought it might be interesting to try a strategy like that in that space so that kind of have it both ways. Um, it still could be revenue generating space, but also still um, at times be shared space um, for the guests. Maybe I'll just chime in. Um, I think so much has already been uh, said about the kind of the salient features in your project. Um, and, you know, I too will uh, talk about the pattern a little bit. I think it's important to kind of remind uh, ourselves that, um, you know, you're not preserving patterns, you're interpreting patterns and you're actually inventing them, right? There's actually, um, what's authentic about them is the source of inspiration, but they themselves are your in, in invention, you know? And I think that that kind of frees you to, um, to really kind of um, embrace this kind of sampling uh, methods that you're, that you're actually engaging in and uh, reinterpreting the patterns um, in a way that's, uh, you know, specific to, to, to this project. And I would want to see more of that because I think that, you know, it is always, it's really interesting to think about like, what is the line between um, kitchen cool you know, and to what degree do you have to kind of decontextualize something, recontextualize something, like reinterpret something, reapply something in a way that seems really unexpected and inventive and, and, and surprising. And so, you know, to me, the, what's really interesting is when in your project, you know, you apply transparency to something that would be, um, uh, 
that would otherwise be kind of seen as a kind of an, as an opaque pattern. You don't have to go there. We remember it. It's fine. Um, it's just going to distract me and I won't know how to finish. Um, you know, where you uh, use the scale to bring this kind of unexpected um, perception of those patterns. And I think I would just love to see more of that, actually. You know, like what happens when a pattern is pixelated, for example? Like what happens when, when a pattern migrates from a hard surface to a soft surface? And this kind of acknowledgement in the design that you're aware of this kind of game that you're playing rather than pretending that there is a kind of authenticity um, that kind of predates your project. Um, and then, you know, I, you know I, when I look at the, the, the bedroom, I was thinking, well, you know, if the pattern is so important, then it like, you know, closets really need to have doors because you don't want the pattern of the clothing to interfere with a kind of immersive interior of that room. Or maybe that that's one opportunity to kind of be surprising where before you fill the closet with your, the wardrobe with your contents, when you open it up, there's this kind of interior that only reveals itself to you once you're kind of a resident in, in, you know, in that space. And finally, what I find really curious is that for the most part, your pattern is only applied to hard surfaces and all the things that could be soft are actually solid, like sheets, pillowcases, carpeting, like, you know, uh, uh, there is one armchair that's patterned and it makes it seem like it's upholstered, but all the kind of like dining seating is like hard and made of some kind of wood. Um, and it just seems like, you know, these patterns, most of them with the exception of kind of ceramics originate in textiles, whether it's embroidery or, um, you know, needlepoint or whatever, you know, other technique. So I think you could also play with the kind of materiality of the surfaces that these patterns kind of migrate onto. Well, thank oh, you. Really yeah, thank you everyone. Um, I'm gonna maybe keep us on track and um, um, we'll jump to our next um, presenter, which is Mackenzie. Yeah. Um, okay. Hi everyone, I'm Mackenzie. Um, so for my vision for the Von Minden is to be a place uh, people can visit to relax, uh, gain a new experience, and to find a place that they feel comfortable enough to call home. Um, for my experience from Schulenburg and visiting the painted churches, I found that the people there are very proud of um, what they have to offer and they welcome the uniqueness and character of their um, surroundings. Specifically with the painted churches, um, I was really fascinated and intrigued with their use of um, space within space um, and how they perhaps used vaulted ceilings or um, just arches to um, use a new pattern, um, paint a new relief, use floral mot motifs, or um, change the color, just to say this is a new space that you're in. Um, so my color and my material and color palette are not to deter from the existing materials, which are um, terracotta block, um, steel structure and wood structure as well with existing um, long leaf pine flooring, but to complement them. And my use of stencils are to be organic and authentic, um, to add depth and texture to existing walls. Um, and my new additional walls will be made out of plaster to create that softness and warmth that I want to create in this environment, just to add another layer to call this place um, a home away from home. This is the existing building on the left um, in my proposed diagram, um, adding a new 
kitchen for the restaurant feature I'm adding on the ground floor um, and then an upper patio on the second floor to connect with the theater space above. Um, the public um, amenities on the bottom two floors are repurposing the theater space, adding a restaurant adjacent to it, and then a cafe and wine bar on the second floor, which connects to a mezzanine, just to say, um, just to allow for a day and night activity within the main space of the theater. And then on the third and fourth floor are the, excuse me, the guest spaces, but the fourth floor is different because the owner actually told us that there are not a lot of apartment complexes in Schulenburg. So I wanted to allow the fourth floor to be this apartment um, amenity space with um, five apartments so that people can actually call the hotel a, a place that they can call home. And then this is my proposed site plan, um, adding a pool um, because of the Texas summers, we definitely need one here um, and a courtyard space um, to encourage community activity as, as well as activity between the community and the visitors. Um, the red dash is the existing and then the green dash would be the existing uh, lot that is just filled with grass right now that um, we can put parking in as well. And then just to run through the elevations, um, again, they are not to deter, but to complement the existing terracotta brick structure with the stucco add-on, um, adding a wood portico to the front with cinder block breeze blocks and um, cactus. This would be the elevation you see as you park um, to the north of the building. And then south elevation with the added kitchen structure with the dining underneath and the new patio above. So this whole home away from home really got driven from this whole um, coronavirus thing. Um, seeing that we are all in our homes 24 seven, I thought it would be nice to make this hotel a place where you can venture outside of your room and have different amenity spaces placed within the hotel to say that you are able to venture within the hotel and still call it a nice place to stay. Um, and in this aspect, maybe if you venture to another part of the hotel, you'll also want to venture to other parts of Schulenburg. So the ground floor is meant for entertainment and the restaurant, as well as the check-in that you enter right here with the core um, circulation. The second floor, as I mentioned before, is the cafe slash wine bar connected to the mezzanine over overlooking the theater with the additional outdoor seating. And then, for the guests themselves, these spaces um, that they want to call their own is more important to be on their own suite floor. So what I did was I separated what they would need into multiple areas along their suite, just to say you can definitely venture out and experience your own um, your own experience while you're at the Von Minden per whatever you need with these flexible spaces. So you have your own suite. But along the corridor, there are also a space for working, a space to lounge, and a kitchen. And then, like I mentioned before, the fourth floor is the apartments. And then just an inspiration board showing the warmth and feel of the material palette with the um, program. So this is my first floor plan. Um, you enter main entrances here, reception, lobby space with um, or theater space, excuse me, with um, additional private spaces or nook spaces um, along it with the bar, both in use for the theater and the restaurant next to it, outdoor patio space. The second floor um, is as well public, but I felt like it should be a little bit more um, private public with more uh, smaller group options, which is why this is the cafe wine bar with the mezzanine seating um, being used for just a couple people and then outdoor patio again. The third floor is where um, I did um, make the rooms a little bit bigger. <laughs> so I am offering 
one, two, three, nine rooms um, with these different cubbies. Um, like I mentioned, the kitchen, the lounge area, and the work tubby along the corridor. And then the fourth floor plan, um, making those cubbies now their entrances into their own apartments. And then this would be the long section through the theater space showing the corridor um, and how I've added the additional plaster volumetric volumes and these soft curves um, just to make it feel more um, intentional and homey within the space. This would be the entrance, this top one from the main um, street. And then this would be the entrance from the north um, courtyard that I've created. You can see um, how I'm starting to show these volumetric spaces that are intended to only hold a couple of people, again, in light of COVID, um, to encourage privacy, but also um, just spaces between volumes and how people can only inhabit and keep their space, but also have their own space within a space. Um, once you walk up the corridor, this is the entrance to your own guest space um, or guest room. Um, I wanted also the entrances to the space to be volumetric and carved out and um, delineated by stencil application. Um, the stencil and the placement of the light and the hooks are all purposeful to add to that, um, what you would experience at home, a place to put your belongings before you enter. Um, and then this bottom render is the main view of the corridor. And then this would be the work cubbies, um, the lounge area softened by curtains above and some plants. And then the kitchen area, also with curtains. And then we go into the model room where, again, I'm delineating the um, different stains on the wood to incorporate um, program and showing how um, these new added walls can um, separate program, but also still keep it cohesive and together. This would be my elevations. Um, you can see how the terracotta brick and the stencil application are close in color together to um, have complements. And then the plaster is still a soft curved element with now additional um, carved moments in between so that you can place your own belongings in. Um, this is the entrance, what you would see the banquette that I've created where you can also um, eat there or just lounge there. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, with the painted churches, how they um, painted within new spaces. I've also painted within these carved spaces, just again, to delineate program. And then this would be the view overall of the space and how I've carried this moment around the main entertainment area and then going into the bedroom. This would be the restaurant space mimicking what you've seen on the third floor with the kitchen area, but um, adding in new elements of tile application and um, the seating area or waiting area with the curved wall. And then the main public space with the theater, um, I wanted it to be flexible as well. Um, and you can use it in different ways. And so this is the different furniture configurations I had planned out just so um, you can really make use of the space. Um, so it can have a town hall or performance where the seating is just that, or if there's nothing going on, the main space can have just um, lounging furniture or you can even host a wedding here. And so this would be the entrance, the top image from the main floor um, looking in. And then this would be from the top floor looking at the mezzanine. I liked how you can tell that there's a dramatic difference between the two with the existing steel structure and then the difference in color of the curtains to kind of um, encourage privacy. And then this would be the private cubbies off of the theater. Here's the bar, um, another cubby 
again, using the painted application within the carved elements, um, just to, um, again, reiterate the space within and then the curtain moments to add privacy. And this is the other side. And that is it. Thank you. Maybe I'll start. I know that there's not a, a, a lot of time. We have to keep uh, keep moving. So, um, uh, Mackenzie, uh, a really, really nice job. Um, thank you for your presentation. I really appreciate how um, thoughtful um, and thorough your, your presentation is. And I think it really reads as a kind of cohesive project um, and that you've made decisions across a range of scales and also kind of throughout the kind of the extent of the project. Um, you know, I, I keep thinking that you know, like, you know, everything in your project is kind of tinted in this kind of somewhere between like millennial pink and peach. Yeah. Um, and I think that that or like blush, I don't know, you know, but it's somewhere in the, uh, and that that creates I think actually like a, a very cohesive environment and as a kind of, um, and this kind of color palette ends up being like pretty analogous to kind of natural like wood grains. So it's very um, kind of consistent. And I really um, enjoy the kind of the punches of vegetation that, that, um, that is starting to pop up in your in, in your project because that ends up in term that ends up being sort of complementary to that color scheme something that exists kind of in contrast to it and I wonder if there is um, you know it, and I remember the first slide that you said like yeah and there's plants and um, and I wonder if rather than being this kind of exercise in kind of prop styling or like entourage like populating the project with these things if maybe that is kind of a layer of the project, this kind of like verdant green layer that can be incorporated more into your project. You know, um, like I, for example, I, I, I really appreciate, um, you know, like, like gestures like this that are starting to think about how vegetation is um, kind of integrated into the project itself. So that rather than being kind of freestanding, it can um, begin to have kind of its own life. Maybe um, it has a relationship to, you know, uh, light, whether it's daylight or artificial light. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's, again, this kind of question of like, how do you use certain familiar elements in a way that's kind of unexpected or surprising, you know, so, um, so you know, what what would that be? And then, you know, I think what would make this project really fantastic is if you, um, I mean, I'm not within these images, but if, you know, if it were built is all the kind of really precise details that show like another level of kind of thought and attention and precision. Um, and, you know, I, I think if you go to one of the earlier slides, for example, can you go a little bit more? Um, one more. Uh, there's a there's a one. Uh, keep going back. Um, yeah, like uh, like this one. I think is a good one. You know, like I think you have like these like really nice moments where these curves are kind of emerging from the flatness of the surface, but then you don't have the same thing happening on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Or um, there are these, you know, really kind of nitpicky sort of things to look at, but like if you're looking at like, what is this opening? It's not just a door, it's kind of a transition between spaces. So maybe there are certain, maybe there's kind of a level of a refinement at the, at the kind of level of detail mm -hmm. that would, um, that if the project kept moving forward would make this even more, um, you know, even uh, more convincing, but really nice job. Thank you. That makes sense, I appreciate it. I, I'm just gonna follow up on that. Um, uh, yeah, I think, um, 
I, I think the the this strategy of the soft walls, no, that help you define a smaller um, a spatial conditions, but also that a uh, that that's working very well for you, and, and especially in contrast with the um, with the brick, uh, the origin, uh, which I understand is original, no, like those yes. uh, uh, those original brick walls. So I think I think it's very important uh, as a designer if you choose to ex to 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 make it clear what is it that is your intervention and what is it that is existing, and the fact that you were uh, working with a language that is um, very different from that orthogonal brick, uh, both in texture and in geometry, makes that uh, ma makes that uh, juxtaposition uh, very. I mean, ma makes the, your intervention very clear, no? And and I think it's a nice uh, contrast between the two. Um, I think also like same like Igor little details like uh, here. Uh, I think it's very important to to maintain that kind of level of uh, smoothness, no? Where this plane should be one and things really like blend into each other. Uh, mm -hmm. You like you were doing, like you. No? Um, and I really like also when you introduce uh, when you start introducing in the in the main lobby um, that other layer of softer. Um, material with the textiles, the curtain, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that, uh, that I think is also very much needed, no? Because uh, in terms of acoustics as well, and uh, etc., these spaces are all, all these hard surfaces, surfaces in a, in a public um, interior, no? Where uh, uh, that, that may create a lot of, uh, you know, like uh, it, it gets noisy, no? So I think to balance that with some softer elements um, that could happen more often um, uh, would, would continue to improve uh, the proposal. And you're already doing that. I just think, I think it's something that you could apply more than one place. But uh, it's impressive the, um, how you have thought of every single space, uh, interior and exterior, and uh, in, in so much uh, detail. Thank you. Thank you, Mackenzie, for the presentation. I don't know that I have a ton to add. I'll say that um, you know, in looking at all these images, there was something really pleasant about seeing all of them. And I think, as as Igor said, there's there's a consistency of vision. And I could really imagine myself walking through these, hanging out, you know, everything from the guest room to the theater space. Um, and I think, you know, with adaptive reuse, there there are there's a spectrum of strategies, right, between the irreverent to the reverent, and everything in between. And then also, I think between the you know transformative more transformative to less transformative and there are many right answers and i i do love um going back to i think something narea said about this one is that um it's very clear the the where the existing brick is and and those those essentially orthogonal surfaces and the contrast between those and what you've done and what you've done is very transformative while still reading being very legible which i think is really is really uh successful and interesting um and I would say, you know, what what I would if the project were to keep going, where I think um, I'd love to see you do more is think about the activities that people would actually do. And I think this you, you've done this, and I, and I think it could continue though to think about how people might use these spaces and what they're doing over a longer period of time when they're in them. And I, I see a lot of opportunities, and you know, the connections between the outdoor and the indoor spaces, and you have so many. Um, uh, event spaces, assembly spaces, like places for, for really wonderful activity. Um, and I'd love to see maybe an extra layer there. I, I think it could, some of it is furniture and some of it maybe is, is refinement mm -hmm. and thinking about how those spaces are used. Like I think on the second floor in the bar space, I think maybe like testing some other bar locations that could give you a longer bar and, and more seats um, and maybe allow you then to open up some of the walls um, that separate the interior and exterior spaces. And I could see, you know, going back to Igor's comment about planting, uh, the plants maybe looking at how those could be used internally and externally. Um, and I just, I, you know, I can imagine really wonderful um, activities going on in these spaces. Um, I also liked it in some, you know, uh, like going back to the guest room images, the way the furniture is incorporated into the, what I would call it, architectural design in some cases, like um, the bench in the guest room. Mm -hmm. And I could imagine, you know, like a really, um, 
a table being pulled up to that and maybe some loose chairs so that you can really occupy that, that built-in bench and that cozy little corner there. So um, I think um, that's what I would love to see um, going forward. And, but I think the, the, the intervention is, is if it's transformative, yet yeah, it feels very um, legible in terms of the original building as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mackenzie. Yeah. All right. Next, we have Jenny. Hi. I'll share my screen. Okay. Um, so my vision for the Von Minden intends to be a destination for travelers and local residents to experience a unique spatial atmosphere that blends historic elements with new design. The past is reinterpreted with additional modern elements and material use bridges the gap of old and new. The Von Minden spaces focus on 2D and 3D illusions that can be created with shadow and form. Immersive spaces encompass the occupant and rounded forms that blur the connection of floor, wall, and ceiling. Um, my Van Minden embraces the haunted history of the hotel as a way of attracting visitors and creating a unique experience for the guests. And the design of the spaces intend to challenge the idea of spatial perceptions. By exposing the structure um, in a lot of my spaces um, and keeping element, those elements within the new design, the spaces connect the past visitors and the current occupants. The spaces have a strong focus on acoustical experiences as a way of hinting to past visitors of the hotel, whispers of ghosts, the history of the Von Menden and the painted churches. And so I have this um, overarching idea of things are not as they appear um, that is used throughout my project in different ways. Um, and just some of the references and inspiration I was looking at when we did our site visit and we visited the painted churches. Um, so many of them have this exterior that um, is just more traditional. And then once you get inside, it's something that's this immersive space that has these different techniques and it's kind of a surprise. So I wanted to bring that into my project. And then um, this reference for this Met exhibition in 2012, uh, Chaparelli and Prada, where um, there are impossible conversations between different generations of people and different designers. So I wanted to bring that in just um, as I mentioned with the current visitors and the past visitors. So then my um, Spotify playlist also has that idea. So I'm mixing things from the 1920s with traditional ideas and they have a lot of um, echoes and subtle hints of past visitors and things like that. So my color and material is really taking those existing elements and the structure and the um, the wood beams and then this terracotta brick and then playing off of it with this green in a complementary color scheme and bringing in these neutral wood tones to kind of ground the whole um, concept. And so I have a lot of these stencils. So this row are stencils that I have designed that are used in different ways, in my different spaces, including this one. And then these are some existing materials or um, sorry, not existing in the space, but some materials that I brought in that I did not design. Um, and then I have different references that you'll see throughout my project. So these are reinterpretations of, um, this is a photo from the 1960s that I've included on the wall. And then this is wallpaper that was on site that I've reinterpreted. So the site, which we've already kind of been over, um, this is the building, this is my proposed parking area. And then I have an entrance coming in here and then keeping the historic entrance through this way. My first floor, so this is um, this is this new entrance. It's a courtyard, so here's the pool and different seating areas. And so um, you come in this way into the lobby. Then there's this tiered um, space. The original floor of the theater was sloped. And so instead of just filling it all in flat, I wanted to um, kind of preserve some of those levels and then having it where it's still below the stage when you get to the bottom. I do have um, a ramp for accessibility along this side. Um, and then I have some built-in seating. There's a retail space that would be for um, local uh, products and things in this space. And then the kitchen and the restrooms. Uh, and this is more back of house behind the stage. On the second floor, I have a balcony that overlooks the theater space. So this is all open. And then this behind the stage is the green room. And then I have um, a bar up here and then a kind of cut out down into the lobby space. 
so you can hear and see what's going on above. And then this is, um, these are moments where it's kind of breaking through that rectilinear structure of the exterior box of the building. And these are balconies that extend beyond. So for um, my third and fourth floor, the rooms are um, the same, but I have done um, five different types. So I have, this is the model room that I've built out. So it's a suite um, that I'll go through in a couple of slides. Um, but these are different options of king suites and queen suites. Um, and then the fourth floor is the same. So this side, they overlook this pool view. And then the side there is like an outdoor dining area that it overlooks. Um, and then on the fifth floor, I have a rooftop um, terrace with also some plants and then another pool up here that's a little bit more private for the, the residents. So here is my entrance. So this is where um, the new courtyard entrance would be and guests come in through this new courtyard that I've added um, and have a different experience, but you also can come in through this historic entrance here. This is a section of my space. So um, this is the lobby space, um, which I'll show you next. And then this is the model room that I've built out up here. So these two floors are the um, corridors for the guest rooms. This is the double height theater space. And then this is that new entrance um, to the courtyard. So this is the lobby. Um, that's a historic entrance I was talking about. I created this um, form of this staircase that kind of wraps up um, in a rounded sort of way that feels like it's wrapping around the occupant, as I mentioned mentioned. And then on each page, I'm noting existing materials and things that I've brought in. So this was the existing key box um, on site that I wanted to incorporate behind the front desk. And then um, the existing terracotta. And then this is the wallpaper that was existing that I reinterpreted and um, scaled up and added this wood grain texture to in here. So kind of hinting at that historic past. And then um, this is a faux marble pattern that I've created and abstracted that's similar to some of the ideas that we saw in the painted churches. So my going into my model room and um, into the private space. So my model room takes that idea of the acoustics and really wrapping around the occupant in these ways of um, these bunks that I've used. So it's a room that could sleep for, so it could be for family or a group of friends. Um, it has these two bunks and then it has this a little bit more private bedroom. There's this uh, seating area here and then the bathroom. So I've created this connection between the wall and the ceiling, trying to keep as much of the exposed brick as possible and um, just putting drywall around the windows. And then the curtains kind of create this connection between the two and then the green as the complementary color scheme. Um, as you can see here, so it goes up with the curtains and it's the same kind of idea where it's these um, soft forms that kind of blend and then it blends into the ceiling. And then um, this rounded uh, form here for the millwork. And then I also have stenciled this rug pattern on the floor. So it's that idea of things are not as they appear. It's this full rug stencil on the floor. Um, this is my bathroom, just playing with the idea of what's reflective and what is not in, um, in that space. And then just some non-traditional floating pieces. Uh, in my bedroom this is kind of the acoustic idea. So just having a bed form that comes up and around and creates an acoustic experience and then fixtures that create shadows and faux shadows and they're different um, colors of paint to just further those shadow ideas. And this is my corridor. So um, as you go through and different perspective of this, it's these um, pieces that arch up and above. And then I've stenciled, I've brought this rug idea out from the model room and stenciled the door numbers on the floor. And then um, this is the existing door. And I wanted to keep that, but stencil this wood grain pattern into it. So um, this is where I'm just trying to keep as much existing as possible, including the wood floors and just add new things to it. Um, and then, so this is the um, amenity space on the same floor. So here's the corridor. I'm just creating this planter. And then this is where I've brought in this um, image from the 1960s and keeping the ideas of this exposed um, area, but then tying it into the terracotta and the greens, um, those elements. 
This is moving downstairs. This is my second floor event space that looks over my theater. So I've created this seating element and this is um, a space where different events could be held and you could bring in additional furniture, but I wanted to keep it intentionally more open um, and just have different areas where people could gather. And then this is my staircase that goes up through all of the floors. This is the bar, so this is directly behind the image you just saw, which was here. So um, this is the same kind of idea of the rooms using this green color and something that goes up and above and kind of creates a space within a space. And then this is my theater. So I've created a light fixture out of fabric that kind of um, mirrors the geometry of this floor design and then has a tiered effect like the floors um, in my theater. And then painting this on the ceiling. So it has this faux idea of, um, and this flow of what the ceiling is, but it's really all the same material, just the application of paint. And then um, my floors have this pattern as well that kind of moves through and has different um, wood floor materials. This is upstairs to the second floor, and then this is the stage. And the um, you can see out to the courtyard. And that's it. Uh, maybe I'll start. I think it's my turn. Um, so thank you, Jenny. Um, I, I really enjoyed looking at uh, this I was I was um, I looked at all these last night um, and this one was really fun and I think going back to what I was saying before about different strategies for adaptive reuse and um, you know more or less transformative I think there's a couple different um, things going on here and I think they're they're both valid strategies I mean maybe one could argue um, yeah I think they're different arguments to make about um, how to group those strategies or be consistent or not within one project, but I, I really enjoyed um, some of the experimenting you were doing. And I think, um, uh, especially in the guest rooms, I think there was a more transformative approach um, with the introduction of some of those curved um, surfaces that really started to create um, Gothic-like spaces. Um, and I think, you know, um, if I were looking at this through a pragmatic lens, I might say that it starts to obscure the, the, the original building a bit much. But if I throw that hat off and wear my whimsical hat, I really love it. <laughs> um, and there, you know, it does feel kind of like I've, like I've ascended to the Gothic vaults and um, it's, it's like I'm transported and it has some of those, um, I don't know, emotionally, um, emotional qualities that I think you get from Gothic architecture. It's almost subtly supernatural in a way. Um, I feel like I could be in one of the Suspiria movies or something. Um, so there's something really enjoyable about that. Um, um, I, but yeah, from a more pragmatic or maybe um, a more, there's something about the, the wind, the, the touch of the sheetrock on the windows that I really like. And that feels like it's maybe a little bit of a different strategy, but um, the, the, the juxtaposition of, of that and the way it, it um, I think, um, I'm not quite sure how to say it, but there's something subtle about that that's really interesting in the way that it, um, it, it repeats at each window and, um, and in between you have the existing brick, um, but you have this, this new material then that, that cleans it up a little bit. There, and that, I think that's a really nice touch throughout all the spaces. Um, I think, um, in the public spaces, um, I think, well, actually let's stop on the corridor for a minute because I, I did find this corridor really fun too. Um, there was something, um, uh, I don't know, really delightful and kind of trippy about it. Um, I kind of wish maybe there was a way, just a, a small thing to, um, if I heard you correctly, those are the existing doors. So they have an existing transom. Um, I wish maybe there was a little bit more of an alignment or, somehow um, dialogue between these um, fins that you've introduced and, and the, the heights of that um, transom window and the doors. But um, I, I really like the effect um, and, it, um, and the way it enlivens this corridor. Um, and then down in the public areas, I, I felt that the moves were maybe um, less heavy handed than in the guest rooms, but I think um, more of the original building comes through in a really nice way. Um, I think the stair is really beautiful and one can imagine kind of floating up that. Um, I think it's nice. Uh, some of the wood textures you brought in and the, the, 
it's nice how you brought in, um, I think different woods of the same tone, but there's a little bit of change in texture. I kind of see it at the bottom of this image where I think there's kind of like a parquet or type pattern uh, mixed with um, a, like a herringbone and, and then more of a, a rustic wood, but all in the same tone, uh, kind of like that. Um, and to talk about acoustics for a minute, I'm, I'm gonna get really pragmatic and professional here, but um, I think um, all of you will find out, you know, when you get out into the, the um, out of school that acoustics will always bite you in the ass in um, uh, event spaces. It's just always a problem because of all the noise that's generated. And so I thought there were a lot of interesting opportunities here to address that. I think you talked about that sculptural element as a light fixture with fabric, but I could see that totally doing um, duty as an acoustical element in the space. Um, I also was thinking about um, in the moments where you've applied the white um, paint, I think you said um, to areas, I could imagine an acoustical treatment being fitted between the joists there um, and cut on the curve at the edge to create that, that form, um, but also do double duty as a functional element um, and, and suck up um, sound in the space. Um, I think uh, the, pool, the, the relationship between the pool and the windows was kind of interesting from the exterior. Maybe it's totally impractical or doesn't work, but I almost wanted the pool to slide into the building. I don't know. Um, I remember hearing once about a pool in Europe that you could swim under a wall and then, you know, one moment be in the interior, one next nice moment be in the exterior. I'm not sure that's really a good idea at the end of the day, but um, something about that relationship just made me remember that idea. Um, so maybe I'll stop there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I really like the, the theme of the four um, elements that, uh, that, that, that you consistently applied through the scheme. Um, the, and I think I, I think it's most successful when, when they have the, I, I really like those moments where it, it has that kind of transparency of the overlay where, where we can read, that the one thing is applied over the other, like uh, like the curtains that kind of dis uh, disguise the existing and that uh, not because they, they modify the geometry or like here in the ceiling when you partially paint it, uh, but partially don't. Um, I think, uh, or, or in the corridor when you have those planes that make us feel like the geometry of the space is one when it's actually another one. Uh, and including even like the these applications of on the walls, etc. There's there's sometimes you apply it in a way that is more traditional, like here, no, where it's trying to be like the conventional element, but it's not because it's just a print, no. Um, and sometimes, like you do in the in the ceiling, is more of a super graphic, no, that uh, that uh, more of a general uh, gesture in the space. Um, but I think those those are most interesting. Uh, mo I, I, and I'm, and I've, I've seen your work several times in that I know you can do uh, those other uh, like what you do what you're doing in the room with the geometry, etc is great uh, like what you're doing in the bedroom. but I, I already knew you could do that no So I think I think it's more more fun. Um, and this is great. I mean, it's a great space. Uh, but I think I think it, those moments are more intriguing uh, than. And these these are this is a great space. But uh, I think I wish these uh, spaces had mm, something from borrow could borrow something from the curtains. Maybe maybe where it, if it, it, how could it read more full? Maybe maybe if the layers were also transparent. If it was built out of mesh or something. No, because these artists makes like all these, uh, reproduces all these um, uh, classic buildings out of uh, metallic mesh. And then, uh, so, so that, that it, it has this ethereal ghosty quality that, that you are interested in. I think, I think that is, uh, um, yeah, I think that's, that's what I find uh, really exciting. But through, throughout, uh, Jenny is super accomplished, uh, I think. Uh, that uh, I mean, like uh, all the spaces and uh, the level of detail and the, the like, coming up with your own patterns. Uh, I think I think these four marbles, etc., are, are are quite nice. 
they're very nice. I'm very much uh, in relationship with those um, with those applications in the churches. No, uh, I mean in the sense of the full materiality, not in the way that you're applying them. But um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, great great work. Thank you. Yeah, really fantastic job, Jenny. I mean, I know that I've been spending. Um, too much time in Europe. So I just kept thinking like this project is so American, you know, it's this kind of place where like, we don't really know the kind of chronology of when things happened. And it's like you have the 19th century and you have the present, but like modernism never happened. And there is this kind of sense that it's made as a kind of stage set. And it's really playful and, and, and kind of, re you know, refreshing. Um, and then when I kind of think about the conceptual premise, which is that nothing is what it seems, to me, it really brings this kind of tension between your desire to envelop uh, the visitor in this kind of immersive experience. I mean, it's literally like you're kind of enveloped in this kind of like frosting and this kind of atmosphere and, um, you know, and then on the other hand, like you're kind of eager to reveal that it's not really like that, you know, and I think that that's really the kind of the tension of the project and, and I'm not quite sure where that line is like how far you make someone allow someone to fall for it before you kind of show that it's a construction, you know, and I think a part of me. Like, I, you know, I really love, I mean, I think that these are, uh, the bedrooms are, uh, you know, really fantastic. I think that this is the one way, the, the kind of the one example where I don't actually want to see these like double hung windows because they bring me uh, too quickly to a kind of reality. Um, you know, they seem to kind of like disrupt the kind of overall aesthetic kind of immersive effect. You know, you have the, you know, you don't really know if this is, um, you know, this kind of digitally fabricated interior or if it's like an art deco project or, you know, and then, you know, and then the kind of the double hung wing window brings me back to rural Texas. And I don't know that, that, that I'd like, I, I'm not sure what that line is, at which point you want to be pulled out of that fantasy. Um, on the other hand, I think that the public spaces are really clever and, you know, I really uh, appreciate, um, you know, especially these later ones after this one, the kind of, yeah, this one and the next one where, you know, where you see this kind of like structure and then it's painted in a different way. And then the flooring is kind of like triple, triple layered to create this kind of collaged almost effect. Um, and I think that here, like the balance between being immersed in an experience and also exposing some of that kind of construction is, um, is, is, is really successful. Um, and I would, you know, encourage you to kind of think about like, what is that line? And I think it's hard to rationalize it. I think it's intuitive, right? Like at which point do you want to expose the fact that this is maybe built as a stage set in the same way that the material is not, it's like, a, it's like Sherry Levine or something where it's like a, like a wood pattern painted on top of, uh, you know, aluminum or maybe on top of another wood. So, um, but so much to think about. And I think so much to, to do. And I, you know, I agree with uh, Nerea that in some ways, um, surfaces are doing so much work already, and I think that they could be doing um, even more than in, in a way, some of the form could be even more streamlined, you know, like I think, for example, in the hallway, I think the kind of the arches at the top make sense to me, but how the wall meets the floor, like I you know, I, so I think those are the kind of like refinement questions, but um, uh, I, you know, uh, this is a really fun kind of virtual visit to this place, you know, that is, you know, to anyone outside of Texas, it will seem like it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, and then, you know, if you're from any of the three cities that, um, uh, that kind of surround it, it will seem quite close 
but you know, then when you go there, it will be this kind of discovery where you're not in Austin anymore and you're not in Houston anymore. And so um, I, I think it's a, it's a great way to think about how this um, project can help you, can help the visitor both um, try to understand where they are if they're not from there and also get lost in a kind of fantasy at the same time, which I think is the kind of root of hospitality in some ways. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. All right, so our last project is uh, Jean Yu's. Hi, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, Um, hi everyone, my name is Jin Yu. I'm going to present my proposal for the Wilmington Hotel. Uh, for my version to Wilmington, my design aim is to create a multi-programmatic cultural landmark in Schulenburg that intersected by build blocks to unite the residents, attract young tourists, and with high cohesion. The concept is mainly focusing on how to build a connected system of trompoy effect by stencils, grid system, and original building structure. Um, I also emphasized how to investigate a more cohesive and flexible space vibe by connecting objects, intersecting the programs, blurring the boundary, and creating more 3D trompoy effect. Um, my previous research of painting church is the Wellesley Branson, um, the earliest uh, Bohemian Branson in Texas. The trompoy pattern was painted by a local pastor to indicate the immigrants' unity and cohesion, like the chain and the connection between the columns and beams in the slope shape. To keep developing that, I was uh, inspired by Soy Lewitt and Michael's um, build blocks artwork and the tenon and mortise joints to combine the blocks and play around them to achieve a transition from 2D to 3D. Um, and then capturing the 2D view from the 3D Um, and keep connecting it with three, 2D trompoy elements to get different spatial structures um, and uh, the relationship between the points, lines and surfaces in my stencil research also let me think of, think about the color palette and the materials, uh, which also a key element for my following design. Um, here are uh, Ether Stalker and Lewis artwork inspired me to think, uh, think about how to apply my stencil research spatially and how the iterations can grow and distort uh, and how the objects interact with the grid and the build blocks. Um, in terms of the Schulenberg, as what I mentioned before, uh, its aging society and historical characteristics drove me to create a multi-programmatic cultural landmark intersected by build blocks to um, you, you unite the residents and attract young people, which can, uh, I mean, imagine, which can also be an adaptive reuse culture uh, landmark uh, and also a post-pandemic model that embodies diversity and cohesion, which also reflect the native painting church culture and uh, the inclusive attitude. Here is the first floor plan. Um, there is a central pool, which is also for performance. It's wrapped around by the lobby, uh, restaurant, and the grand staircase. There is also a changing room behind it. The ob those objects are painted darker for visual connection, which I will introduce more later. Um, there is also a welcoming uh, exterior courtyard with the main entrance. On the, on the north and a, an exterior restaurant face to the street on the floors. Uh, this is the uh, second floor plan. The central atrium is open to the second floor connected with the second floor uh, healing space. The second floor is mainly for relaxation and communication. The gym and uh, the co-working space on the right and the cafe, uh, a cafeteria on the left people can sit on the larger scale distorted bench and enjoy the music from the first floor. Um, 
Okay, move to the guest room area. Uh, this is the third floor plan. The third floor uh, includes three guest rooms. I switched to be skip floor rooms for family and friends group to share. Uh, it's this, uh, this one and this one. Um, and also there are other seven typical guest rooms uh, type for choosing. I also tell the corridor wall, wall as a 3D trompoy effect. This is the fourth floor plan. Uh, the level four is similar to the level three. The circulations, uh, public furniture in the amenity areas and the private furniture in the guest room uh, applied uh, by uh, uh, on uh, different dark materials and textures to also achieve cohesion and distortion like the level one and level two. Move to the model room proposal. The number 52 museum presidents from Easter Stalker inspired me to think of how to apply my stencil in a space with historical elements. And I made those sketches uh, to imagine the possibility of how 2D patterns and 3D structures from the stencil could connect. Uh, uh, they may uh, can apply on different surfaces and may uh, could be furniture, lighting, or other functional object. The massing shows I first define the public, private, and circulation area in white, black, and green, and then insert the grid system in it to place the, to place the 3D objects, and then keep cons contracting, extending, and adjusting the grids to get the compositions for both um, uh, 3D, for 3D employee effect and for function. Um, there are sections and plans to show how level one and level two connect. There is a floating staircase um, uh, behind the TV wall. Uh, this is the level one floor, uh, floor plan. Connect the shelf uh, uh, behind the TV wall and I lower the right second floor added stairs and connect the shelf and the thin columns five floor painting and ceiling um, to create both visual and spatial connection. And so this is this rendering is from the, uh, the front door view. Um, those renderings show different moments and uh, experience when guests move to a certain different perspective. When they move to the bed from the entrance, their view is changing to see how both 2D and 3D trompoy communicate with the upper floor, the wall, and the furniture. And, and those small triangle shapes uh, are distorted from the grid systems uh, and also can. Um, and I want to share with you guys a video can have a more immersive sense. Okay, back to my presentation. Um, so uh, that's just for the model room. And um, in terms of how to scale the grid system up from the model room to the whole building, 
I was uh, making a massing, same as the logic of for, for the modern to define the uh, grid system based, but but uh, it's based on the original structure of building. Um, and also I defined a privacy um, composition to the whole building. Uh, the section shows how I connect functional objects and, or, and original structures in the whole building. Uh, there are vertical circulations such as the, the elevator shafts and the grand uh, staircase from the first floor to the second floor, and also the horizontal circulation like corridors and uh, some other uh, like bigger functional objects such as the water pool and the ramp, as seen as the uh, I think it's the circulation and the furniture for the whole building. Why the structure is uh, as a grid system? Uh, they are also interacting with the original beams uh, and columns and the added uh, curtain wall structure and also the exterior shading. And uh, this one shows the tilt corridor uh, looks straight from the this section view. I also designed a blurred uh, and light shading structure on the rooftop, uh, which connect with the beams uh, on the top floor, the, the structure. Um, and this is the corridor. I define the corridor can be distorted as the objects in the model room. So I type them, uh, you can see this wall edge and connect the lighting uh, with the floor painting and apply them to this uh, slope wall to achieve a double trompoy effect. I look to the theater concept I used uh, semi-translucent back curtains for acoustically and uh, for and visually blurred. Also paint the, cur uh, the hidden columns uh, on the wall and a floating stage with a couple of columns also connected with the curtain tracks. Uh, I want to share my, my playlist for the theater, uh, which I also used in the model room video. Uh, there are some experimental and techno music can stimulate the point to line to surface composition and a continuous, uh, uh, they are continuous rather than as my uh, kind of the cohesion and the connected system. And this is the theater rendering. The theater space is made up of a central pool, stage and couple of sittings can be moved by the audience. There is also a changing room hidden behind the curtain uh, uh, on the back of the pool. Uh, the open uh, to below area and the rest of the second floor consists of a integrated healing space. People can immersive in the performance uh, and the music and enjoy the connected trompoy view in the blurred space. Um, and in terms of how to connect the interior and exterior, and also how to blur the boundary, I designed the shading structures on the top and uh, another one, uh, and another vertical one faced, uh, attached on the, uh, the beams faced to the north, sorry, attached on the columns. And those distorted structures are attached to the original beams and columns. And when you move from the corner to the entrance, the view of the distortion is changing at the same time. I mean, mentioning um, they grow from the, they're growing from the building and the semi-translucent fabric and the curtain wall are blurring the interior and exterior also provide a welcoming and greenery courtyard for residents and tourists. And um, that's it. Thank you, Jean. I'm going to ask you maybe once more, can you replay your video? Um, just, it was really blurry on my end. I don't know if it was blurry on the reviewers. And maybe you might just need to maybe turn your video off when you play it, or just try that to see if that helps with the streaming. Sure. Yeah, I will stop my uh, video.
that might that might be as good as we get. Thank you. Oh. Uh, thank um, you. I think it crashed, but uh, I saw it well the first time. Eh? I don't know the rest, but I saw it pretty well. Okay. This time it crashed. I mean, in my oh. computer it crashed at the end. It's okay. I think we get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I really, I really like your choice um, of um, intervening in the interior decide with a decisive uh, contemporary um, aesthetic uh, and, uh, in, and your choice, I, I think your choice of um, this extreme minimalism um, already in contrast with the existing building, um, does uh, the contrast of the, this extreme minimalism in contrast with the existing building does provide uh, that um, a surprise effect, you no? Know, once you cross the threshold uh, that we that 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 we were seeing in the churches, you no, know, where where you you mostly uh, and 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 and, the, and and I like that even though there's a variety in in the way that you that you're applying um, these ideas in the corridor or in the room or in the lobby. There's a consistency uh, in the approach, but uh, so there's both consistency in that approach of using the uh, you no know, the line to inform whether it's graphic or whether it's um, furniture, you no, know? um, the glass, you no, know, to to be able to maintain these always these linear elements um, and how you're just you're deploying that. Uh, in, in different ways, but consistently across the space. Um, so I think I think it's it's working very nicely. Um, if something, the only critique is like sometimes those spaces that are like and the use of, like the the exclusive use of the white and the and the black. Uh, like uh, sometimes there's uh, I mean when when. Uh, with time, sometimes they could feel, or for some people, it can be. I thought I thought they look great in the in the image, but it, sometimes it can be a little too dry. Uh, like uh, and 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 I I wonder if uh, and and I think for example in the lobby when you use the curtains, you make it softer already. But like a bedroom, like in the bedroom when it's really uh, just the black shelves and the glass, etc. I think I like those moments where like the curtains hanging out, maybe it could be more developed like, like you did in the room, no? Uh, mm. I think, I think uh, another layer like, uh, yeah, uh, make, maybe makes it a, a little bit warmer. Uh, but I, I mean, I have no problems with the extreme uh, minimalism that you're proposing, uh, but yes, yeah. Great, great job, Jingyu. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jingyu. I'm gonna piggyback a little bit on what Nare was saying. I think I also uh, liked the minimalism and it seemed like you were really interested in developing this, this framework or strategy for creating space. And then you deployed that within the shell of the existing building. And that means that I think the existing building comes through in many beautiful ways. And I think, um, it reminds me a bit of, of some of the houses of the architect Paul Rudolph, especially the townhouses in the city, the way that space um, is created and elements in the space, everything feels like it's made up of these shifting planes. Um, and it's really wonderful and architectural. Um, and then like Noria, I think she said it better than I could that, you know, I think when you look at that lobby image, the curtains really do just add that little bit of extra, I think, layer that it needs um, so that it doesn't become too dry. And I was thinking, you know, if you were to continue, I would love to see the same rigorous um, logic I think you've used to develop the space that's applied to the furniture. I think that's starting to happen, but I think you could go further with that. Um, and um, going back to um, the guest rooms and the apartments, I, I definitely, I think there's some of that happening, but I could see more of that. And instead of like a, a freestanding sofa, um, sitting in the living room, maybe it's something that is is designed in the same way that you've generated the or made space. Um, I think there's some really beautiful moments like the stair and the the duplex element there, and the relationship between the stair and the windows, and then the way the light comes in um, on that stair, and you have a sense of this like um, visual connection between floors is really really wonderful. 
as well. Um, I love the bold gesture of introducing the, the wall of glass at the lobby. Um, maybe because I'm a reductivist though, I kind of wanted to take away the, uh, like the awning element you have. Um, to me, I thought there was something really wonderful and bold about that wall of glass and introducing that into that solid wall um, and the light that would um, bring into the space. Um, but I, I kind of wanted to just strip away that little extra element and let the glass wall just be this, this powerful gesture. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. It's really good comments. Um, Jing, you're such a, such a great project. I mean, this is such a, uh, uh, so wonderful to see. Um, so congratulations. Uh, this is really exciting. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate that you took a, a very deliberate position about um, an approach which exists in contrast uh, to the existing structure, but I think also in a way that is quite refined. And um, and so I, 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 I think it's really strong. I mean, I think to me, a project like this, you know, I would argue that the it's not, the architecture doesn't have to do all the things that, um, would make it, and I hate the word uh, warm or soft or cozy. I mean, it's just, they're just such horrible words um, because I think they sometimes undermine um, or just, they just seem like they are uh, kind of a given when they don't have to be, because I think in my mind, what would give comfort is like ex extremely luxurious sheets and bedding and slippers mm -hmm. and maybe a very understated, like very flat, like wool, rug your carpeting that almost looks like it's solid but it's actually soft so I think that there are ways to you know and also like maybe a great like curated contemporary art collection you know maybe there are some uh, pieces of installation art or uh, you know I mean there are just so many ways to I mean this is where Terence knows about this a lot more than I do of kind of embedding a layer uh, of, 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 of art into a project like this so um, so I don't think that uh, kind of interiors has to be soft in order to be comfortable. I think it can happen in, in other ways. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I do think that if you think about Solowit, but also someone like Fred Sandbeck and a lot of kind of, uh, in, kind of minimalist installation artists, certainly like Donald Judd, who we all know well from, you know, our region here, is that those interventions are also a way to look at an environment. You know, they begin, and I think your project has a potential uh, to frame certain things, not just within the project, but also outside of itself. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and I think that to me, it's a little bit less uh, convincing that these frames that you're introducing are really about this geometry, these triangles. And I think it's more about seeing the environment around around the building of framing views of articulating depth. And, um, and that's probably something that I would want to um, know more about. I mean, I think it is important in your project to acknowledge that the existing building is there, but then that you have the liberty to maybe make this one incision within it that uh, that goes beyond its existing structural logic. So, you know, maybe you need like a much bigger span for this big glass opening. And I, so I really like that, that even from the outside, you already know that there has been this very surgically precise intervention um, that is, um, uh, that kind of acknowledges what exists, but also is very clear about about what it's trying to do. Um, so yeah, really great. Congratulations. Um, thank you. It's really helpful uh, comments. Yeah, I'll keep de developing that. Um, well, I think that um, ends our our middle review session this afternoon. Um, do I don't know if we have any takeaways from our reviewers, um, but. Any last comments? I, I really like the prompt. I think the the um, this hotel uh, in that context, in, in that particular context, historic context with um, 
with the exist with those um, churches, uh, no, but the painted churches. Uh, it's um, it's um, it's a very. I mean, it, it gave you uh, a lot of things to to pull from and to be inspired uh, by and uh, and to think about uh, how to intervene in a historic building and what what is uh, new and what is uh, what. Uh, yeah, how to express yourselves in that context that uh, is a challenge that I, I don't think you you had faced uh, yet. So I think uh, it, it was really good. Uh, it's, it's a really great exercise. Um, and I think the more uh, you acknowledge the fact that it was your intervention was con contemporary in the sense that uh, that uh, yeah, even though it's in a historic context, is is done today, and that uh, you freed yourselves in that respect, the more successful uh, the projects were. Um, but a really great uh, work throughout, um, um, in a, also a complex project, no, with a, um, a lot of uh, thinking of private areas, but then also public areas, outdoor, indoor. Um, and fairly big uh, projects. So really, really great work, everybody. I really enjoyed seeing every project. Yeah, me too, great work. And I think, um, you know, I think the program, uh, the hotel is super, hotels are super interesting. I mean, I've loved doing them for as many years as I have because of the variety of challenges and, you know, you're working at all scales and they span, you know, from residential to commercial, sometimes more institutional. institutional. Um, so they're really um, a, a very, um, you know, very, um, uh, you know, hybrid of many things. And, um, and then you add or you layer onto that, you know, adaptive reuse and, or, you know, um, even if, it, you know, some of the projects we've done, for example, maybe they're not adaptive reuse, but they may be historic buildings and you are doing a contemporary intervention in them in reinventing them um, in many ways. Um, and I think it's great to see so much experimenting. I think, you know, school is a great place to experiment. And um, I think going back to something Igor said before a little bit that, you know, oftentimes it is a bit intuitive um, when you're trying to figure out what is the right strategy um, with, a, a, you know, and I think there's no one size fits all. You can't really make rules. Every, every building is different, um, you know, uh, not just its, its pedigree, its location, the community around it, its history, its, um, you know, it, it's um, uh, what state it's in when you find it, what's left. Um, and all that has to really be taken into account. Um, and uh, and so it was, it was really wonderful to see all of your, your inventiveness and experimenting with all of that. So maybe I'll let Terence's words be the, the final words for, for the day because I, I'll, and, and I think what Nerea said, uh, also uh, rings true. Um, I'm just amazed by the kind of variety of approaches. Um, and I think uh, both uh, the students and, uh, and, and to Lisa, uh, really, really well done. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a complex project that I think everyone um, had a clear vision or uh, developed a clear vision for what they wanted to do and uh, you pursued it and you delivered it. So yeah, congratulations. All right. Well, thank you so much to all of our, our, our guest reviewers and parents. Hopefully we will have you back again at some point in time. Oh, so, I'd love to come back. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, then I will see the rest of you, I guess, at three. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, good luck to the students. For those of you that still have reviews um, left. And uh, Terrence, very nice to meet you. Thank you for um, joining us today. Likewise, yes, thanks, thank Igor. You for thanks, us. Maria. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. invite me back. <laughs> yes, we will definitely. <laughs> you can count on it now. You are right. on our list now. All right, I look forward <laughs> to it. Thank you all.
Hello, everyone. Is is our, is Sean there? Yes. I'm excited. I'm excited to say hello. Buongiorno. <laughs> You're being you're being incognito in LA right now. Um, we'll we'll wait just a few more minutes. Um, I think. Um, also, we have had a very last minute uh, uh, new new guest critic that's joining us. So instead of Virginia Gray from Deborah Burke's office, we have Allison. So. Um, <laughs> Total stranger, who are you people? <laughs> what do you work? What have you been working on this semester? I have no idea. <laughs> so I think we still we have our our Lauren Rotet, I think, is supposed to join us. So hopefully that is a seamless process. Um, but we'll just wait a few minutes. Sean, how's everything in LA? <laughs> Super good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no complaining. It's sunny out. It's nice. That's good. Are you committed to being, but you're committed to being indoors for like the foreseeable future? No, I'm going outside. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going outside. Um, it's, it's, I know, it's a nightmare. <sighs> Flower Boy is still open. That's well, all that matters. I'm excited to see this work. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. It is going to be great. It's already been great. So let me just check. Here's a little quartz crystal so everyone can be so feel better. We'll, we'll just, we'll give it a few more because I think we're still waiting for our, our last guest critic, but it's been going well. It's been nice to, it's been nice. It's been a good day. Hopefully everyone else feels the same way, so. Do you guys have final exams this semester? Are they all next week? What other classes are you guys taking this semester? Are you all out on your own now or do you still have the prescribed classes that you take together? Electives. Uh, I'm taking a real estate development class in, um, through the business school. It's been interesting. I did a seminar in the School of Fine Arts, which was really exciting to get out and meet new people and do some new things. And um, then I also took Simon Atkinson's Designing New Communities seminar, which has been really cool. So but did you go to the classes in School of Fine Arts or was no, it? No, I did everything online this semester, um, but it was a small group. It was really fun. That's neat, that's nice. Did everybody see that a uh, Palantir went public? What went public? It's the company that they were our client for our project last year for Technical Studio. Oh. Kind of super controversial, you know, sort of topic, but actually is it when it get, gets down to it, it's actually just bad marketing. And so like, they're actually not that controversial, but 
they um, they IPO'd a little while ago. And so there's the, they're all over the news again um, but for basically making all tech stocks skyrocket again. So there you go. Palantir in the back of the headlines. So it was good. And pause in a positive way, which is good. And they relocated to Denver. Did you see that? They moved. They moved out of Silicon Valley. All of Silicon Valley is moving to the mountains. It is, but they're like running away from what they were saying was the toxic culture of Silicon Valley that they were trying to get out of it. So they were. Everybody well, said for the mountains. <laughs> I mean, having having been in Denver, I feel like a lot of people have been moving there for a while. So yes, I feel like Salt Lake, Utah is, is like the next the next destination. We're trying to keep that a secret, but <laughs> well, maybe we dive in and we'll just see what happens. I just sent an email. Um, so I will first introduce Allison, which she needs no introduction to anybody other than perhaps Sean, but um, Hi, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're done now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lisa. <laughs> Allison, Allison is a um, faculty at UT in the interior design department. She also has her um, own practice here in Austin, is a pretty amazing and accomplished architect and interior designer. And um, has been on a number of uh, the studio's reviews. So I'm really, really excited to have you back. So thank you. She also obviously knows all of the students very well. Um, so I think um, it, is, it is appreciated that you are here um, today. Um, so I'll introduce then Sean. So Sean Nib is joining us from LA. Um, who is a, a friend, well, I, I'm gonna call you a friend, but um, <laughs> a co friend and colleague that I worked with on the line. Um, he's an amazingly accomplished interior designer, uh, artist, landscaper, I think creative thinker, um, has done a number of hotel and hospitality projects and is just someone that I really, respect um, your creative process and uh, I'm excited to hear what your thoughts are on the studio. Um, so we also have Ryan. Um, Ryan Wachipka is the owner of the Von Minden. Um, and um, question because I have been doing an intro on the site and the project. Do you guys want to hear me do that at all or would you rather hear from the students? I'm assuming maybe maybe do Allison, Sean, I feel like you, you probably have enough background info. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll just dive in. I'm gonna let then Megan and Stella uh, kick us off then. Okay, let me get this shared here. Okay, how's that look? Great. Perfect. All right, well, I am Megan Ryder, a third year master's of interior design student. And with my partner, Stella Koble, a second year master's of architecture student, we will be presenting to you our vision for the Von Minden Hotel. So the historic Von Minden Hotel is located in Schulenburg, Texas. In the middle of Austin, San Antonio and Houston, the town's slogan fittingly is halfway to everywhere. Although it's centrally located, the city is often overlooked by travelers who speed by on I-10 adjacent to the city. The hotel owners noted early on that Schulenburg is lacking attractions to make people want to stay. Due to a housing shortage, um, local college students often live outside the city and are stuck with few job opportunities nearby. From the beginning, we were posed with the challenge of coming up with a viable program for the hotel. When we visited the site, we were inspired by, the many, by many of the building's existing materials and qualities, rough edges, exposed brick, saturated paint colors, and remnants of its past, such as the original neon signage, 
and areas where decorative trim had been removed to reveal ghosted trim around openings. The historic vaudeville and later movie theater space had, had, had a certain formality provided by its curved ceilings. The richness created through the curve became one of our early inspirations and starting points. In our initial exploration of stencils in the painted churches, we were drawn to both faux architectural elements like the rib vaults at High Hill St. Mary's and smaller decorative motifs found in embellishments at Dubina that were often brightly colored and repeated throughout. One pattern we created features a Texas longhorn motif and the appearance of this longhorn throughout our presentation will periodically help to orient you to reference points on the screen. To draw people into Schulenburg, we envisioned the hotel having live music, bigger events, and festivals. Its prime location could allow for artists to tour, allow for artists on tour to stop between bigger cities for a more intimate show. We even considered the possibility of having small film festivals with venues expanding to the painted churches themselves. In addition to this, we wanted the hotel's public spaces to be active on weekdays with beer and low prep food for all ages in a casual setting. Flexibility became a driving force of our design. We wanted divisible and transitional spaces that could adapt depending on time of day, day of week, and type of program. A cafe for morning and day use and a classic bar that would enliven Schulenberg's nightlife. A connection between indoors and out was a high priority and we wanted our hotel rooms to serve both short and long-term guests. Our vision for the Von Minden was for it to be a home away from home. In terms of the music, we saw the downstairs having more of a Texas folk and acoustic, and acoustic music scene. Above, we envisioned a more jazzy and relaxed atmosphere in the hotel circulation spaces. On the roof and outside would be a more upbeat classics like Buffalo Springfield and Fleetwood Mac. The site is located just a few blocks from Main Street, Schulenburg. The lot currently includes a large vacant area to the north and an alleyway to the south. We envisioned the northern corner um, with a building on it in the future, perhaps with additional guest or long-term residential rooms. Therefore, we kept our landscaping and courtyard concentrated between the Von Menden and this future building. We found it necessary to add on to the building so the downstairs could have a full service kitchen and cafe in addition to the theater space. We also opened up the theater on three sides so the lobby and cafe could be more connected to it. Originally, the theater floor was continually sloped, so we decided to create two accessible flat tiers to allow for seating or a dance floor, as well as provide circulation to the lobby, cafe, and outdoors at the perimeter. We also added an exterior stair providing direct access to a rooftop bar. Because the hotel has been a fixture for many generations of Schulenberg residents, we prioritized the preservation of several important elements of the building, like its awning with its exposed light bulbs and curved form. We, also, we have also added to this the courtyard landscaping and signage to the right here. In terms of the landscaping for the courtyard, we chose a mix of low maintenance ornamental grasses and shrubs that provide a lot of texture and color while remaining casual and a bit wild. We also decided we also designed a small outdoor stage and enclosed the courtyard in low concrete walls, allowing for alternate ticketing points during events. The rooftop bar we saw as a continuation of this laid back mood with cornhole and picnic tables that can transition from day to night. We focused public programming on levels one and two while guest rooms were consolidated on the third and fourth floors accessible from a front interior stair and elevator as well as a back external stair and elevator. We chose to build our materials and color palette around existing elements of the Von Minden that we could preserve and build off of. The original longleaf uh, pine floors, exterior brick, and exposed hollow clay block interiors were materials that we want to preserve while we layered in other elements like wood paneling, tambored wood, uh, brass accents, and wavy terracotta tile floors. Uh, the early interest in saturated color moments continued in our new vision with immersive and richly colored experiences inspired by traditional Czech and German textiles. Here you see an overview of our public programming connecting levels one and two from the lobby, corner cafe, kitchen and theater up to the bar and green room. Here on the first floor plan, you can see this new connection of these spaces. The theater centrally located is now accessible from the lobby, cafe and courtyard with more concentrated zones of circulation and storage spaces. On level two, the bar is located in 
in the front of the hotel, accessible from the lobby and theater, while the green room at the rear doubles as a communal guest kitchen and dining space. On the first floor, our journey begins at the main entrance into the lobby. Here, the concierge greets weary travelers, locals, and friends alike with a check-in, ticketing, and merchandise sales. Soulful and acoustic tunes welcome folks from near and far before they grab a quick bite or settle in for the night. Our all-day cafe boasts a large glass case for fresh pastries and a kitchen that whips up wood-fired breads in casual, easy fare that can be enjoyed if you're posting up for the day with your laptop or grabbing lunch to go for you and the kids. As you enter the theater from the cafe or lobby, you'll experience different programming depending on whether it's daytime, evening, a weekday, or weeknight. At times, the stage may be populated with performers or offer a movie screening, with plenty of space below for dancing, lounging, or a movie-like seating. Inspired by the theater's original coved ceiling, we created a more modern cove with integrated lighting and added a tiered ceiling accented with theater bulbs and layered curtains, a throwback to and twist on the original design, making the ceiling a focal point like in the painted churches we explored. Curtains define the theater floor in contrast to the perimeter circulation and curtains on the exterior and interior walls allow for the theater to be made more private as needed. During the week, guests and locals may use the space for co-working, dining, or private events. The theater is designed to be versatile in its use and provide open access to the outdoors while taking advantage of the pleasant climate. In the section looking north, the stairs at the back provide access to the green room, which is partially open to the third floor, while the stairs in the front provide access to the bar overlooking the theater. Upstairs, the bar gives way to warm tones, rich velvets, and darker stained woods. At times, this area could be roped off for VIP events or smaller dining alongside a bigger show downstairs. On the other side of the second floor, I hang out and relax before a show in the green room. On days when concerts aren't programmed, this space functions as a community kitchen and lounge where friends and family can make meals together or chat late night. Here, the double height ceiling connects to the hotel corridor above. The back exterior stair provides access to the third and fourth fourth floor guest rooms above. Entering through the exterior door to the third floor, a transitional lounge provides a buffer to the guest rooms and a peek into the green room below. Curtains can be drawn to provide privacy for the green room when necessary, and a double loaded corridor provides access to guest rooms from, the, from both front and back circulation course. Both the third and fourth floor feature four guest room types, king and queen suites, double queen rooms, and a special queen room with a bunk. On the floors, we added a doormat rug stencil and a Moravian and German folk inspired rugs in the guest rooms. The fourth floor plan is similar to the third. However, the mezzanine is eliminated to accommodate an additional corner king suite. The entry to each guest room is recessed from the main corridor and features curved paneled millwork and backlit room, num room numbers reminiscent of the theater bulbs and casework in the lower levels. Our king suite is perfect for couples. Each king suite is spacious enough to accommodate seating for two or even four. Nightstands rotate 180 degrees to conceal personal belongings when needed or provide open shelving and additional storage when the room is occupied. The two-dimensional painted application of curved forms and trims blur the lines of what might truly be curved or three-dimensional built-ins, a quirky take on the application of painting from the churches. A built-in desk with a flexible pull-out bench seat provides a small private work area for guests. Wardrobes conceal TVs and mini bars while also providing drawer storage. Shelves, coat hooks, and hang bars are exposed near the, near the door for clothing and luggage storage. Each bathroom features a large vanity, soaking tub, walk-in shower, and separate toilet compartment for privacy. Next door, our queen room is perfect for friends and families. Its spacious floor plan allows everyone to spread out and even accommodate a hideaway bed if need be. The illusory curved built-in reappears here with a secluded bunk nested behind. Kids can curtain off and stay up late or go to bed early in a secret nook. As guests rise in the morning, they can head downstairs for a hot coffee to start their day and be on their way. And that concludes our journey. Thank you. Nice. Very cool. Thanks. Hi, it's Lauren Rote. If you guys can hear a little bit of technical difficulties joining, but I'm here. 
Thank you. <laughs> it's, I think I may be called Melody Faircloth, but it's Lauren. Do you need us to go back and review anything or did you catch that? Well, really, I only saw your last four slides, but I don't know what our timing is like. So I'm going to have to leave that up to you guys. Um, I guess we could get started and then if we have time, we can go back and review. I think that I think that maybe makes sense. And and thank you, Lauren. I just was emailing with Melody. Um, I'm glad that you were able to join and I'm sorry that there was any difficulty with that. But um, yeah, I think maybe it makes sense um, maybe for the reviewers to keep going and we and then if we have time, we could potentially go back or we That sounds going. great. Thank you. I'm sorry, Thank just you. saying that the meeting was a different date and just wouldn't let me in. But thanks for sending another one. Uh, John Allison? Oh, okay. Sure. I was like, oh, yeah. We um, I really like having this last slide actually to get the full scope because the overall vibe as you're preventing or like or as you're presenting it was like makes sense makes sense yeah oh yep got it yep got it like that and I really like being able to see the whole thing right here because I think that this actually speaks tones like it, like the sort of the harmonious feeling even with the um, different kind of color saturation that you use throughout the project I think it really comes out so you can see sort of the continuity of the idea um, coming through and the level of detail is really commendable. Even the things, you did a nice job of highlighting little special moments, but if, if we get into each of the um, sort of immersive renderings, we actually pick apart certain little things that you can see that you were really specifically implemented. Um, so I really love sort of the many different layers where like any good story, um, you told us a couple of the points and then you let us discover a few things for ourselves as we were going through your presentation. So that was very nice. It was obviously um, a well-trained presentation. You guys clearly worked well both on your project and during the presentation. So that's really nice to see um, just sort of, again, the idea that the continuity, it's, it's not um, often that you see a team working together where it's almost like indiscernible about who did what and how you know like you it's I don't know how you did this working remotely being able to work together so seamlessly but clearly whatever it is you can tell the rest of us and we can tell people who need to work in teams how to do it so that would be great um so we'll follow up on that one later but um but I do there are a couple things I want to push back on a little bit okay I think that you are presenting a very very serious design in a very very playful way and I like that, but there are times when I got a little bit fatigued a bit. Um, and it was when you had a juxtaposition of a real material in the room with sort of the storyboard cartoon rendering of everything else, it wasn't always clear why you were bringing that thing to the forefront. Like you talked about this curtain in the theater and I actually would love to see that go through your rendering software and sort of see that proof that that thing above the ceiling is as awesome as I think it is. But instead I had, the only thing I really got to latch onto with a realistic texture was the brick. And I know brick, I can do brick, you know, like it, there were some things and I, and I, I can see the logic that you use or sort of the tiles, the hard surfaces, all of that stuff that you mapped in um, with realistic features, but I think the thing that maybe should have been brought to the forefront was that one element that really defines the whole character of the room, that really sort of that pushes that feeling, that evokes the feeling that I get when I stand in the room. Um, like the, it would have been like the light fixture above those doors, like really let that thing glow, right? So that everything else, so I know that there's this one element that's really particularly placed, really finessed, and then the rest can sort of be super complementary to it. So it's not a useful feedback for your actual design. It's about the presentation of the design, but it does say something about sort of the decisions that we make when we go through and how we establish the hierarchy of our spaces. So um, that's such a minor pushback, but I think it's a, it's a really an accomplished project and um, I look forward to seeing it built in Schulenburg. So great work. <laughs> Thank you, Allison. That makes perfect sense <laughs> i could 
Yeah, I could add a little bit. So I, I love the details you guys did. Um, I can also see, see the details where you're thinking about the light and pulling in your new design inside of the shell that's there. Um, to Allison's point, um, it would be such an easy thing. So we're obviously visuals, like we get the visuals really easy. Um, but for the layman, if even in the tiles that you're showing the interior renderings, if you just had your favorite top three materials that were speaking to that interior design, just even alongside the, the views that you're doing inside would be so much more like add life to the, to the rendering. So even if you didn't fully flush out the fabric on the ceiling, just show me a couple of tiles of what that fabric might feel like or look like. And then my mind will automatically place it where you're intending it to go. So it's just adding more color and, and flair to the, to the presentation. Um, I, I like, so dealing with hotel rooms, I like the clever use of the little bunk bed for the kids behind the, 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 in the twin, in the, is it the queen or the twin room? Queen with a twin bunk. Yeah. Yeah. That's super clever. I love that. I, and I like all of the contemporary curves and layouts. I would just say it would be great with this killer sort of contemporary design you guys have to add more of the trompe l'oeil because you're so modern and so strong in the detailing the architecture that that other element, if you pushed that into it more and those two things at play would be a really strong add to the narrative and make, oh, make this, make this project even more distinct than you've already presented it. That's like, that would just be kick-ass in my opinion. Um, but the, and, and to, to, to also to Allison's point about how you guys presented, I can tell you from as early as yesterday, watching teams present in this manner, you guys are way better than anyone I've experienced in the last couple of weeks. So however you've sort of managed to like, whether it's scripted or you're just playing off of each other, the presentation from a dual pers presenter point of view is super, super, super. Um, and I guess one other thing is just to add the narrative, like never be afraid to continue your narrative from the beginning to the end so that the ownership or whomever is, is sort of like wanting to have you uh, bring this to life can see that your narrative is being thought through both public's realm all the way through to the guest room and, and that's it but it's 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 awesome and one other thing i really love the mez like the whole idea of coming to the second floor before you get to the guest room sitting down and having that little respite and that little peekaboo down awesome i totally agree i think that's such a nice space to imagine um one thing I'm ready to get into the nitty gritty. Okay. <laughs> um, one thing about your project is when I look at it again, I super appreciate this view so I can really see the whole thing. Um, I think at a certain point, your project graduated from being inspired by this musical genre that you presented. Um, and even sort of like you talked about the prints and like the Bebo thing and Bebo just became a little marker of place in your sections. like. I don't know, like at a certain point, your project left the process that you went through. And so I wonder if that should still have a place. Like, and because I think your project would have been worse if you were like, this is the Dolly Parton room, you know, like, the, you know, no, right? So I think at a certain point, I, you know, I feel like a broken record. I'm always like, what's your gut check? Like, what are you, um, what's left in your project that is really worthwhile showing so that we have the time to really immerse ourselves in those places, right? And so there are some beautiful moments that we don't really get to explore about the way that you define space using the same color, but then a different reflectivity in the ceiling in this red cafe space, right? So that's this really, really um, phenomenal area of where you use saturated color and then reflecting off of the sort of the lighting effects that are coming in through the historic shell of the building. So we didn't really get to really immerse ourselves in those spaces because we had to spend time hearing about sort of where your ideas came from, 
when it had to do with a musical thing that didn't reappear later. And so um, I think there's a point at which you look at what you're putting forward and then and you can actually work backwards and you're like, okay, so it's not the musical thing that really inspired us. This is where we really started to take off in this direction. Here's the problem we solved. The double loaded corridor of the hotel is clearly the worst spot. How did we really attack that? And then you can go through and be like, we proposed this solution. Is there anything else we can do with this to make that even better? How do we focus our energies there? It shouldn't always be like, are we answering our initial thesis? Your thesis at this point in advanced design should get you started, project you on a path, and then and then be able to sort of be left behind, right? Because I, you know, Megan, my bias, like where are your fire sprinklers? You know, so you have these beautiful, you have these beautiful ceiling planes in all of these rooms. You have this um, exuberance of like flatness in the, in the, you know, the, the king and the queen suite. You have all of these, but you have intricacies and foldings and layers where you could build in those building systems. And we could imagine like if you, in that theater space, you have that curtain hanging and the air comes on, man, if that thing's loud, that would be terrible. But if it was a sort of really gentle, continuous feed and it might move it just slightly, like you might just have the slight move. Like there's an idea about the building systems that could really inform your project. And I would love to hear you have more energy in that direction about how you fully integrated all of those things and solved those problems, not just the aesthetic concerns of how to build new in an old building, um, more so than like your inspiration about the sort of music genre and how it could be created and turned into a diagram. Um, one other, I have a, I have a uh, question. So the last, um, Three, four, five, eight slides. So if you were to show me the last eight slides, seven slides, sorry, um, would we know without either one of us speaking where we were? Um, and that's interesting. You're speaking, so I'm automatically hearing the narrative, but when I look at the imagery at the end, it would be great to keep, when you're looking at it to say, could this be a hotel anywhere? Could it be in Taipei? Could it be in New York? The design is like, is is there, but the sense of place and the grounding in the in the rooms is still like something I want to see you guys bring to the forefront. So if this picture is just on the screen, I can get a sense of oh, this is potentially a historic building. It's in Texas. It's got Trump Loy. It's there's there's the old and new depicted in in the um, renderings and that's because I would say like we could put this in San Francisco and it would be an awesome hotel but I wouldn't know right away that it's in its particular location so I think that's something you guys could easily do it's just a matter of like knowing that that's what's maybe missing from the from the room design um, but I, I, that's, so that's, like a so like a big water jet cut uh, profile of Bevo in every room, right? Yeah. <laughs> but something something <laughs> so feel like I'm I I'm this is my location. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lauren, do you have any questions, or should we um, maybe jump into the next? Um, presentation. You know, I, because I didn't see all of it, I won't ask a question. But you know, I was going to say that something that's influenced my work, and I think we don't think about too often, is pattern done in a beautiful way that becomes architectural. And it might have been appropriate here, um, playing off of Sean's comment. Um, and that's um, Macintosh. Um, he did very simple, beautiful architecture, and then pattern was very much completing that. So to mark the point of could this be in, in Taipei or, or in Schulenburg, perhaps, you know, playing off of that German stenciling, but in a more contemporary way, like Macintosh did in his time, might be interesting, something that I try to explore. Um, it's difficult, but it's really amazing when it, when it works well and can really define a space. Thank you all so much. Thank <laughs> you. you. Um, so I'll quickly maybe introduce everyone again. Um, so we have, uh, we have Lauren and I, is it Rotet? Is that how you pronounce your last name? I apologize. That's okay, okay. Rotet. Yeah, Rotet. I don't know why you can't see me, but um, 
<laughs> That's okay. Well, we are I, we are very very thankful that you are here. Um, I maybe I will double check um that there's not something on my end that I'm doing, but um, um clearly you are an amazing and very very accomplished in the world of hospitality. So um has done a number I think of I mean I can't even list all of your projects, but uh, for seasons locally globally um I think she's worked in Texas and 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 really all over um. Uh, the U.S. and beyond. So uh, thank you for um, being able to join us. I know you're, you are also a graduate of um, the UT um, School of Architecture. So um, thank you for your time. And so if you've not ever met everybody else, we also have uh, Allison Gaskins, who is faculty at UT um, in the interior design um, department and also has her own practice here. And then um, joining us from LA is Sean Nib, who is an interior designer, creative um, uh, artist and landscaper who has done a number of um, number of hospitality projects, including the, the Line Hotel LA, Austin, DC, San Francisco, I think. Um, which is also how I know him. Um, and then we have uh, Ryan Wotipka, who is the owner of the Von Minden. So um, that said, we'll just dive to dive into our next project, which is um, gonna be presented by Ivy. Do we see Ivy? Yes, hi everyone. My name okay, is Ivy. Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me share my screen. Okay, is everyone able to see? Yes. Okay, perfect. So my vision for the Von Minden is for the hotel to transform into a destination space that brings visitors from far away to experience a space that reinvents the heart of Schulenburg. The hotel is intended to draw on visitors who are more comfortable driving rather than flying due to, the, due to the COVID pandemic. And it's supposed to be a space that will make their drive worthwhile. The average American is willing to road trip around two hours and 53 minutes to reach their vacation destination. So the ideal visitor of the hotel are residents of Austin, Houston, and San Antonio, as well as locals from Schulenburg and neighboring cities like LaGrange and Sweet Home. So the main selling point of the hotel that will draw in such visitors are immersive art exhibits on the ground floor of what used to be the hotel's historic theater. And these exhibit spaces, as well as other spaces in the hotel, will play at the core of the city of Schulenburg history, which is their painted churches. Um, as Lisa mentioned in the brief, these painted churches featured stencils that really in, sorry, imitated materiality um, and they imitated a materiality that they couldn't afford in the buildings at the time. So my vision of the Von Minden aims to reinvent this idea of stenciling that Schulenberg's first residence used in a religious, religious experience, but to transform it into a more artistic and fun destination experience. So before beginning my design of the Von Minden, I created a set of stencils that were inspired by the ideas of the stencils of the churches. One church in particular, um, Amonsville St. Baptist Church was my main source of inspiration. Um, and you can see in this top left image here, they have this stenciling panel that was actually produced by paint only. Um, and I was very inspired by this wall stencil. So I created my own version that mimics this um, wall paneling which can be seen on the right side. Um, I was also intrigued with the idea of stencils mimicking materiality. And I found this image of this actual wooden bench that appears to look like this tufted upholstery. So I created these stencils um, on the lower half that look like tufted fabric and another stencil that looks like a draping um, bed skirt or like a draping curtain that were largely inspired by both of these images. Along with the stencils of the painted churches, I also found inspiration in the work of Felice Verini. I was interested in the idea of how trompe l'oeil can be used to distort the reading of space and form. Rather than making a 2D surface appear 3D, um, stencils here in his work, um, you can kind of see that these 3D forms are flattened into 2D snapshots of shapes floating in space. So moving forward into the design of the Von Minden, the site plan here shows the location of the Von Minden Hotel itself, along with the proposed courtyard and the outdoor dining experience. 
The exterior of the building serves to be a hybrid of the building's past life as well as the building's proposed new life. Looking at the entrance facade of the building, the previous key-shaped signage on the, type, on the top right of um, the hotel here is redesigned in a way with a new colorway and light, but also preserves that key-shaped form of the old sign. Most of the brick on this facade will be kept, except for this lower half, which serves to show the new life of the Von Minden. The lower portion of the wall will be divided by an overhang that has plants on top, and the wall itself will be plastered with detailing that relates to the, in, the inside experience, providing a sort of sneak peek for the visitors um, of what's to come. So looking at the floor plan here, you can see that the visitor of the exhibit itself, they enter in through this side here, and they walk through this hallway here that has exhibit spaces flanking this side and this side of the aisle. And this ultimately leads to a retail store that will feature local artwork and also knickknacks of the hotel itself. Um, and there is a restaurant here that leads out into an outdoor restaurant located here. And then on the left side of the hotel is the hotel itself. So there's the hotel lobby um, and then stairs that lead to the floors above. So looking specifically at the individual spaces, this is the lobby for the exhibit. Um, and the idea of stencil paneling of the painted churches is applied here in this lobby, but in a reverse manner where instead of stencils being applied to imitate a 3D wall paneling, seen, as, um, seen in the Amonsville image that I showed before, stenciling here is applied to make the room look like a 2D sketch, effectively making the 3D volume look 2D, similar to like a sketch on a piece of paper. Um, and to add to this effect, the furniture here is also outlined in black to make it appear 2D as well. Um, after entering in the double doors, there is a threshold experience here right before the exhibit itself. And this experience here um, sort of adds or serves as a kind of gradual um, experience into what will come in the exhibit space. And here, um, you can see that the curves on the wall are actually this wallpaper that I designed that um, is related to this idea, similar in uh, Felice Marini's work where um, Trump Lloyd's used to kind of alter the space and affect the reading of space. And the curves of the wallpaper not only distort space, but they also make um, the, sorry, the curves on the wallpaper not only serve to make the surfaces appear as if they're rising and falling, but they also serve as a wayfinding tool to guide visitors into key spaces of the building. So looking here, this is a threshold that I showed before, and it gradually leads into the bathroom here, but also it leads into the exhibit space located here. And the slope floor of the existing building is filled in um, to create these um, step aisle experience here in the center of the exhibit space. Um, and the exhibit space, like I mentioned before, is an aisle that is flanked with eight exhibit, like individual exhibit arenas or spaces. And these individual exhibit rooms play with the idea of scale, where small items are blown up um, into three-dimensional volumes, like a marker in a coloring book or a sprinkled donut. And then adjacent to the exhibit space is a restaurant. And in the restaurant, these ideas of foam materiality from Schulenberg's painted churches are present. Here, foam materiality is explored where soft materials are stenciled to mimic hard materials and hard surfaces appear like soft surfaces. So looking at this render here, you can see that the soft seats of the booth are covered in a leather tile that make it appear like it's a continuation of the tile below it. And the hard um, wall that encloses the kitchen located here is actually covered in a wallpaper that looks like a soft textile or a rug. And this dining experience is continued outside in a more calmer manner. The lobby of the hotel itself is intended to be a hybrid of the painted churches as well as um, the history of the Von Minden. Here, the wall panels of um, Amonsville are kind of explored in a way that reverses the idea of um, a painted surface looking 3D, but rather a 3D surface that appears 2D. Um, so here, light strips are added to this exaggerated extrusion of what is a wall panel. 
and um, this makes the wall panel, if looked at a certain angle, appear flat like an actual wall panel. But when looked at perspective angle, you can see that is it, it actually is this extrusion. And then looking at the second floor here, um, there's a local art mezzanine located here that will feature different artworks of local residents. And then there is the space below that is an opening of below of the exhibit space. And this section here shows that in detail. And this is the stair experience. And the stair experience is a continuation of the curved stencils or the curved wallpaper apparent in the exhibit below. Um, and just like that um, exhibit space, the curves act as the wayfinding tool that leads you up the stairs. And going to the third floor, this um, curved stencil is applied to the flooring of the corridor of the guest room floors. And you can see that the curves lead you into the different um, room types. And then this is a render of the corridor space showing the floor that I mentioned before. And then this is the guest room and the guest room is intended to be a more direct illustration of the concept of um, mimicking materiality. Um, here, you can see that a visitor walks into the space here, um, which is intended to be this kind of sit down area that's more social, and then they can walk into the guest room here. And in this transitionary space, there's artwork from local Schulenberg residents. And um, the wall panels here are in a similar language of Amonsville, where it's a painted um, wall panel attached to, or a uh, painted wall panel um, at, applied to a wall. And um, the faux drapery and the faux um, tested stencils that I mentioned before are applied here on this chair and it's also applied on this bed skirt here, making this um, hard surface appear soft. And here are images of the different ambiguous moments of the guest room where there's different hidden moments like a hidden bar and a sliding panel door and a paneled wardrobe that kind of plays with the idea of um, this wacky kind of experience that the hotel below or the exhibit space below is, but it brings it up to the guest room, just revealing and hiding some instances. And then moving up to the roof, um, you can see that there is a dining lounge here, a bar, a rooftop bar here, and then a pool for visitors to enjoy. And similar to the restaurant, the rooftop explores this idea of film materiality, where um, the overhang of the bar is actually it's actually covered with a curtain that is stenciled with this faux wood stencil here. And um, this is continued here to the entrance of the rooftop. And lastly, adjacent to the bar is a live wall that has bright signage that visitors are welcome to take pictures in front of. And this signage reads, it's weird not to be weird, which serves as a perfect summary of the wacky and eccentric nature of my version of the Von Minden Hotel. And that's all. Nice. Cool. Sean, you have to start because I'm not cool enough to comment on Ivy's project. Oh, it's like, <laughs> it's like, um, I, <laughs> I love the consistency. Uh, I like super thoughtful. Um, Ice Cream Museum comes to mind, the Madonna Inn. Like, this is like a really, like, you know, this is like a, an iconic destination spot. So um, I, I get it. I would love, can you go back to some of the beginning stuff, the entry? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what the, <laughs> um, Kareem Rashid, I don't know if you know who that is. He would love this mm -hmm. uh, to death. Um, I, you know, I like how you took the trampoline. I like how you took this idea of the painting and used it. I think, um, you know, the, there is a, there's a, there's a more sophisticated, um, moves in the guest rooms and then this big vibrant, like, um, you know, colorful, bold, like this, very, you know, almost playful 
again, Madonna Ice Cream Museum, this place where like you can see, you know, this contemporary version of, and in a, in a, in a tasteful way, like, like a playful place for kids, for young people, for like just basically a complete departure from the humdrum world outside. Um, so I love, I love it. Um, I just saw Willy Wonka the other day and I felt like I missed that movie. I miss that right now. Um, <laughs> and, and I, I, I like it a lot. Um, have you been to the ice cream museum? No, I have not, but I was inspired by a lot of those immersive art exhibits. And I wanted to just incorporate that idea into um, the city of Schoenberg. Yeah, um, I think it's great. Um, I don't know necessarily how the hotel rooms play with that necessarily, because they're like, you you created two distinct different um, experiences. And I, I, my comment would be, if you're going for it in this way, just blast it all the way through and and really, you know, be the Madonna in. Um, but I, and I love your detailing. I love the thoughtfulness. I love um, the way you try to continue to kind of explore Trump Loy and the whole ideology behind that. Um, it's great. It's cool. It's very cool. Very avant-garde. Thank you. It did make me think of, so locally we do have um, a Wonder Spaces exhibit happening. Have you been to that, Ivy? Is that the one located in Austin? Yeah. So I actually looked it up. They were a traveling, it's like a traveling exhibit. It is a traveling exhibit, but it's still here. So you should try to go see it because it, your exhibit space reminded me a lot of that. Um, because I I actually totally echo Sean's sentiment. There was a certain sophistication and but fun up in the rooms, which is totally different than the exhibit space. And in my head, I had just tell myself like the exhibit space, I think changes. Because I think it's when you're making something that is like an ice cream museum, like it, it needs, it needs to change. It needs to rotate. It's got to stay current. You know, all those people came and took their pictures, so we're ready for the next thing. Um, but I think that you've you've set up the premise for that to happen. And I actually love that the the phase into that from the street is this weird black and white room. Having just seen um, Megan and Stella's project, I was like, okay, is this a presentation effect or is this literal? So I really appreciate that you're like, this is like literally rendered the way it's supposed to look when you walk in. Um, so I appreciate sort of that confusion. And it's it's one of those like entering into, it's entering into Willy, Willy Wonka. It's, it's stepping through the TV, you know, like it's just like you're all of a sudden you're in this different world. Um, I will say that when you open the double doors, it still feels, I don't know if you're trying to keep the remnant of the regular ceiling. Like the, there's something, there's a disconnect that's happening here having to do with that initial plane that, I don't know, there's there's something here that's a little bit off for me. Like there's there's kind of a forced perspective, um, but then we have this really flat white ceiling. I, I feel like when those doors open, it's almost like that's when your music, your playlist starts. Like, and then it's, it's super immersive and maybe it's just that we get the, a few of those lights. Like there's um, the public hotel in um, New York has that like you walk into the elevator and it's like, you know, reflective uh, uh, escalator and you've got this gold reflective light around you and then you're, you're up and you're, you're completely transported into a different world all of a sudden. And so that's a kind of the this sort of gradual threshold that I'm experiencing here. I think you could, you could crank this a little bit further um, I actually, I actually think that I really, I, the, the, the rooms themselves, like you're starting to shine a little bit there. Like, I really like, I was like, yeah, like the, that bed. Um, I love the lobby. And then we get into like, in, okay, go back one. I almost laughed during your presentation because I liked it so much, but this idea, like I can totally imagine myself being there and like going to close the window. I'm like, and I would start laughing. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, this is awesome. Like, this is crazy pants and I love it. And then I turn the corner and then you see the bed. And so now you go to the next slide and it's like, yeah. And you've got the lights on the ceiling. So like, I really appreciate all these little bits of finesse. I, you know, I walk up to that bed skirt and it's hard. Like the, the amount of confusion I would experience in your building would bring me nothing but sheer delight. So I think that that's a bit of success there. So I think that um, 
what are the creature comforts then that we can afford? I think that maybe that's the next step you could take into your project. So how do we take some of these things and it's not just the, the bedding, but you know, it, the exposed wood floor, like do, do we have, I don't know, a rug that looks like a wood floor? Like, I, I, you know, like what can we do to bring in some literal softness to the room? Um, so that it's, we can in, enjoy sort of the visual show that you're putting on, but then that there is some relief in the tactility of it. I, I, can I add one thing? Like now that I'm not like looking at all of your detailing in this room, it is killer. Like the yeah, fact I that- I like this room. I mean, the fact that the shades come down and they're brick. <laughs> they're brick. Like, <laughs> it, it, like I, Okay, I, I love this room. Like, if I could buy this room, I would. I mean, <laughs> um, so like, I guess from a present, like, I would love to see you talk about this a little bit more. So maybe um, because there's so much. It's, it's clever and it's yeah. and it's also very theatrical and it's 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 awesome. I mean, like, but I I need you know you need to man you need to focus. <laughs> It's awesome. I love the bed. Bed head is like brilliant. I love it. In the, in the skirt. That's what I mean. Like I, that's what I mean by the sophistication here. I almost feel like the exhibit space was something, maybe you did that first and then you got to here and then you didn't go back to the, like the exhibit space was the jump into the pool. And this is where you learned how to swim. Like, you know, it, and I, I wonder if you could do better in the exhibit space because it's almost too obvious. It's wild, right? But it's almost too obvious. And this is just the, the constant discovery of all those little things that you can get into um, in the subtlety of the, the rooms that you're providing. It, it's, it's clever. Like, I love that word. It's, it's, it's just super clever. Hi, I think this is Lauren. Can you guys hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can okay. see you. We can see you too. Hello, Hi, Lauren. See me? That's amazing. Um, maybe hearing's better, but anyway. So, you know, I would echo all of those comments and I do quite love this room. I was looking at it as you were presenting it and thinking that is really good. I guess I would say for one, I love that you didn't think color and pattern had to stay in its box. You clearly did not color inside the lines and I like that. Um, you know, I, there's something that I see and, you know, we all love modernism and modernism's about floors, walls and ceilings. But I think when you, and they were all, you know, they're defined planes and typically the ceilings were just plainer. And then along came, you know, postmodernism and other things. But I think where we are now is that carving and layering and um, allowing the architecture to participate in the pattern would be an interesting thing for you to explore because I think your boxes are very rectilinear and then the pattern's really amazing and that's interesting. But I think like in the exhibition rooms, you go, and it's also about the flow, you go in and out of those rooms but you have to go in and out of them. Typically in an exhibition space, you can sneak around the corner. So not everybody is going in and out of one little room. And it makes the experiences a little more interesting than always going back out into the corridor. So I would just say, think volumetrically more and think architecturally more and let the pattern, like when you really did it's sometimes confusing because when you do crazy pattern and then you do a little architectural move, it makes the crazy pattern even crazier. So I would say th think three-dimensionally and architecturally along with your pattern and also about the flow of, of the space, how someone would really walk in and walk out or walk in and turn or what would they really do? How would they really walk through this? What would they perceive? Right. I think right now it almost reads as if your exhibit space could be converted into like a crazy retail space. Like there's a lot of footprint given away to the street, um, to the sort of foot traffic, where the actual presence of being in the hotel and going to stay in the hotel is feels like a back of house, like literally the entry to it, right? Can you go back to your plan for that? Um, so the sequencing of getting back to the hotel lobby. And I love the rendering once we're in there, like I, but it doesn't have a street presence, right? So we've got to really know where we're going um, to go on and get back there. I wonder if there's too much, if you have one too many bays of exhibit space and if everything could move over or if there's a way to bring back the hotel lobby as having a stronger presence, like you have a back of house room or did you mean to do that in part? Like, Am I pushing up, up against something that you were like, no, the hotel lobby should be this small? You didn't actually, you just said it is here. Um, 
Um, I think for this, like the sizing of the hotel lobby, I was really working with the slope of the existing theater space. So it slopes all the way to here. And then this part is higher. Um, so I could definitely like extend it out to this point. It brings up a really good point. So why is it, why, what are the proportions of this first floor? Like what was your decision to really put the hotel lobby at the back, like to sort of flip what might be expected in this building? I was envisioning it where um, if a visitor were to take a road trip here, um, the exhibit space would be, it would take up most of the ground floor because um, that's just the experience for the ground floor. And then um, I was just imagining for the ground floor, the exhibit space would take up most of the experience and then a hotel guest would know their way. So it was more of like an assumption of um, what the ideal guest, how the ideal guest would be experiencing mm -hmm. the exhibit slash hotel. So if I was in the hotel, I could use this stair that's in the hotel lobby, the elevator to the hotel lobby or the stair that's in the exhibit lobby? Yes, because um, the stairs, both stairs here and the elevator, I can show you the second floor to make it make more sense. Because my question is about sort of the sequencing, if I am staying here, mm -hmm. how I can get to say the restaurant, do I have to leave the building and go all the way around? I, I would come to this mezzanine level? Yes, at the moment, if you are a guest and you're going from the third floor, what you could do is go down the stairs. And then from the second floor, there's this long like walkway here that they can walk down and then enter in this stair. And then they'd be able to go to the restaurant, which is if I were to flip to the first um, ground floor plan, it would be located here, but they would have to like, they would have to exit out. So it's not really a clean, um, transition to go to the restaurant. Yeah, I think that the experience of staying here, I think that we see that balance happening on your first floor plan about so much has been given away to sort of the transient visitor versus the, someone who's actually coming to stay at the Von Minden kind of takes second fiddle. Now, granted, they're probably having such fun in their room and on the roof deck that they're not coming downstairs, but should mm -hmm. they come to the restaurant, I think that having to either find your way in the mezzanine floor to know to get up there. Like your building might rely on a lot of signage, which is always a failure of where, wayfinding, right? Or they have to go outside and then walk all the way around the building just to get to the outdoor courtyard when maybe it's just that your bathrooms in the hotel lobby are in the wrong place. So maybe there's just a connection there that you're missing. Um, mm -hmm. So I would look at sort of the, how generous you were with some spaces versus others. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have a nice tight hotel lobby. It doesn't have to be grandiose at all, but it should be purposeful versus uh, a sort of outcome of an earlier decision. You know, sometimes when we do hotels, well, always when I do a hotel, mm -hmm. because I'm a minimalist and uh, I would have nothing in it. So I assign characters depending on where I'm doing this hotel. So I would have assigned some, you know, couple who goes to Schulenburg to, you know, dance and do this and that. And I would walk myself through exactly what they experience. And I think when you do that, it's kind of like set design and you almost put like your video on and you really walk through it. Then the experiences unfold because you unfold through their eyes like a set designer would have to unfold it. Sometimes when you're doing it for yourself or planning yourself, you don't walk yourself through all the experiences. Like you would be staying there and then maybe you you work, do things in a different way. So if you assign yourself in hospitality, just, I don't do it for my other projects, but in hospitality, I always have characters. And I, I really do design it through their eyes. And that way you, you understand the path they see, stage right, entry, long entry, short entry you know what do they see on the right what do they see on the left what do they backtrack do they get bored how do they get out how do they get in <laughs> yeah how how often do they have to rely on somebody for help to be like how do i what do i can i you know that stuff right mm -hmm. <laughs> so i think yeah. that's next level for you ivy yeah i mean I, I echo the same thing in that when you go there you say okay i'm in my room i've i've here i am and we're What's my guest experience to get food or to get a drink? And then how easily is that achievable? And then what is the public realm experience from the, from the guest room out? And then you'd say, well, if I arrive at this hotel, 
What's my experience from check-in to get to my room? What's my narrative? How am I getting there? What's, what's that story saying about this, this journey that you're going to be on? That, this, I guess we're all three saying the same thing in a way. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, programmatically, you could lean into it and just be like, yeah, it looks like the natural pathway to get there, but actually walk into a row of bathrooms. Like you, <laughs> you can do something weird with that too. You could still lean into the unexpected. Um, but I think that again, just purposefully. So, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I also say you, you can explore doing furniture design because if you're doing these beds and these little moments at this stage, I think that's something for you to think about. Like, to explore that as um, another feather in your cap as you kind of develop your interior design practice. Definitely, I'll look into that. Thank you all so much. So Thank fun, you. so Thanks fun, so Ivy. I love it. It's great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, next we have Shay. Okay. Can you see this? Hi, Shay. Okay. I can't see Shay. I see Ivy still by. Hello? Hi. We'll be able to see you once you start talking. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, can you see the screen now? Yep. Okay, yeah. just making sure, sorry. Okay, so the intention of this project is to combine influences from Schillenberg and the Painted Churches of Texas and the history of the Von Minden itself to create a new identity for the hotel that embraces perspectival shifts and illusionary shadow effects to blur programmatic and spatial boundaries into collective but socially distant experiences. And I was really inspired by this idea of connecting program types in adjacent but oblique manners to speak to the owner's desire of creating community-centered and community-serving spaces that offer a degree of flexibility. When looking at these precedents, to me, these techniques offered a sense of simultaneous closeness while also a sense of individuality and independence. So the idea of comfort or knowing someone is there, but also being comfortable in one's own sense of independence and having your own space as well. Uh, the patterns of Soloette and others also evoke questions of uh, how might these trompe effects be tools of multiplicity and offer the user visions into different ways to relate to the environment through senses and movement. And through my own explorations and progression of these effects, such as uh, creating shadowing effects with values, uh, creating shadowing effects with lines or cross hatching, and then volumetric illusions created with extensions of architecture was established through the movement from public to private spaces and vice versa. So I envision the rooms beginning um, with this value shading. And then as you move to the public spaces, the progression of these techniques. These effects are also created in relationship to the existing building by trying to um, kind of have inserted objects, which at times reveal, extend, or exaggerate the architecture or other features of the space. And the idea is that as the patterns progress from public to private, so does the relationship to the material. So the lower and more public floor, floors, such as um, this kind of blue massing here um, in this diagram, speak more to the uh, existing materiality of the building. And then as you move up, um, that slightly gets obscured. And the creation of these effects began at the examination of the site and the development of the plan. So the building is at the corner of Highway 90 and Lyons Avenue uh, in close proximity to the main street and the owner's other building in Jack and Mary's. And here I wanted to look at the approach of the building and added just some um, other exterior features such as the planter boxes on the street level, a shading structures on the side and up the roof to kind of bring that facade down to the scale of the person as they approach the building and perhaps hint some of the effects that might um, start to occur in the interior level. The levels one and two uh, feature public spaces of the hotel, the main lobby entry and secondary reception in the back area with an open theater and stage in the middle area. So for example, here the user could enter the lobby here, come down the ramp, enter into this flexible community lounge, go up the stage and um, et cetera. And the space is um, intended to um, be more open and um, have a community like feel to it. And then going up into the second floor um, through the circulation here, you can enter into the dining area, which is uh, open to below to the uh, theater space here. And then uh, this 
dining space allows views to the stage and it will have exposed ceiling joist and moments uh, where the original terracotta brick are exposed, as you can see here, and then moments where um, new materiality is kind of layered on top of that. And then the existing pit and incline of the theater is slightly filled in and light wells, which are here and here, pierce through the third and fourth guest room floors to intend to add more light in the theater um, and flexible, flexible community spaces. Um, but I will talk about uh, the I will talk about the public space spaces a little bit more um, later in the presentation. So going up um, now into the guest room levels on the third and fourth floor, um, and trying to go back to the idea of creating illusions with uh, shading or value, um, using uh, four different shades of the same materiality on the spaces, providing a, a forced spectival kind of look um, into the guest room experiences. And there are two distinct room types. So there's the king suite, which are these ones on the corner, and then there is the uh, there is the queen apartment suites, which are these here. And so looking at the king suite, this is more for a hotel guest experience, trying to prioritize views to the outside using the furniture to orient the user to the exterior, and then also allow um, for potentially longer stays of need with a mini kitchenette. These features um, frame the space, which um, also are, again, grouped with the four different tones of the same wall, floor, and ceiling material. So um, different tones of the existing pine, um, painted uh, wall surfaces and brick surfaces, and some exposure um, of the uh, ceiling joist in certain areas. And the guest room bath also follows a similar logic by trying to open up wet surface spaces to provide a walk-in shower. And then the second room type is the queen apartment intended to, um, for providing a space for longer stays or more apartment type experience. In these rooms, light well pierces through uh, the plan while trying to also balance public and private, which is a little bit different from the other rooms. So um, the bed is not facing the window. It's in a more private alcove, all these public spaces, such as when you walk in the seating area here or this desk here or the kitchen unit is in the more open space. And then you can see in this render here how the light wells pierce through the floor and then the furniture tries to wrap around the space and also create um, and heighten some of these illusionary effects. So now moving to the corridor um, and the cross hatching illusions, the corridor experiences um, tries to take full advantage of the tilted and forced perspectives of the walls and surfaces of the plan and tries to embed lighting and other touch points such as uh, custom door handles to exaggerate some of these angles and patterns. And you can see here um, the uh, attempt to create an illusionary transition experience to, um, that also kind of connects the relationships of the rooms with this pattern, patterning and uh, creates a different experience while going down through the corridor. And this progression continues um, as the material gradates back to the original and the vertical circulation. So this is the horizontal circulation, and then this would be the vertical circulation. And also thinking about how transitions can be visual or tactile, they can also be auditory. So trying to think about the progression of the type of music that plays in the different space, space types and how um, it could begin with quiet, distant, and instrumental sounds that progressively get louder, louder more rhythmic, or more lyrical in moments of public space. And now ending with a look back on the public spaces to reiterate these spaces um, attempt to use volumetric illusions with both value and cross hatching to extend obscure or exaggerate architectural moments and um, the existing structure. And with this lobby space, um, there is uh, the use of light, um, this custom desk repurposing existing and, and removed fire escape ladder and layers of patterning to try to attempt to achieve these illusions and illusions and draw the user back into this um, community space. So continuing back into that space, the theater features uh, some custom uh, elements such as the curtain pattern, which is a uh, picture of the old um, theater kind of reflecting back on the projection of the old onto the new, um, pairing with a shift of, um, again, the material um, value shading and then extensions of the shadowing structure. Also trying to think about custom furniture and how 
uh, these pieces could have a detail that fits in or latches on to the datum of the theater so they can be pushed to the side or brought into the middle of the theater space when needed um, to create couch and lounge areas as you can see here and then here as you can see all these effects kind of in um, in the same space together and then finally looking at the mezzanine and the dining area here again all the effects are trying to be used to blur program and then also um, thinking about these angles as an effective um, spatially impactful moments, but also trying to make them opportunities such as railings that could define a um, like place where you could put your drink or a place where you could have another bar condition and then pairing uh, selected furniture pieces with custom furniture pieces. So this is a bar element made from um, existing materials that uh, Ryan had talked about um, from these old radiators repurposed into a, a bar face. And that is this space I um, rendered out and with these elements inside. And that is all, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> the, I gotta say that the ladder into the, into the, into the bar is super cool. Um, that's really great. The The hotel for me has um, a companion brothers kind of like feel to it where some of the geometry and the shapes are just, I mean, there's so much hair. Felt, someone else. It's so cool. Yeah. Help. <laughs> Help. Um, Shay, uh, Shay, hey, what do you know? You made a great project. How, how unexpected of you. Um, my heart went all a flutter seeing your layouts with uh, reflected ceiling plans laid out next to your floor plans uh, with the side of the diagram and the side. Oh my goodness, this is an accomplished project. Like um, I, you did something here. Like this is really amazing. And um, so first off, nothing but like kudos and congratulations. This is what an advanced design project should look like. I, you, the level of detailing completion is just, it's, Awesome. So um, I feel thrilled looking at it and to be able to review it here. Um, as far as the design implements and the details, I think that there are um, some places where you, but I, so I got to see, so, you know, spoiler alert, Sean and Laura, like I got to see this project way earlier, it's a much earlier iteration. And the way that mm -hmm. you refine some of those details is like, so good that it's shockingly obvious, right? Like the hallway with the light wells, it makes so much sense. And so, and those are sort of, for me, at least like newer elements to see in implemented here. And it's like that double loaded corridor, like it's, you nailed it. Like that is what it should be. And it took your whole thesis about the Trump Loy and forced perspective and playing with graphics and lines in two dimensions. And you just, you scored there. Like that's really great. Um, you completely revisioned the interior spaces, um, and so for for the, or sorry, the interiors, the the rooms, um, and so that's really fun to see. And I like what you're doing there with the lighting fixtures. But in each of these images that we're looking at now, where you start to reveal the structure of the building, and I'm not talking about the exposed brick wall, but there's something about the grittiness of the the beams, the, the roof rafters, or in the lower levels, the ceiling rafters, um, that it's like the spirit of everything you have crafted is allowed to seep out a little bit. And it, it almost, everything feels so finished and then it's not. So there's a disconnect for me at those moments where like I see this in, in the lobby, the way that the ceiling is there to receive all of the detail that's happening below it's actually kind of this like palette cleanser and it's allowing me to really soak in and observe what's in front of me. Whereas when I look at the image directly above it, I'm getting lost in that one little strip. And I know it's intentional, of course it's intentional and you brought in lines that way. But I think even if you had like a scrim, like you have, like you designed that curtain, like even if it had something there that if you need a change of palette, change of material, um, all of a sudden when it got pulled into this like pseudo industrial look um i i don't know it, it it doesn't it that part is a disconnect for me so i would say 
to get back into that. I could, you know, Lauren, Sean, please disagree with me and show me why I'm, <laughs> tell me why I'm off there. But um, I want to, yeah, I want to add one, one thing that you, so the two pictures on the corner of my screen, lower left and upper right are to me, killer, amazing. Killer. I'm in, I'm going to buy this. The other images um, are like, I was going to say, and I held back like the right, the one with the, the dining room. It's like that one just doesn't have any of the motifs that you've just crafted in all those other two areas. And maybe it's the ceiling and maybe it's the light fixtures, but it's, it's something there. But then I go back to the curtain and the curtain is like so killer and brilliant. Like I love that. And in me, for me, that the curtain almost takes away any sort of loose areas that we didn't design or finish out because it's so clever in that one. Um, but then I guess in the room, yes, the room's super strong. It's got that feel, it's got that companion brothers, it's got that, it's kind of hectic, but then it's kind of simple. And if the ceiling was just clean and just like backdrop and not add more noise to all the other things that are just really tickling about in there, then I'd be like, okay, I'm buying that one too. So that, that's my take on it. Oh, the hallway is kick ass. Like I gotta say like your light detail there. I mean, that to me is a sexy hallway. It's got femininity, it's got masculinity. It's like, okay, I wanna, I wanna walk down this hallway. That's me. That's, I love it. It's cool. Thank you. I do think it's very well presented and I appreciate the um, integration of the architecture. I think you looked at it very architecturally and you looked at all of the things that needed to happen and you thought about it in three dimensions and not just in the planes of each floor. And I, I think that's super important. I too react very well to the images up the right, lower left. They're quite compelling and quite interesting. And this is not a, it, it's just absolutely a question. Um, you know, German, the German architecture of the time and the painted churches, they're so controlled in so many ways, but there are, the geometries are angular and there's certain parts of it. Were the angles, tell me how you got from the inspiration of the painted churches to your party. Mm. Um, that's a good question. Yes, I was really thinking about how at first how to extend the structure. And so my first iteration of the model room had a lot of these very thick kind of graphic lines going throughout the space. I was looking at the way that um, light went through the building. So I did a, a few studies on rendering out the way that the light um, angles fell through the buildings at different times of the year. And that that kind of began the look at trying to figure out how these angles um, should be crafted, kind of what type of shadowing effects that I wanted to um, place in the rooms. Interesting. The and light then, wells, yeah. Can you go back to those light wells? Uh, um, Sorry to interrupt. It's just kidding. Uh, it, is, it is ironic that you started with those and what ended up being this like space that's knocking our socks off is the only place without natural light, right? Like the without no. natural light, that the corridor. Mm -hmm. I think that's why the corridor is good, though, because I, I think that, it, you know, we as hotel designers end up with a lot of corridors without natural light. And what do you do with them? And I think that the, the trick of the eye, the way you did the angles and the patterning, make it feel like it's lit. And I think that's that's part of the because the, it, but these light wells are adjacent to the hallway, right? Uh, yes, I can go back to the plan. So, um, but it's it's fascinating because I, it's it, they're uh, probably better with them, but I don't know <laughs> I don't know that they need them. But I think that they're they're better with them. Of course, I'm never going to say no to natural light in a double loaded corridor. But um, so I the, what's interesting about it is I think that you did these sun angles, you did these studies, um, and you turned them into tangible objects. And I think that that is commendable. But what I like more is that you then completely transformed it into your own design versus being ruled by the singular moment on a singular day of some year um, where the sun rules all. Um, so I think that that's another, it speaks to the power of your hand. And I wonder if the rooms were still falling a little bit too victim to like 
the power of the sun pattern that you were applying like in the flooring direction or something so that mm -hmm. um, I think it's really interesting how all the moves that you made in all of those renderings we're seeing then how um, impactful the sort of encompassing ceiling is in your project. It, it's, it sort of speaks near and near, like my current goal in interior design, um, we do mostly residential work in my practice is I want a clean ceiling. I just want nothing on the ceiling. I don't want anything there. I want like a level five beautiful ceiling and stop putting vents and stupid recessed cans on my ceiling. Like, so, so we're seeing that a little bit in your um, renderings. And I think it's proof that like the respite our eyes get that that ceiling can actually reflect the space back down to us and just anchor the volume of the room. Um, I don't know, it's really, you're inspiring me to fight my battle for a clean ceiling. <laughs> I, I like your room layouts. They're interesting for, for sure. I mean, for like a, you know, a, a short-term stay, it's, 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 I mean, you, you would stay in that room. I mean, it's nicely laid out um, with the sleeping chamber, not completely blocked off, but, you know, how you've angled it in using the light wells. It's, 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 it's very, it's very nice. Thank you. It's very nice. Do uh, do the light wells extend into the? Uh, do they extend in? Do you see them from the big space? Do you see them from the venue space? Looking up. Yes, I don't. I don't have a view of that, but they do extend into the theater space. I think I had one, um, kind of, where there the light shines from, there. But I don't have like a view. Uh, of the uh, uh, okay, I, I I see now. Nice. So I think, wouldn't you have to have this ceiling enclosed or are those fake rafter beams? Um, that, that's a good question. <laughs> because the classification of this room, I think would mm -hmm. change. I think you would need some separation there. So you okay. have to clue, you have to make that ceiling. <laughs> so. <Okay. laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Shay. Thank you really, really well done. So, um, all right, we have one more, which will be Mala. <laughs> all right. Um, so my name is Mala. I am a master, a third year master's of interior design student. Um, before I begin, I'd like to just uh, call attention to the Spotify playlist I've created for the hotel. Um, if you go to the Spotify app, you can scan the barcode below and go to the playlist. Um, and so just to briefly cover the Vaumenden Hotel history, um, it was built in 1927. And an interesting note about it is that it was one of the few and rare uh, theater and hotel typologies found in the South. And this was more common in the Northeast. Um, the theater aspect of the hotel really struck out to me, and it's something I've used as a primary inspiration for the design of my project. Um, the design intent behind the revamp of the Von Minden was to create an experience uh, reminiscent of the history of the hotel and the theater, uh, captures the local town culture as well as the painted churches that surround the area. Um, the design goal was to retell the history and the culture in a fun and somewhat uh, tongue-in-cheek way. Uh, the intent was to create a space that feels familiar and recalls the past for the locals at the same time piques the curiosity and fascination of out-of-town guests and visitors. Um, as you can see, um, the existing footprint of the building, um, I've kind of kept to it, but added a small addition to the uh, first floor. Um, and then the main programmatic spaces within the Von Minden Hotel and the guest um, within the Von Minden are obviously the hotel and guest rooms um, and the theater and food hall. Um, there's also going to be a speakeasy library bar on the third floor and a drive-in movie theater. Um, these are just the front and side elevations of the hotel. I've added this glazed corner wall component that highlights the two main vertical circulation paths for the guests and visitors. Uh, the one on the right um, 
uh, the one on the right on the section is the public uh, vert uh, vertical circulation. Um, sorry, the one on the left, I mean, is the public vertical circulation and the pale blue highlighted path on um, the right is the private guest access only um, vertical circulation. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Capturing some of the original hotel history was a priority and I wanted to uh, maintain as many of the original design elements of the building. The original stage is uh, pictured here um, with the original seats removed. Um, and then the um, old original lobby of the hotel is located here. I wanted to use some of the blues present in both of these spaces within my design proposal, um, as well as some of the exposed, um, include the exposed architectural elements as well. Um, through searching for additional inspiration, um, I realized Wes Anderson was someone who successfully incorporates uh, incorporates into his films the same key elements I wanted to invoke within my project. Um, he's able to capture this feeling of nostalgia with humor and a certain level of exaggerated theatrical drama. Um, and through further exploration, um, some of my key takeaways from his films were his ability to capture a scene. Each frame is in perfect symmetry um, with the characters and the background elements within it. And there's this one point perspective in every scene and all the key figures scenes, um, seem to already occupy center stage or walk into it. And with each new scene, there was this sense of um, a curtain open and a close. Um, he's, able to, he's able to convey the sense of watching a play in person on a physical stage through his movies. And since the theater was a huge part of the moment and had to woman in history. Um, I wanted to capture and translate that same directorial um, aesthetic into the design of the hotel. And another point of inspiration were the painted churches. Um, there are ceilings and the elaborate intricate stenciling on the walls and the trompe work that creates these unique skewed perspectives. Um, and in creating my own stencil pattern, um, which you see here, these unique, um, I used the all seeing eye symbol from one of the painted churches and also drew on inspiration from the local wildlife present near Schillenberg, such as uh, the rattlesnake and the Texas paintbrush wild, um, wildflower. Um, since we just discussed the stencil design, I'll start off with the corridor panel design um, that I created for the guest room floor wanted to create a threshold experience that's defined by the multi layered placement of the curved panels down the corridor versus the walls defining them. them. Um, and this is a rendering of the um, perspective of the corridor view down the hall. Um, and I wanted to create this framed perspective, um, but also create this experiential quality of being within each framed views versus simply observing it. And as you move down the corridor, you move from one frame to another. Um, I'll start off with the third floor, um, which is primarily a guest room floor, um, but also has a speakeasy library bar um, that um, on the public end of the floor, the owner had mentioned that when he was growing up, all the adults would have a private speakeasy like space where they would go play poker and drink and have a separate space from the kids. Um, so I wanted to kind of bring that back into the hotel, but create a more official and designated space for the speakeasy. Um, and then the guest room section of the floor includes four different styles of room. One is the standard room, and the second is a standard plus, which includes a private enclosed patio space. Um, then there's the honeymoon style suites over here, and then the um, bunk suite option as well. Um, as for space planning, the circulation from the corridor into the rooms and then the views um, within the rooms were all defined by by the framed and centered perspectives that are really central to my project. Um, this is one of the standard plus rooms, which I've named the Saguaro Plus. Um, it's about 300 square feet, includes a queen bed, TV, built-in desk workspace, and a private enclosed patio space. As you can see on the floor plan, um, you enter into the room and there's a position within the small room corridor that opens up and then provides a framed view um, of the bed. That's um, in complete symmetry as well. Um, I've included a custom design uh, fluted glass panel that frames the view 
into the bedroom space with, and within this bedroom, um, there are framed niches that hold local artist oil paintings depicting seal, scenes from the Texas Hill Country. And on the opposite wall, the same niche uh, experience is scaled up to include space to actually inhabit and sit within. And this is just an example of the artwork on the niche wall. Um, the idea is that in order to view the work, you have to uh, view the work fully, you would have to position yourself exactly in front of the work and hence emphasize the layered frame experience. Um, this is the view from the bed to the room corridor wall and the TV is framed with the gilded wood frame similar to the oil paintings and it's hosted within the built-in white oak finished millwork. Um, overall, the idea was just to create a nostalgic and somewhat quirky guest room experience. The fourth floor um, is similar to the third floor in terms of the guest room layout and spaces and instead of a speakeasy, I've kept the area for a studio apartment or a flexible um, lease space, depending on the needs of the community. The owner mentioned how there aren't any apartments in Schulenburg, um, and house rental is very expensive, so being able to provide some rental units could be a consideration. Um, and this is the rooftop, and I've designed it to have a tank pool style uh, private pools, each with its own deck space. Um, and this way you can maintain a level of social distance, but still maintain a sense of community. Um, and small groups or couples can reserve tanks in advance. Um, and there will also be a small rooftop bar. And so coming back down to the second floor, this is this floor is primarily just open to the theater food and food hall. Um, and on the west side of the building um, is where all the back of house spaces are located. Um, and then the front or east side of the building includes a private dining space. Um, and that's like minstrel gallery style that overlooks the theater. Um, and there's also a large apartment um, or flexible community space that can be available to rent by community members. Um, and so this is the first floor. And some of the key programmatic areas I wanted to call out here were the hotel lobby entrance, which is located on the west side of the building. There's also a private patio, um, or sorry, hotel lobby right here. Um, and um, a private patio uh, just for the lobby, um, extended seating for the lobby space, essentially. Um, and on the other side is the uh, theater and food, food hall lobby that includes a the theater bar. Um, and then the food hall itself and theaters and stage, and then um, the courtyard over here. There's also a shared kitchen um, that serves the, serves the food hall as well as a to-go counter that's accessible from the sidewalk for the public to pick up food without having to enter into the building. Um, and there's also a private um, entrance for the second floor apartment and, and or flex place. And this is the hotel lobby. Um, I've incorporated some of the same design elements from my other spaces with the frame panels. I wanted to give the experience that you're walking into a stage and the curtains are opening up to reveal your entry. I've used some of my uh, custom print, print um, custom created prints from my stencil design for the wallpaper. Um, and I've primarily stuck to white oak and cane for the built-in uh, millwork. And as you can see in the plan, the lobby entry is fairly narrow. Um, and so I felt uh, I decided for a built-in bar seating instead of the usual lounge chair seating. And this is the render of the lobby space. Um, so upon entry into the hotel lobby, instead of a manned concierge desk, the guests have a self-check-in booth. Um, there was a story I read about the hotel and its history and how one of the guests recalls how the previous owners would leave the desk open and guests could just come in and sign in and um, come and go as they please. And there was just a sense of trust. Um, so I wanted to include a self-check-in to provide that same level of freedom and flexibility um, for, for guests to check in and check out. The next is the, uh, the Cozy Theater and Food Hall. Um, it was originally called Cozy Theater and I wanted to maintain the name. Uh, the Food Hall will have counter service um, and the shared kitchen space will offer a rotating uh, seasonal chef lineup. Uh, one of the things that the owner expressed was that he really wanted the hotel to be a point of attraction and revitalization of the town. And based on what I felt, um, based on that, I felt like a rotating lineup of new chefs would create a sustained interest for visitors 
um, to keep coming back into town rather than just keeping it as a one-time trip. Um, and as far as the design of the space, uh, I created these large scale caned panels um, that mimic theater stage curtains um, and arrayed it down the entirety of the space. Uh, I wanted to create a feeling that all the guests were ca captured in this extended stage. Uh, and it's essentially, it's just a fly space within a stage, except in this case, like I said, just extended down the hall. Uh, the arc ceiling panels that you see here um, in here um, were created to blur the ex existence of the structural floor joists that run across the ceiling that I didn't want to completely hide, but rather wanted to work with the design of the space without being distracting. And this is uh, a render of the, um, the food hall as you enter into the food hall, um, looking onto the theater, and this would be where the food counter is on the left-hand side. These are just some more close-up views of the theater um, and some niche spaces against the back wall of the theater space and the food hall. Um, and then this is a view of um, looking onto the courtyard um, from, from the food hall. And if you were standing on stage, this would be your view out um, looking onto front of the building or front of the lobby of the theater. Um, and again, it's more about the framed um, views as well as the symmetry that I wanted to keep um, in line. And then finally, um, the, this is the courtyard space, which is just an extension of the Cozy Theater and Food Hall. Um, and I wanted to just create additional seating. Um, there's actually a tree that's in existence on the site that I wanted to maintain and kind of have this wraparound seating around. It's not showing up in Axon. I'm not sure why, but it's supposed to. And this is a view of the uh, uh, one of the spaces in the courtyard. Um, and I wanted to bring that same arced ceiling component back into the space to provide some shading element while you're um, seated. And then this is the other side for bar seating. And thank you very much. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I love caning. Let's start there. <laughs> I love caning too. <laughs> um, can we look at the, your, the, the beginning of it, go back through? Yeah. Can I say, can everyone hear us while we're, while we're talking about each project? I, something that struck me that I think we didn't, I wanna just say is that I love the fact that everyone talked about music and had that as part of the presentation. I know we, no, we didn't pick up on that, but I think it's like so important moving forward just to, just to tag everyone that comes in and like really get the mood and the atmosphere right with with music, I think that's awesome. So kudos to you guys for all um, adding that to the presentations and the design. Um, I think for the, the use of caning, I mean, I wish we, I could use caning more, but it's, I, I think that, I'm gonna to speak briefly about it. It's the, it's beautiful, I think, the way that you've got the, um, the theater. I mean, it would be amazing. Um, Kelly Wurstler would die if she could pull that off. Um, and I, I just love it. I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I could like, I mean, I can feel that space. So it, it's great. Um, awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I think your project is incredibly well developed. I mean, you, you have gone very far with it. It's architectural and it's very, um, designed and you've looked at every moment of it. So that's extremely commendable. I too love cane. I did a cane sofa about six years ago when people weren't so crazy about it. It's just now selling, you know, <laughs> five years later, but it's selling now. But I think it's, I think it's an interesting material to use in a relation or out of in respect to the patterning of the churches because it's very conscientious. It's natural. It's of the land. It's structural. It, it's really, it is a gorgeous material. Um, Tell me a little bit about the inspiration for the, the forms that um, 
was it the natural wildlife or what took on the um, lyrical forms that exactly these arches and the other forms? Are you talking about the panels themselves? Um, the panels themselves, themselves and then in the corridor, it's interesting when you showed that corridor, although it was not a very realistic rendering, I could feel myself walking down it. So I guess I'm just curious about the inspiration, the story you were trying to tell. If you could wrap this into title of the story, what what is the story you were telling with um, it? Yeah, um, so with the panels and the theater and then some of the other spaces that you were seeing that kind of have a similar feel to it, um, that was, it was really just to kind of mimic um, this idea of a curtain except in a panel form. And so, um, you know, in this, um, in this view, normally there would be, if there's a stage, like a traditional um, old school stage, there would be curtains that would kind of hang from this, the ceiling as well as on the sides. And then there's this pullback of the curtains. And so um, I just wanted to kind of recreate that feeling, but in a much more, you know, playful um, and larger, much larger scale, um, exaggerated manner. Um, so that was really the inspiration there versus um, for the, let me go back to, oh, there it is. Versus this, um, these are all like the, it, the stencil design itself came from those elements from the local history as well as like the local like wildlife. So it actually came from, and then the um, painted churches. Um, but also in terms of like my um, design intent or inspiration with bringing in kind of like Wes Anderson and just this like theatrical drama of it all. So that was kind of what I was creating with this where these these were kind of these framed views um, um, that you're kind of experiencing as you move through the space. And so, and you know, just it's more theatrical of course um, mm -hmm. than, than it potentially. But that was you know. really part of your whole thing that it would feel in a sense, as if you were in theater yourself, creating it and moving through it and all aspects. Your plans are very well done. You, you've obviously spent a lot of time working on the plans. That's very appreciated. I'm, I'm sure you're, that's, um, they're very nice. Very well. um, I, I wanna say that you're, in back to the plans, um, the thoughtfulness of like operations yeah. and like, mm -hmm cafe to the street and the way that the hotel had these different um, operational moments of capturing guests and you know places for them to activate and to buy and this whole way that the the property kind of bled out in a very operational way is very very thoughtful um, and, and echoing again the materiality thought is is awesome but just the to-go counter on the street and the guest, uh, th that private entry and all of those different ways to engage and to sort of like have your own experience and craft your own way through and all these multiple points of entry and exit. Awesome. I agree. Thank you. I'm, I'm hesitant to say anything because we've seen your project grow so uh, over time, other than like broadly, don't move from this slide because I won't do a talk about somebody here. But okay. yeah. broadly, your presentation is of something of a project that is seamless and without problems. Like um, from a programmatic standpoint, a hotelier could come in and you provided building function and its solution seamlessly like there is a there is an ease to your design that um is not even remotely indicative of the process that you went through um to get there it things make sense of course you use that table of course that chair is there of course that tie like of course the screen pattern is there of course that wallpaper print is something you design but i think what um, the confidence and the sophistication to just present it and then move on uh, to the next thing that you did shows a level of um, mastery that is astounding. So congratulations. You appeared to have no trouble at all in this project. <laughs> um, 
But I bet you spent know, a good bit of time on it to make it look like you appeared to have no trouble. Right? The, hardest, right? the hardest project is the one that looks the easiest once it's done. Because it's like, it, it's like, yeah. So, and I want to highlight that in little things that show the level of thinking that you're doing that I just want to highlight that I really appreciate. And it's, it's exactly like Sean said, like the to-go counter is in exactly the right place. And then if you look down the sidewalk, you have put two pieces of shrubbery right here, right? So it, it just blocks just enough that courtyard just for that sight line to feel slightly private and it's not enclosed. So there is a level of approach and understanding that you developed over the course of this project by thinking about it from that stage frame, from the like perspective of what does the camera see? How do I experience a place? And then how do I move through? There's never a moment in your project where you are thrown into a space. There's always a transition that just makes sense. So like your lobby entry, it comes from the parking lot over here and it, there's just enough approach before you get to the door, right? So there's just that little stutter step that you make that makes every next space that you move into make absolute and utter sense. So, I mean, like I'm, I'm blown away. I think it's, I think it's amazing. Um, and they, I mean, it, I think it just gets better, right? Okay, Mala, those paintings you put in the room though, like they're <laughs> really bad. But, but, but can I say to that point, <laughs> go ahead, Lauren. She was being realistic about <laughs> I, No, the blue bonnets. Okay. Wait a minute. I, I think it's brilliant when you force your guests to stand in one spot <laughs> and look right at that painting. Like to me, I'm like, okay, take control. Like, like make them do it. Then you have the one you have the one like Owen Wilson or whatever Wilson brothers in there. So you might be in there and be like, is she doing this ironically? <laughs> that would be good. That would be good. Um, I don't, yeah, I, unless you're doing it ironically, I don't get it. I was trying to just be cheesy with it, just a little humor, but. <laughs> Gold <laughs> star for that. <laughs> Why wouldn't you want a big longhorn painting? Oh my God. <laughs> I, 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 I like the disgruntled young lady in the small picture. That's awesome. I mean, just so, so yeah. these are both characters from the Royal Tannenbaums um, from one of the Wes Anderson's movies. So, so it's it really the thing that I I wasn't gonna even show this, you know. But of course, you know, I spent like I do five think, hours trying to position this. <laughs> I do think so. Can you go back one slide? Yeah. So I saw it here, and I was like, Oh, good God! What what did she do? <laughs> And then you flip to the next slide. You're like, oh my, oh my God, she doubled down on it. But I, yeah, what? I mean, I, 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 so I can I buy into you. Sean's idea. Like you own it and you just force it. You're like, yeah, this is the art. This is hotel art. Has to take these things and do something with them, right? Get them off the street. So I like. <laughs> I, I've been guilty of being shot down for doing this. So I commend you. <laughs> We're doing it. Um, I, I feel like this is what we, what, what I call to students sometimes like the, the loose peg theory. You know, where like you have a client, you know they're going to be unhappy about something. So you just like loosen one little thing so they can find that and then, <laughs> then they're done. Like that's, is this what you did to us? Are you manipulating us right now? Like looking Definitely at the- Definitely the last slide I added and it was about two hours ago, so. <laughs> Well, I mean, again, I have to say it's extremely well presented. It's, it shows a lot of maturity for sure um, and extremely well thought out. Thank you. I would love to see, um, it is, you presented it as a final review as you should. I would love to see if you did color studies in the rooms um, to, so that we know that this green is right. Your presentation itself is a little bit relentless with the green motif on the outside too. I wonder mm -hmm. how much more we could have seen of your project just from the layout standpoint. Um, you're, you did a good job of sort of, again, with that stutter step of your presentation even where like we got to see a little bit of the space and then you dropped us in and it was really good. Um, but mm -hmm. I wonder if like there's, 
it's the black spot on the TV. Like if we're going to picture frame all of this to understand what the viewer is looking mm -hmm. at as you're presenting, there's a lot of extra on the page when I want to just be immersed. Oh, right. looks like you're almost done for the day. No. <laughs> I'm so are you talking about like the background green or like in within like, like the room color itself? The room yeah. color and gotcha. the, well, in both, the green becomes a motif for you um, yeah, I just want to know that it's, I'm sure it's right because you tested it, but I, I would have, I'm, I'd be curious if every room should be this color and what a color study does for you and for your project. Um, yeah. I wanted to ideally have, um, like, you know, have each room kind of have its own color story, like tonal color story. Um, you know, one of the many things I didn't get to, but I ideally would have liked to have like, you know, um, a blue tonal room, potentially like something in like mustard and um, maybe a maroon, you know, each space kind of have its own like color personality within it. But um, yeah, that might be like the next thing for this. Interesting that you guys are doing a project that um, embraces color because color is back in a huge way and it's interesting I don't know whether it's because of you know COVID or the where we are in the world today, but it, it came back in the '40s after you know the wars and after the depression. It, color came back in a huge way, and you know so many of us. Um, I started out as an art major, so I studied a lot of color theory, and then I went to mostly white <laughs> because it's so much easier. Color is very difficult, and it takes a lot of study, and it plays upon each other. But if you can master it, it it's absolutely you know, few people can master color. And um, I think it's great that you guys are having a class that makes you start to embrace it and understand it because it's really critical. Green in particular is the hard color. I have a lot of clients just, you know, 30 years of experience. People do not react well to green and I don't know why. It's one of my favorite colors and I really like to use it a lot, but people don't react to it well. And I, I'm really, I'm sure there's some color psychology there. I'm not sure exactly, <laughs> I should know. Um, but, and maybe that's why Allison said, is, is green the right um, color for the rooms? But yeah. Well, my bias is I love green as well. I just wonder if there's, if, if it, I wonder if it happens, you know, so much. You know, I actually found that, that little dash of blue refreshing all of a sudden, which pointed out to me that we had seen a lot of green. Yeah. And yeah. I love green. I actually love green. And I actually have the same problem too. And I, Laura and I, I'm always with clients, I'm like, green. And they're like, no, I'm like, how about purple then? <laughs> and they're like, really, no. <laughs> but, but maybe it's just been like having, you know, I, I guess the, the treatment of the headboard is, is working. So maybe there's ways to modify and gradiate with wall treatments and paper and, fat, you know, things to bring a more gradient feel to the green in the room. And it's just, just not all one thing. Sure. Yeah. Is it Mala? We're just we're like we're just looking for stuff to pick up. I know. I was going to say it's yeah. amazing. It's so well presented. It has so much detail in it. We could you know talk all day long because you've shown us so much. It's um, yeah, kind of amazing. Wait, can we look at your dishware that you chose? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the knives yeah. and forks, like. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe right. another day. <laughs> Maybe we will end there and. <laughs> just ask for some if, if our if our guest critics have any overall departing words to summarize um i guess what has been a pretty amazing i think um semester and a lot i think of really really excellent work that um i i have just been really really excited to see everyone um and I've been excited about the studio concept. Um, I know it kind of all fell into place quite quickly. Um, really, I think thanks to <laughs> to Ryan's to Ryan's help. Um, uh, Ryan's clearly is. Are you on your way from Houston right now to Schulenburg? Uh, I am. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't judge. Watching while watching while driving. <laughs> I hope you're driving a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Hands free. <laughs> um, anyways, any 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 overall depart departing words um, for the studio? I think 
it's interesting that all the presentations were so vastly different. And I, I find that refreshing um, that, that you have a lot of creative thinkers that went out on their own and just took it to, took it, they took everybody who, I think everyone took their idea and really explored it. It wasn't sort of built toast. Everybody went wholeheartedly with their idea. And I think that's, that's a good thing. And again, I really appreciate the study of color and pattern. Like I say, Macintosh was one of my heroes. If you've ever seen his home in Glasgow, it's just stunning. It's worth a trip to Glasgow. Yeah, I would say also like, I, I love that you guys all use color too and that you guys all went for it. I think the only thing I could, I think everyone presented well. Um, I mean, I, in the enthusiasm, the thought, the, the ideas all landed. Um, I think the, just basically, it's just awesome. And I just think more narrative, more color, and the more passion you can um, talk to the design and maybe sometimes deviate from the scripted part of it and just really lay into the emotional so that, you know, your clients and the people that you're presenting to can feel where you, where your feelings are and how strong you feel about things and don't be, don't shy away from it. Um, I, I just want to add, I want to, I know you're Lisa's guest reviewers, but I want to say thank you to Sean and Lauren for coming. Uh, what fun it was for me to review alongside of the likes of you. <laughs> thank you. Um, awesome. Wonderful to have you. Um, our school is so lucky, and that's one of the major things we've been able to capitalize on um, during the pandemic is that being remote, we get to invite um, all of the talent from around the world to join us, and we got such, um, it's so wonderful that you're here to continue yeah. that. And I want to add, I was probably more nervous than you guys, <laughs> so I got on like an hour early just to make sure, so just to let you guys know, like this meant a lot to me and like, you know, uh, uh, thank you for having me. Um, well, I, and for my, for my closing, closing statement for the students, I want to say thank you to you. Um, I have seen not all of you grow over the past year, but most of you, all the faces I can see um, and your transformation of like where we started at the beginning of last spring to where you are right now it's amazing and I'm so impressed with how not only did you guys all carry all the super difficult lessons we were trying to learn oh no that wasn't last year it was in spring <laughs> it's been a really long year um last spring in our technical studio um but then you just really jumped into this project despite all of the world's adversities being thrown at you uh, whether you are working in a pair or by yourself, it's extremely frustrating and isolating and nothing but difficult. And you brought projects that were filled with enthusiasm and joy and curiosity that just shows that your talent cannot be stopped. So like, congratulations to you. I think we could literally throw anything at you and you'll do it and do it well. So I, you guys blow me away every semester, this semester, especially with how everyone was remote um, and you don't get that energy from each other, somehow you manage to do that. Um, and it really comes out in your projects and it comes out in your work and it's just so good. And I hope that you all continue to support each other um, through the school with, as you continue one more semester, right? Is it just one? Sad, just one. You should get a bonus semester for free because you had to be online. Um, and also, we don't want to let you go. So, Lisa, don't let any of them pass. <laughs> um, Ryan, I won't put you on the spot, but if you have, if you have any uh, quick thoughts, but um... no, I, I would. I would like to. I would like to thank all the students and Lisa, you two, and the School of UT Architecture. Like, I'm honored that you guys chose. Um, my little building in the middle of no, like in the middle of small town, Texas, um, to use at the University of Texas. So I'm absolutely honored. And um, I, it's really awesome for me, who's been looking at the project for a few years now, to have, you know, a bunch of young 
a bunch of young minds looking at the project and have other people and, and, and really important people being able to critique along the way and give input. Um, so I'm super honored about all of that. Like, you guys should really be proud of your skills too. So I deal with really big architecture firms every day, but y'all's rendering skills and some of y'all's skill sets are extremely strong. Like they're better than the stuff that I'm getting out of uh, the renderings and things that I'm getting out of my big, my big heavy hitting architecture firms. And so um, I'm absolutely that she did to make this happen so um i'm, I'm honestly really impressed i uh, y'all feel like i've been out of school too long and i need to work on my skills um <laughs> but uh I, I do thank y'all so much all right well i'm gonna maybe let our guest critics drop off um and maybe we have a little um, wrap up internally, but thank you so, so much for being, just really helping um, be a part of the studio. So um, Lauren, John, Allison, Ryan, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye. Bye. Um, don't Bye. Lisa, when we leave, don't forget to stop live streaming before you have your I, yes, thank you. I was about to do that. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye, guys. Enjoy.